PKA664 with our guest Dick Masterson. Going to be a good one. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by ferrodistro.com, Lock and Load, and of course, Blue Chew. A bunch of wonderful products we'll hear more about later. You're already familiar. Dick, how are you? You're looking great. Dude, I, I'm awesome. Uh, I've got, I'm doing two retards at once now. I don't know if you guys are up on all my shenanigans online. Uh, but <laughs> not to jump straight to the Blue Chew ad, I did one. Based off of your guys' show, I ordered some for fun and did yes. one. Man, that was awesome. I woke up the next day with, like, the hardest cock that I've ever had. It was fucking sweet. Highly oh, recommend. Fantastic. Thank you guys for that. Yeah. yeah. It, you, you, you take Kyle's recommendation, get the Tadalafil, and it's the long-lasting one. that It yeah. lasts for 36 hours. You time it right, you can have a hard cock two mornings. Oh, yeah. The first time, like, I remember Kyle telling me, Sleep like, texting day, me the whole in, time. Uh, I remember Kyle texting me in private like years and years ago when we first got Blue Chew. And I like they sent me like the little like couple pills after I signed up and I hadn't taken them. And Kyle was like, you know, like that's not just for people who like can't get hard at all. Like if you take that, you're going to see a difference. I'm like, really? And like I took it and it was like. Like my dick was furious. Yeah, like just absolutely a devastator at that point. Like, oh my god, and I could think about other shit while I'm fucking you. I don't have to concentrate yeah. on staying hard at all. This is amazing. I got the <laughs> devastator down there. Yeah, like the the it's... problem was like I I took it the first time I took it like I didn't know like what was gonna happen so I was just I just jacked off because I was like seeing what was going on. That's and a like, weird decision, I Taylor. Came, <laughs> you want, you, want to, <laughs> you don't want to test that thing on a woman the first time. You could kill her. Yeah. Later that <laughs> evening, I used it again because it, it kept lasting. But the how big did you I think your it. dick was going to get <laughs> that you needed to take it on a dry <laughs> run like, it, a, like it, a Tesla? It looked like, it looked like it had like a like additional veins I'd never seen. Like oh, the, yeah. The, the layer of like dick fascia was allowing even more veins to protrude. Yep. And like after you came, I, I had a thought of like, it's not going down. Yeah. It's not going down yeah. at all. Is this is kind of scary? And then I got distracted for one minute and it started going down. It's like okay, uh, it's not like the movie. That ties into my favorite part of it. If you want a round two, it's right there. If you're in the mood for round two, your dick is ready. <laughs> yeah, what are you sick true. bastard? You would want a round two. I I always come across <laughs> yes. a guy, not literally, but like I meet yeah, a guy no, every once in a while me. who who likes a round two, and I'm like, you sick fuck. It's it's always a surprise, yet not a surprise. Who wants to fuck twice in a row as a man? <laughs> Like, oh, you <laughs> bastard. You, you never like to. I bet you love it when she comes too, you weird pervert. <laughs> That's not my problem. Look, no. if I come and she doesn't, I'm better at sex. That proves it. Yeah. yeah. You're fast. Yeah, That's true. Like that. Yeah. yeah. That's what he's no, ultimate a lot of people always have keep that. her horny. She never comes. <laughs> oh my god, dude, I have thought that thought before. Like, like there have definitely been times where I came and she didn't, and she's like still pawing at me. And it's like, yeah, I like you like this. Now this is good. This is a win. This is good. I'm gonna go make nachos and be satiated until yeah, I'm gonna go around. Yeah. Dude, you'll be there tonight when I'm ready again. So, Dick, I did notice. I don't know what second fight you're in, but I oh. see you fighting with Isom, the comic book creator. Oh, I, yeah. I had no idea when I saw that four months ago <laughs> that you would still every day like, hey, you fucking loser, learn how to write. And like, basically, this guy wrote a comic and and he doesn't have like even basic concepts of story structure and grammar. No, and so, so he, will, he will post stuff. And Dick is a professional writer. And so Dick will jump in and be like, you just used a semicolon to not separate two independent clauses. This comma's in the wrong place. That word's misspelled. You didn't establish what person was speaking from this role, and so it's jumbled. Like, it, And I'm reading it like, oh, yeah. I would never give my writing to Dick. Like, I, <laughs> do you guys want to get into that already, the ISOM stuff? It's so I thought it would be like a one-week thing, but it's like <laughs> on month six now, and every week it gets funnier and bigger. Now, this is this week, an, a, a Christian ministry – named weirdly enough named isom has mm -hmm. sued the christian comic book creator eric july that i've been in like a twitter war with for uh five months and eric <laughs> july has decided that it's my fault and that i'm gonna go to prison like he made a youtube <laughs> video about how this guy dick masters and he won't refer to me by name just like maddox uh <laughs> that i'm going to jail uh, at any moment now, because I have duped this international school of ministry into suing him over the rights to his stupid Christian comic book vigilante that has a cross on the penis in his comic book. 
<laughs> like, like, so, wait, on the crotch or like on his actual cock? Um, I don't know how big the cock or the cross is. It probably depends, but it's it's weirdly positioned. On the outfit. It's lower than a belt buckle. So, uh-huh. oh, I don't there's know. like an actual cross down there, like from his belt. Yeah, there, no, like it's on his <laughs> uniform. His okay. his superhero uniform is like Wolverine, except it has a a, a crucifix on his pubes. Does he fight demons? <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> oh, you tell me. Oh, okay. How it, <laughs> All right, yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> that's odd. Heels on. I, you know, it looks more like a plus sign than me, but I see how you could get offended, I suppose. Um, offended, yeah, Dick was very offended. Like, like what's his, who's his main uh, nemesis? Who are his foes? Uh, his main nemesis is um, a lack of motivation, I think, and lack of plot. <laughs> There's no plot in either of them. Uh, yeah. Basic criticism, I believe, reduces him to a, a, a blub- blubbering child. Like no, Superman no, no, I meant being... the superhero. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um I don't know. He's uh <laughs> and you've he, read uh, all the material. So like if it were to know if you if anyone knew it, it would be you. Yeah, that's what everyone really is pissed about me for, uh reading this stupid culture war comic book and just saying like, Well, this sucks. You guys are blowing money on uh on uh, like a guy's weird self insert vanity project. Yeah, um, you, uh, like one of the funniest things I, I saw, like you were, kind of in the you were roasting the, the author of it. And mm-hmm. like it was before I read your entire breakdown and yeah. you said something to the effect of like, this entire character is just a self insert for the writer <laughs> Eric July, and because yeah. nothing offends Eric July as much as being disrespected, you can tell <laughs> that the only thing that really gets under Isom's skin is perceiving that he's been disrespected. And I was like, damn, he really parsed that out pretty quickly. <laughs> as the yeah, I mean, I don't know, like uh, angry black guy that's like super upset by being disrespected. I don't know if that's such a great character to throw in your comic book, but especially if whatever. he's not. Like, like fighting ghouls, goblins, bad guys. I don't know. It's such a unique idea. The angry black he's, man he, who doesn't like being disrespected. Yeah. Yeah, Tom. he really explores that that <laughs> uh, that theme by getting thrown out of a club by security and then spending the whole comic book seething about it and coming back at the end and picking a fight with the security guard that threw him out of the club. <laughs> it's a fucking is, riveting it's a riveting culture war comic that Eric has put together. Is he an Damn. evil security guard? Is he like there's another layer to him or he's just he's someone selling who cocaine kicked and like out. pimping girls? Uh n- I don't know. He's just kind of a big, bigger than him. I think yeah. that's it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's got yeah. an earpiece and he's white and, and, and Eric can't do anything about it. And so he has to leave. Yeah. Uh, so then Eric July started like flagging all of my guys. You know how these gang wars on the internet start. Okay. He started flagging all my guys for criticizing him. So one of my guys found the person who actually owned the trademark to ISOM, which happened to be this 25-year-old Christian ministry, like a very Uh. upstanding organization. (laughs) And he wrote them an email saying, Hi, I'm a reporter for uh, The Dick Show and The Biggest Problem in the Universe News. I really wanted to get more information on your partnership with Eric July and his comic book and why you let him license your name in a comic about prostitution and all (laughs) that Oh, so shit. then lawsuit. So um, it, it wasn't you, but your followers did kick this thing off. Um, uh, actually, I don't know. The lawsuit <laughs> dropped. The oh, lawsuit you were pretty dropped. Clear ten seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, well, that Wait, email is in the Dated lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to take credit for it, but I don't technically know. They might have been working on the lawsuit for some no. time, and there's no way to know. No way to know. Yeah, there's no way to know. All I know is it gets funnier now. Eric goes on like panel shows because he called me a bunny because I don't know because I he, I guess he says I have buck teeth. I don't know. Maybe I do. Uh, he called me the bunny from Arthur. So now every stream he goes on, it's just like the chat is just nonstop bunny emojis. Bunny, 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 bunny. Uh, uh, is it one of those situations of where like he's the bigger? creator from like the money side like the the but like his organic following is much smaller than yours and so he's getting blown out in like live streams because I, yeah. I saw that before with like you and maddox where yeah he yeah no he's fans. his comic like I, I don't know if you guys uh follow this whole like right wing um parallel economy um scam like the these guys beer, are... beer they sell like that kind of shit yeah like your beer's gay buy like our buy our israel yeah. beer or buy I'm our George like Washington Washington Ale. Ale. Right. yeah 
Buy our ultra, dollars. right? So, yeah, Isn't buy our, our candy bar. Our, our not gay candy. Ross would have drank or something. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. always into that shit. Yeah. Yeah, so this is like a... Th- I mean, that's what this comic is. It, but it made like six million bucks. So... Like, I don't know why he's... Or did he sell six million in copies? Um... No he sold he sold six million in copies, but it's like the average price is the the lowest price is thirty five bucks for a comic book, and the average oh, price is like a hundred. Yeah. So I don't That's know. More expensive than a book. That's yes. Insane. Yeah. Like, I gotta I get into this right wing grifting books bullshit. Got. No shit, Woody. It's Pillows crazy. Pillows are taken. Comic books are taken. There must be some sort of right wing hair gel. That mm. man, no way we need to wait for yet. like Pantene to to put a trans person in an ad, and then we'll hit the ground running with mm, like yeah. some sort of like I think we like need right black rifle conditioner. I mean tampons, right? Yeah. Tampons actually for a woman. No, yeah, for actually. real women <laughs> only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we had, we need to clip this part out of it. This is a good ass idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real women, don't even try to purchase this if you're not, and then like people will buy it and be like, ha ha. Like, you got oh. us. No, <laughs> not for dilating. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not if you're dilating. Stuff. Yeah. So he actually Once. sold wait six million dollars worth of this. Yeah, stuff, uh, he said apparently. Yeah. I don't know why he's so upset that I'm making fun of his stupid Christian fair, comic book. I, yeah, I can't imagine. If I were what him, the... I wouldn't be letting you get under my skin if I was rolling in that kind of dough. I'd be like, keep keep talking about it. <laughs> that's uh that's bizarre. I'm glad that you found someone to mock online. That's that's always fun. You know, <laughs> yeah. what's important is that it doesn't feel like punching down and that they take it way more seriously than you do. <laughs> yeah. Be- yeah. Those are key. Those I'm key. awestruck at how profitable beefing with Dick Masterson is, yeah. which is surprising since he's a gay retard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to we need to good drive on this. You son of a bitch. <laughs> well, you guys, you guys should read Isom. I mean, all you have to do is read it and then give like an honest critique of it, and then you'll be next on Eric's uh, uh, hit list. Now he's going around to like all my friends, saying like, "Are you with me or against me? You got to sign my loyalty pledge." So I, I pity the fool that doesn't sign my loyalty pledge against Dick Madison. Dude, if he's, he's, like, he's got that kind of money, Mister July, come on in, and we will sign your loyalty pledge for a exactly. nominal fee. <laughs> <laughs> One million. He will be loyal uh, to this fucking ridiculous character. <laughs> what, are, what are his what are his powers? Flying strength? Does he have? Good oh, power? he doesn't know. No, there, no one knows in the comic. That was my first question: is what are his superpowers? And uh, it's not explained in the comic what they are, which is that's odd. A, that's such a huge part of. I've never read a comic book, but I would imagine that's a big part of it. Right? Yeah, like Spider Man is like a spider guy. Superman's like su- uh, like Everything. really strong and stuff. Flies. Yeah. But you at least know. you can infer a lot from ISOM, which sounds like I have no idea. <laughs> you know, I've been is hung up on the I- name. Is that the name of is the Is it an acronym? Reason? Well, nobody knows because he didn't explain. So he might actually have ripped it off from the International School of Ministry because it's it's the only other place that name shows up. Mm. <laughs> I he didn't Google it first, huh? Oh, I hate yeah. that. International School of Ministry is what I get when I Google to try to figure it out. But- yeah. I'm surprised they would care. Like, I, I would think that those kind of ministries would be like, oh, well, you're a Christian also. You're doing this. So, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Unless it's like a copyright trademark thing where they have to defend. defend well, it. if they, right. first of all, I don't think they like people going, ISOM sucks online when they read this <laughs> comic book. Yeah. Or all those Eric people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Eric calling people the N word when they review ISOM for the first time. I don't think that reflects well, but. Um, like legally, if they don't, he could file it first for the trademark and then they'd be fucked. Like it would be, uh, they would both own a compete, a trademark that's competing in Christian, uh, publishing. So they have to do it. Wow. Um, and I, I, yeah, the whole I, right side, I remember when, uh, who's the chubby chick from Star Wars? Um, Car- Car- um, something, something Carano, Carrie Gina Carano, Christian. Gina Carano, man, every now and then, like. I, I stream with a Roku device, and there's a Roku channel, which is where 
low budget budget shit gets made i guess oh. and there'll be like a gina carano feature on there that they're advertising yeah. that i've never heard of it's like her and danny glover and christian slater fighting fucking evil or something <clears throat> damn you were in star wars they were giving you your own show did you see ahsoka blasted on Times square that was supposed to be you you chubby white bitch yeah your mouth shut next time there won't be you're right time. do you think that she, her career would have continued to go is she still getting fatter that's what I, I, I don't wanted. know about that, but but oh, okay. she was supposed to, it's like I just said, she was she had the next Star Wars show. Ahsoka is the next Star Wars show, the big one now with a lady lead now. Yeah. That was her show to have. It was gonna be the fuck she was gonna be the, the rough riding drop ship. I chick. agree on every point. And, I'm just doing yeah. this alternate universe where she gets that push, but she's so fucking fat, oh. Disney backs out. Disney no, she was gonna be down. the Death Star, the third Death Star. <laughs> it, was, it was all gonna be about her. <laughs> She was going to uh, hook up with Jabba the Hutt's grandson. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to make sense. She's Nobody gonna, sat her I down have and said the wait for the Empire so that Jabba the Hutt's grandson will find me more attractive. I, I never watched that show, but I do remember the still of her in that armor. And just like no amount of space age technology can strap those titties down. They were no. enormous. Like yeah. pushing through You got to keep in armor. mind, Zach, will you show us Gina Carano UFC uh, like weigh in photos? Because this was one of the baddest bitches on the planet at one time. She had a real cute kind of tomboy thing going on, like ripped up with abs. Um, and then, you know, she gained Zach, all that weight. I think weight. she fought in Invicta, if it helps you. Oh, good call. Yeah. yeah. Invicta. I think, what does Invicta mean? Is that like it's, the minor league of it, basically? Yeah. Uh, there was champion. a time before the UFC had women that it was the top women's yeah. fighting league. Oh, man. She used to look like that? Yeah. Damn. She's smoking. Wow. This is like, no yeah, one she she's still looks famous. Like yeah. Yeah. She and if you see her Star move, Wars. like obviously she was the, you might not know, she was the best female fighter on planet Earth for some period of time. Nobody could beat uh -huh. her. Uh -huh. And uh, so she's perfectly tailored for that show. You know, she can move with Pedro Pascal. They're, she's bigger than him, I think. Like probably, but, or they're very similar in size when they stand next to each other because he's a smaller man. And yeah, she looks fantastic before. Damn. Oh. That's. Is that Man, the that's beast? At the Mandalorian premiere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like damn, those are yeah. enormous. Just, I mean, <laughs> they oh, always yeah. were. That girl in the middle can say whatever she wants about the Holocaust. The, You're one, the after, the after yeah, one, right. I don't think so, honey. <laughs> you better watch it. Is that yeah, what she's talking in about now? Just went yeah, zero she to said 100. like <laughs> she said like being a conservative is like being in, uh, a Jew in the Holocaust or something something like totally insane that you would <laughs> you would know to never ever say and definitely don't write down and certainly not post online. The timing was uh, bad too. It seems like it happened, you know, like right after the season was released, and that's a big show. The Mandalorian was. Um, oh yeah, and, and I, I didn't watch the last season. I didn't like it, and I do kind of miss her in the show. I just. I, I want shows like that to make chicks hotter and dudes hotter. Everyone who works, it's a privilege to be on a show like that where they'll pay you $3 million to be the best looking you you've mm -hmm. ever been. Take advantage yeah. of it, you cunt. Yeah. Like, what are there you shouldn't doing? Be, shouldn't be any ugly people. In Although Hollywood. she was a perform, former professional athlete, so she really has no like excuse. That's like, the you know thing. how to do this. Yeah. Did she use yeah, like she... a CTE excuse? Sometimes that works. Can't but stop I mean, eating. Is that she, 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 was was <laughs> she actually missed weight a lot when she was a fighter. It was a, yeah. it was a recurring. It, it, girls miss weight more than boys, and they blame it on their cycle. Shocker. And I don't know enough if it's true or not. <laughs> they retain water in, in a way that's hard to cut around their cycle. And it's it would be hard as fuck to be a professional athlete as a woman. That's I, I often think about that. It's like, man, you don't get to control when that cycle comes. I guess you'd want that birth control that gets rid of your cycles for like you have one every three or four months or every six That's months depot the shot yeah and there's also stuff that can just push your cycle off by two weeks but i don't know if it makes you feel better or worse who knows what that does to you or if it makes you fucking who cares happy. you work when twice you're messing a with year. your progesterone yeah. so so when you're messing with your progesterone maybe you fail a drug test now they think it's roids right <clears throat> Oh, I didn't consider that, but <laughs> Who yeah. Who knows? Yeah, As a no, professional a lady point. athlete, it's, it, that is hard. I saw the biggest crowd ever assembled last week for a, for a women's athletic event in history. 94,000, oh, I Nebraska, think, showed up right? for that. Yeah, for that women's uh, volleyball, was it, or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge crowd. Out, out, it's crazy. That's almost I don't know why. unbelievable. Like, literally Almost 100,000. Like, yeah. It just, wow. 
If you want a woman's sport to be popular, make the athletes hot and barely dress them. Oh, who was the comedian the other day? This comedian was like, you know how I know? that He's like, I had a volleyball chick once argue that they needed those shorts. They needed those. You know how I know they don't? Because I watched the Special Olympics the other day and <laughs> <laughs> I got to the volleyball event. Wouldn't you know it? Basketball shorts all around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that is much more tasteful. I, in, to me, that's what's killing Olympics. the WNBA. The the women that thrive in the WNBA, that, that's just not the body that guys like. That sport will never be popular. Maybe it is. Show it off, ladies. I can't see anything. Well, only yeah. one of them can dunk, <laughs> right? <clears throat> They yeah, should put them all in suits like Beyonce wore that time. Uh, uh, yeah. Put them in short shorts. They'll kind of look like basketball shorts, but they're only six inches long. Oh, Let's see how Larry Bird special. There's nothing yeah. that's going to make me watch women's basketball. Oh, I like, would. I, Topless. I'm not watching. Men's what about basketball? fighting? What if they had? What if they had? Um, what if they had added fighting? So it's oh. just fighting on a court now. <laughs> no, yeah. like 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 pull your jersey I just, up. I like hockey. <laughs> God, that's an ugly woman. Yeah, you can tell that no. Is that Brittany Griner? Griner? Yeah, Brittany Griner? Yeah, yeah, she looks a lot or like something her with like the that. Height and the tattoos. Is that oh. Fry's Electronics is the sponsor, or is that a different Fry's? Fry's like food stores. Oh, food. Oh, that's not Does even Fry's that? Electronics. It's fry's <laughs> food stores. <laughs> He's right. Yeah, I had to make oh, it. Are the best bulk baked beans this side of Wichita? <laughs> like what a that's sponsor. A, that is a weird sponsor. <laughs> They gotta like change the rules so the body types will change a little bit, you know. Sure. I don't know how to do that, but like softball doesn't have the same rules as baseball, and it's uh it's more enjoyable. Like if you had to watch women play baseball, no one would watch it. They give them a smaller so you, ball. Yeah, um, maybe huh. multi balls. That's more maybe balls like moving around on the court. Yeah, like double the offense, double double the defense. I guess I don't, I don't yeah. know if that works though. I can't I remember. The I last just don't know why you would want to watch. watch. It, like, like women's volleyball is actually fun to watch because they're good at fucking volleyball and they're hot. Yeah. I'm okay oh, with both yeah. You're watching it because you like the volleyball skill. Like when they make a good save or when they when they spike re- or when they uh, serve really well. I, I'm into that part. I'm like, wow, that is impressive. Uh, but you know, I want to see their asses too. I mm-hmm. wouldn't watch men's volleyball. I'll say that. That's, that's how you know. I that's watch how you know you're not volleyball. really a volleyball fan. That you're right. You're right. He likes also, women. I watch men's basketball, so the women really don't have a chance. They really don't. It's Mm-mm. it's a sad state of affairs. But I mean, as long as the NBA keeps paying, like uh, subsidizing them, they'll they'll have a league, right? Like they're I not going to get so. rid I mean, of it. The NBA have, makes look, a they should have a league. I mean, they should have a league. Let them fucking play the game. Just don't make me try to make me go, and don't try to make me subsidize don't them guilt me because nobody watches your <laughs> bullshit games that's my thing right when they're complaining about their pay when they're complaining that it, bill burr has a nice line about it he's like that one's on you why is it on me to make women's basketball thrive like i get i watch men did, did, that, ladies you watch the ladies don't fuss at me for not watching women play i was mm-hmm. like yeah he's kind of onto something there yeah it, it's never going to get popular if it was going to it would have by now <laughs> what about women's sumo ago. wrestling? Would you watch that? That would be great. I mean, out of get a women's sumo league? Yeah. No, because yeah, America would that... win every year. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Walmart. <laughs> they get off their rascal scooters, you know, and square up. Yeah. No need for any of that diaper stuff or honor or tradition. They just get two big fat, two big bruisers from Walmart duking it out. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be awesome. <laughs> from That'd be a good Walmart. Ass sport. I- and Every now still, and then a car drives through and knocks over their competitors. They're they're so fat, like they don't even have to wear tops because it's kind of androgynous by that point. They just got Some fat people are so yeah. fat that they censor themselves. Yeah, that guy on uh, Fish Tank, Airsoft Fatty, he walked yeah. around entirely naked for like <laughs> minutes at a time and full on uh. Peter Griffin stomach covering of his entire genital. He can raise his hands and run at you and you're like, I don't, what's going on? Is there anything down there? What no, is all that? Covered. Yeah, so that? so I that's how I lost my YouTube tank. account. <clears throat> Wait, getting I naked? Showed, <laughs> yeah, I showed a bunch of fat guys. They're all piled on top of each other for an art piece on like how humanity is beautiful. They decided to make like a giant pile of shit out of their bodies, <laughs> and I got a I got a strike for nudity and sexuality. Uh, I can only assume because they thought the men's breasts were women's breasts, but they were all six hundred pounds. So did you sort it out won. yet? Uh, yes, I'm banned. 
That's they sorted <laughs> That's it out. <laughs> they sorted it out right away, Woody. <laughs> One strike and you're out. <laughs> no, I also got a strike for cyber harassment for Tess Holiday of all people. Um, and then I got a I got a minor endangerment strike for showing a news for showing ABC News's coverage of a student that got that the teacher took his switch away and then he stood up and kicked the shit out of the teacher. So I, that, that was minor endangerment. Um, yeah, yeah, you got to not endanger those minors by sharing news clips. No, and I was on his side. That's theft, man. You gotta, you can't be letting some woman steal your switch out Dude, of nowhere. He her after death. <laughs> well, so. you made it sound like it happened in the classroom. He chased her down a hallway. That's right. Well, that have consequences. <laughs> People trying to pull him off. <laughs> and he's yeah. wailing on her. And they're like waiting to pull him off too. Like there's also, a guy walking by. It's <laughs> he's huge. huge. Dude. There's he's a guy tall. walking by, like an ROTC guy. He's walking by, watching her get beat. And you can see him thinking, like, oh man, it's, uh, somebody better go over there and do something <laughs> about that. I guess it'll be me. Uh, like trying to help your wife with the groceries. Like, oh yeah, let <laughs> me, me just. Uh, you need any help over there? Eight IQ points a second. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> now, bam. now that I'm remembering this clip. He did go pretty hard for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that switch. It was his only switch. That guy's going to prison. He's the kind they try as an adult. He's like six four, two eighty or something. He's going to jail. He's going to well, jail. He that woman had no chance to hold on to the switch after he got his hands on her. I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah, I, I, I mean, clearly he was into that game. She should if have been able recall, to look at though, him and tell that he like, meant business. He would have been able to retreat with the switch. For a while before the end of the, of yeah. the conflict. <laughs> like, went into a really Mario wanted... mania and started beating her. I saw a, a video a right insane. before we started and, and, and four black kids steal a car and they get spike stripped right away. And they mm -hmm. run off into this like grassy overcut ravine, trees and bushes and shit. And it's going to be a nightmare to go down in there and get them all. And the cop goes, don't you make me turn this canine loose. And the cop goes, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't hear anything for a second. And the other cop kind of looks at him and goes, Yeah, 23. We got uh, over here by Bryce Park. And then you hear, That's the last chance, last warning. <laughs> and here the guy comes. He's like, I'm coming. I'm coming out. He's like, Tell your friends, come too. And he gets them all to come out because they're afraid of the dog. Because his bark was so good. His bark was so believable, especially if you're off in the woods. You'd be like, fuck, that sounds like a coon dog that wants to eat. It, it was like, <laughs> dude, I wouldn't want to get fucked up by a police dog. Like, Give up no right way. away. I talked about it last week. The guy with the tennis racket who tried to fight the dog off and the cop oh. took the tennis racket from him and started beating him in the face with it while the, while the dog bit his face. That was Crazy! Don't fuck. That's with the last dog. sporting item I would want to use to defend myself against a dog. The hand of that racket. cop it worked pretty good because he turned it sideways and started hitting the guy in the nose with it. <laughs> He's just <laughs> wrapping him across the face. <laughs> Maybe like an Arthur Ashe era tennis racket that I could handle, but not definitely not like a graphite core head. You know, modern racket. No, no, no. So uh, you yeah. mentioned like I, I knew a bit about your your fight on the ISOM front. Who's oh, yeah. who's this other? You have a second concurrent beef. You've you're yeah. Going. Maddox is back. Matt Maddox, Maddox my old back. nemesis, who disappeared five years ago and has just been like pretending to be a banana and a cowboy on Twitch for twelve people. Um, <laughs> then he quit doing that a year ago for unfortunately because it was some it was some of the best content he ever made. Uh, he <laughs> released a video last week where he spends a half an hour accusing Justin Wang of plagiarism and then the next half hour it's like the most dude it's like a it's like a magnum opus of insanity that he's crammed into this hour long video about uh, why he sued Asterios Kokonos you remember that that guy's been on your show i think yeah yeah Asterios has been i haven't seen anything about him in a long time so he had a it's crazy out with Maddox. yeah uh, yeah, so Maddox sued me, Asterios, Patreon, the Patreon representative, every comedian that's ever worked on my show, like my real life business partner. He sued everybody for like uh, $380 million, uh, I don't know, six years ago, maybe less. But apparently he's been working on this just insane video for, according to the screenshots in, in the video, uh, the most recent one is from three years ago. 
So he's been cataloging and scripting this this uh, this uh, this hit piece on Justin Wang and Asterios for three years, and he just decided to drop it uh, last weekend, which we watched obviously on a bonus episode and made fun of it. But it's like it's just hysterical the uh, the response he's getting from you really bring out the best in people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're really you're really good at getting under people's skin and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <bothering them. laughs> So, so yeah. Maddox took that huge L. I recall some of that like five years ago, and now he's back again, and he's threatening he's to sue again. I don't know. He's just like kind of – I don't know if he's just like uh, explaining to people why he now – like his his headcanon of his retcon of why he sued us. Um, it's a very bizarre video, though. Like starting with the Justin Wang. Do you guys know who Justin Wang is? No, I know. I, I've seen him on Twitter. I, I, I've never seen a video of his, though. He's, he's like a really a nice guy. guy. Like, he does, he just does videos on internet history stuff. Like, why, what is the the My Little Pony cum jar? What's that all about? Mm. Like, what about okay. the, the poop knife? What about that? Um, I love channels like that. I'm, I'm going to check out Justin Wang. He's cool. Uh, he made a video explaining Maddox's original lawsuit five years ago. And I think Maddox has been st stewing about it and seething about it. Ever since then, for half a decade, out. yeah, <laughs> really. collecting clips every other year to <laughs> yeah. compile into his his nonsense. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's insane. And I imagine Justin Wang because like I'll see him in like the for you on Twitter. That guy's like popular, and so They're I cannot Im I cannot imagine that battle's going well for Maddox. No, um, Maddox criticized him for having a metal band because he said it was uh, gay or something like that. Like Justin Wang, who's like a uh, lead guitar player for this awesome metal band. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't. Like seems Maddox seems kind of cool, actually. I, did see, I, I saw I saw like a, a still. I saw a screenshot, I guess, from Maddox's video where Maddox is bald and he's wearing like a wig with like long black hair because this guy yeah. Justin has long black hair. And I oh. saw the guy Justin like subtweet him and be like, "Is this dude making fun of me for having hair?" Yeah, like, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's true. Like, that's not a not a good look. You've got a very full head of hair, Justin. Like, yeah, oh, it screw you. To me, it seems to me in this modern age of content creators literally doing battle with one another, you could solve this in a boxing ring somewhere. You know, like like all these little beefs, like the ice from church. They should send their champion, right? That's how they should work Ooh. things out. Mm -hmm. Don't sue people. Christ. That's not what Christ would do. He he he! Summon up a champion of some sort. Kick your would, ass. Would you and oh, Maddox yeah. be wildly lopsided? I know that you can fight. Can he? Oh yeah, like boxing. Yeah, we would be wildly lopsided in any fight. Yes, that's okay. the. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't think he's ever pursued that road of let's fight, Dick. Because Dick unless would probably like, say okay. Unless like a Tomix the Tank Engine like build off or something. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that the Isom thing's funny too because now Eric July's fans are review bombing the ministry. <laughs> what? Uh, they can't review bomb brand. a church. Exactly. <laughs> like, uh, I did you. not feel the Lord at any point. <laughs> that I is not very Christian. Shortest yeah. sermons I have ever been to. <laughs> what? What, are, what do you say? It was so drafty in the vestibule. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, my guys have never bombed or reviewed. Bo no kind of bombing a church has ever happened on my side. So I think you got to kind of take a step back. And, you know. uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So like, uh, that's hilarious. His own fans are trying to ruin like the reviews Yelp? of a ministry organization. Churches? Google. Because it's like a huge, they have a ton of locations. They have like 100,000 ministers. Like, I don't, fuck I saw These motherfuckers are going after my comic book like man you guys are <laughs> you guys are on an, you guys are on one there's not a real god because because they're so I mean, mad at me right because they're so mad yeah. at me and and eric told them that i tricked the ministry into <laughs> suing him so they're like i'll show you your guys are working in concert you're the legion of doom against eric july yeah you uh, and the international school of ministry natural allies Against, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So now you don't. So now you have almost uh, a champion fighter, a proxy figure to fight God. That you've set yes. up. For, yeah. God <laughs> and then the the CEO of ISOM, the ministry, came out while Eric went, went after Eric Father made a videos. 
<laughs> yeah. Fucking after right. Eric made a video saying like that I'm going to jail for making fun of his comic book and for <laughs> tricking for tricking the ministry into suing him, the CEO of the ministry came out who's like you know how like all all ministry guys are like doctors? I don't know yeah. what they're they're all, like you know like Doctor Eli Gemstone like the Doctor mm -hmm. Eli Gemstone of the ministry came out and said, "Look, uh, guys, we're not trying to sue anybody. We sent <laughs> Eric July this lawsuit. We didn't serve it. We sent it to him because we wanted to work it out. We don't know why he's telling you that we were tricked into sending <laughs> you this." Um, <laughs> yeah, it seems like he hasn't handled it well. It seems like he's. <laughs> He's like when there have been opportunities to de-escalate and get back to selling his comic for money. He's he's not doing that. Yeah, yeah he's just like a fucking idiot. I guess. Seems like you're having a great time, so I'm glad. <laughs> I'm the happiest I've ever been online. They could send me to jail for. <laughs> they could send me to jail for a thousand years for making fun of his comic, and I'd be like, that was worth it, man. That week was hilarious. Dude, I'll be right next of... to Trump, sitting there in the jail, going, "What are you in for?" And he's like, "Well, you know, upending democracy." And you're like, "Awesome, man. Kind of me too." Well, I. I tricked an uh, international school of ministry into harassing a <laughs> he looked awesome. he did it. very small author very small author but i think the really. last time i was on it was with harley do you guys mm -hmm. remember that right before he did his boxing match and i said he was yeah. gonna get clobbered by john morrison yeah. and then he got like knocked out of the ring by john morrison <laughs> well, he got back in that should be oh, known yeah, yeah. people who didn't see the fight he was, he was... <laughs> He I love that guy. On that was awesome. When he he had gotten knocked out, and then he gets up and he's got this look on his face like that just happened. I'm outside the ring now. Well, I better get back in. That's what, yeah. I'm supposed to be in there. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. That was great. He like I I liked that he responded that way. Got fucked up, knocked out of the ring, and then just befuddled. Man, he get pulled back a short keeps straw fighting. though, fighting that guy. Because if you're gonna do yeah. that, look, yeah. look. I mean, he got paid. He didn't get beat up that bad. But yeah. now, all things being said, if you're gonna do that, wouldn't you want to be the guy who's all right? Just don't hurt yourself, and everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> like this guy doesn't I, know what he's doing. Like don't trip. I found don't do a myself... backflip after you beat him up. <laughs> like. Don't get if hurt. I found myself fighting the mayor of Slamtown, I hope that mm. I would conduct myself like Harley did. Yeah. yeah. And like going into that fight, like he had the benefit of like no one thought he was going to beat the mayor of Slamtown. Like everyone was like, he's going to lose. Let and I hope. Like, let's see if there's a, a like a real fight in it. <laughs> You're Whereas, gassing like, him up, uh, Woody. <laughs> I, I like Harley and I admire his. I love he's Harley. Were, ring. But, but the mayor of Slamtown Town were swinging wildly at each other in a bathroom of a bar. I'd be like, yeah. come on, Harley, make one connect. But. <laughs> When we square up and put gloves on and tape our wrists and then look each other in the eye and then slowly step forward, it was like, ah, that guy that probably knows how to do this already is going to win, isn't he? <laughs> For sure. Yeah, he looked like yeah, the Undertaker when he got up off the table. Oh, like Frankenstein. Oh, what was that? <laughs> John Morrison bad. Uh, I will say this. Than like a, Harley like the is the most skilled and most courageous Jewish boxer I can name. Bar hmm. none. Yeah. yeah, not a single. Mike Tyson braver. isn't Kabbalah. Did that happen? <laughs> it seems like something so. like that happened. No, no, no he was a uh, he's a black Israelite. For a oh. while, he was uh, with the Nation of so. Islam, I believe. Right? Oh. You know, oh. Praise be to Allah! And then he talked about eating people's children. That's uh, yeah, that that, that does not check just their foreskin. <laughs> he has some of the most classic <laughs> interviews of all time. He has the one where he's screaming at the guy, like like I'll fuck you till you love me, you fucking faggot. Oh, and it's like, yeah. oh shit! You—that's the man that you're gonna fight tomorrow night. That you're comfortable saying that to in front of all these people—that's wild. Then there's a woman interviewing him once, and she went too far. I don't know what she asked. He's like, normally I don't associate with talking to women unless we're gonna fornicate. So we should probably stop stop talking right now, unless you know. Man, and he's she's big like, on the well, <laughs> he's big on the implication. Back and to you, Tom. <laughs> that was after the rape, like, I think. And then like, yeah, it was. Then like yeah. eight years ago, that guy on ESPN or something, I, I think that the mayor of some some mayor met with Mike, and the and the question was, do you think it might be bad for the mayor's campaign now? Because you know you're a convicted rapist, and Mike's like, nobody brought that up or said anything like that, or you're a fucking piece of shit, you rat yeah. fuck. And he's like, we're live right now. I don't give a fuck. What are you gonna do? 
What are you gonna do? <laughs> fuck you, rap fuck piece of shit. And the, and the guy's like, well, that's Mike Tyson. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and like it's getting scary. Mike's getting real upset about this whole thing and bringing up the rape shit. And I don't think Mike raped that lady because I don't I don't I just don't. I really I already I always believed Mike and disbelieved OJ. That it was just clear to me that one of them was lying and one was telling the truth. Yeah, I agree. But so I don't remember exactly why I don't think you raped her, but I, I know I remember it was litigated and reviewed after the fact, and it was like, oh yeah, okay, that he really did get railroaded. But now all the facts are lost to me. Yeah, I forgot all the facts too. He was found guilty in a court of law, which isn't a good look. Yeah, yeah. he went to prison. Wait, yeah. were these multiple? He came instances? out looking great. One though. he was guilty, and one he wasn't, or is it? No, I, I don't I, know anything about. I, it. He was found guilty of raping a woman it's one guilty, time, and he okay. went to prison for it. And that's kind of what that's that's the whole thing. Robin Givens, I, wasn't it? No, no, that's that's no. Howard Stern's co-host. Another Givens. No, that's uh, Robin Quivers. Robin Quivers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is the co-host. Robin Givens was his ex-wife, I think, and not the person oh. he raped. And I'm not sure about this. Did Lucky he her. rape a hotel maid or something? I'm not sure about that. I don't part. think Mike Tyson has ever raped anybody. Didn't he go to jail for it after being convicted? I mean, I don't know what that has to do with anything. Oh, she met him in a nightclub. Uh, so I have that wrong. Yeah. I know that interview you're talking about, Kyle, where he, where he talks to that guy who says, we quote it all the time. My, me and my girlfriend goes, you know, you seem like a nice guy, but you're really kind of a piece of thit. <laughs> Mike, we're live right now. I don't give a fuck. You're like a rat fuck over there. That's so awesome. <laughs> you seem like a nice guy, but you're really a piece of shit. <laughs> Just the amount of confidence, like sitting across from the table from anyone as Mike Tyson, like that you must have, like, because he's like, you know, there are rules to society, but I will disregard them, Mike. And he's. And he's gonna fuck you up. You see videos of him now. He's like sixty, and he can fire off five punches. Mike's in a been through a lot of stuff. His daughter died tragically. I think she dr like drowned in a pool or something. Mm. Um, I remember seeing him on Rogan, and this is like eight years ago. Like he he, had, he hadn't worked out or jogged or done anything for like a decade or something. And and Joe's like, you don't work out at all because he still looked big. He looks look fat. It was like hangover times, and he's like, mm -hmm. no, I can't do that because that ignites my ego, and I start wanting to run faster. And I start wanting to run quicker. And it, it, I need to hit that heavy back harder. And then he's like, I can't do that. I can't let that version of me come back. And then like four years ago, he was like, the gods of war have called on me to rekindle my fighting spirit. <laughs> it was literally something like Whoa. that, he said. And then he started working out again. And he went from fat <clears throat> to like Mike Tyson again in like six months. And then he fought <laughs> whoever the fuck, um, the form, another boxer, like an old was boxer. Was it Cuba Gooding Jr.? Man, Roy Jones, I think you're right. Cuba Gooding yeah, Jr. is an actor, up, isn't he? Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat the shit out of radio in this thing. He's a retard. He, Cuba Gooding Jr. is like, I'm from the Method School of Acting, son. <laughs> I'm gonna beat the shit out of this snow Wait. dog motherfucker. Like, <laughs> I think he played a boxer once. I'm not even sure. <laughs> Did he? Uh -uh. I don't know. But I would, like, honor, I would pay he to see that in the ring. Cuba Gooding Jr. Playing versus boxer Mike versus Tyson. Mike Tyson <laughs> as a boxer. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cuba Gooding Jr., Sugar Ray Leonard versus Mike Tyson's Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson wait, as Mike Tyson. Wait, no. That guy's got an Oscar. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, Cuba the Maddox shit, I wanted to like stay on that for a sec. Like, It's unbelievable that... like I remember in 2004... Like, I'm like 13, 14 years old, 2004, 2005. And like going on Maddox's original site, the biggest problem, or not the biggest problem, the b best page in the universe, whatever it was, can't even remember. And reading his little articles and being like, this is so funny. <laughs> like, this is this is the funniest stuff I've ever read online. This was pre YouTube. So, like, we, it was basically albino, black sheep, E bombs world, something awful, like yeah, those Tucker sites. Max. And then there was, you know, <clears throat> Maddox's stuff. And, I don't know if there's ever been someone who was legitimately like an internet, a true OG. Like he was writing that shit before YouTube, before like blogs were big. Like he yeah. was that guy and it was wildly <laughs> popular. And one of his big things at the time that I think about all the time is like he had some article and he was like, 
I am, I have a bigger website than Coke. I have a bigger website than Pepsi. I have a bigger website than this. And even at 14, I'm like, nobody goes to Coke.com. And like, yes. but, and he was like, and I don't advertise ever. I never advertise on my site and I won't ever. Oh, yeah. And do you think he regrets that? Do you um, think he regrets that a lot? Like, cause now it seems like he is truly in the doldrums of being an internet creator. Like I have not heard anything about him other than his ancillary remaining relationship with you for eight years <laughs> like, like at all like biggest problem yeah. with you and him was the last time i remembered him being a part of something yeah um no because he's got this thing that like everybody who i seem to fight with for an extended period of time has this thing where they can just never admit that they're wrong like he will maddox will never admit that not running ads on his website was a mistake i mean it'd be pointless now because yeah. like they don't do ads like that on websites anymore but it was dumb at the time um he won't admit that was dumb he won't admit that all his loss is that suing me was dumb uh that's what his whole new video was about just justifying it probably justifying it in his own mind as mm -hmm. much as in the mind of his like his thousands of fans that comment on it and act like he's just recovering from cancer. Like they're like, Oh, <laughs> it's so brave of you. Or like he just got raped. Like it's so brave of you to come forward with this story of harassment that you're suffering. I hope you get these people. Um, yeah, no, he didn't. Um, and like <laughs> for him to not know, like, I don't know, maybe I gave him too much credit, but like he was an internet OG. He should know that like, a frivolous lawsuit against another internet creator just like undoes whatever image he had of a devil make like who cares i'm doing my own thing it's like oh no so you care deeply and intensely and you need to pursue it legally to shut them up okay well yeah, that's not okay. that's not good for the image you're trying to cultivate here it now, makes you seem very sensitive actually no eric's the same way he's like mr ancap like libertarian like the government shouldn't be involved but then as soon as he gets made fun of he's like well i'm calling the government and they're gonna come <laughs> shut you up uh, <laughs> no he doesn't like taxes but he, he yeah. Shut your ass up. yeah it's that a funny video you should go go read the comments at least because it's like people saying oh my god i'm so i'm so sad to hear that you were raped by these comedians online and then the next one is like man you're so old that your bald head has a bald spot on it <laughs> <laughs> woody oh. i know you like reality shows so i i found out about this incredible japanese reality show that existed in the late 90s mxc uh, Nas um it's it's I, this guy, I think the guy's name was nasubi oh, but okay. here's what they did they locked him na la naked in a room with nothing and they broadcast it live for 15 months and the only way he could get food or any possessions at all was by uh the big pile of magazines in the room had all those mail-in sweepstakes <laughs> so he had to continuously enter mail-in sweepstakes until he'd accrued like ten thousand united states dollars but that takes 15 months so he was just going insane you know no hair he's got this beard his hair's a mess it's like old boy, except no like incest or craziness, right? He's going insane in this room. It it's got 17 million viewers every Sunday night. It's huge. They edit it down into summaries that are played week that are on weekdays. It's it's one of the bigger shows in the country, and people people find the hotel the uh, the apartment that he's locked in. So they they come in the middle of the night and they kidnap him out of the room. The producers do. He wakes up, whole new apartment, whole new pile of magazines. Let's go again. <laughs> <laughs> it was absurd. It's the, it's like, how did this actually happen? I didn't believe it had happened the first time. I, I was like, somebody made some shit up. But I started Googling, and yeah, it happened. It Wait, happened. 15, like, months? 15 months. 15 months. Do you remember this what a long called? time ago? Um, is it late 90s? 90s late so. 90s. Uh, if you, it's in the late 90s, a Japanese game show called The Contestant. It was uh, broadcast a man being locked in a room for 15 months. He was naked, starving, and alone. He was also unaware that his life was being broadcast on national television. The show was know? extremely popular. <laughs> average, why why did he think he was there? <laughs> million viewers every Sunday night. He thought it was a contest. The, Day the 75. Nasubi, I am a so scared. Like he was a Japanese <laughs> comedian uh, who, had, who had won the lottery for a show business related job. And he was challenged to stay alone, unclothed in an apartment for the show. Sasunu. <laughs> S-U-S-U-N-U. Uh, the only possessions he had were those that he'd won from the sweepstakes. You know, he'd mail in and get the stuff from the mail order stuff. Yeah, oh, absolutely wow. insane. 
the Japanese are su on such another level with their game shows. That was probably the same time who want we were coming up with who wants to be a millionaire, right? Like we went like the, the massive bigger than life capitalist route. They went creepy hidden camera, naked man locked in a room. This is for a so year much route. better than than ours. This is, is way it? better than than trivia for a million dollars. I would would you, you rather watch, watch this trivia? Yes. I love trivia. Yeah, but I would I'd like to play trivia. I don't want to watch trivia. Like th this fair. is and I wouldn't want to do this either, but this is at least interesting. It's terrifying. And I mean, he was challenged to enter until he won a million yen, yen? or whatever. That's eight grand. Yeah, but, but you got to get... It's like eight grand worth of free shit from the sweepstakes until he wins the show, I think, was the deal. It's a little confusing. Yeah, but prorated, that's 15 months of your life. He said that he didn't quit because of his like Japanese spirit of determination. And also, he didn't have any clothes. <laughs> and also, because of the lock of the door. <laughs> well, how much time have you spent on this show taylor when when will you hit that long of time being in this room that you're in right now uh, to it'd be a long time to to equate to 15 <laughs> 24 hour day or 15 months of 24 hour days that'd be horrible yeah yeah especially if I you have is like free magazines it would probably be like You'd be getting like chick tracks from religious groups and and all sorts of shit like that. Like, what else are you gonna win? Sushi, seaweed. I don't know what they sell on in magazines in 1998 in Japan. Other Japanese magazines. Who knows? It could be anything. They're a yeah, very strange culture, Taylor. Nukes really set your crazy to eleven, like yeah. for the next hundred years or so. Apparently, we beat or the maybe shit forever. out of them. We, you know why? Um, you know why they bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki with the nukes? Why they picked those two? Well, yeah, there was a, no. a weather-related event, so like I think Tokyo got called up. But the reason that Hiroshima and Nagasaki were still standing uh, is because they they saved them. They saved those cities. All the other cities were destroyed already from conventional bombing raids and fire bombing raids. They saved those two to test on. <laughs> but then they didn't even too. not even it was the, the biggest like, L ever. Huh? That is a huge L. I was gonna say like that's. That's a lot to save two entire cities. Like not even because there was one person who's like, all right, we're going to save that city. And someone was like, no, no, you don't test things once. Like you, you <laughs> test things. <laughs> you no, they had a backup. Batman. So that means they what had are we three do with cities. They were, yeah. Uh, that's, um, that was a huge L they took. And now they've got like tentacle porn and they're working themselves like 90 hours a week until they die at 32 years old and stuff. I think they always <laughs> did that. Well, they work themselves 90 hours a week till they die at 102. I think they're trying to make up for, like, that L they took, trying to catch back up. I mean, they did in the 80s. They're still going, though. It's wild. What an industrial And the worst part, people. they don't have any diversity. So it's, Not a you know, bit. Very, Not or a bit. you could say 100% diversity. And how do they operate? <laughs> yeah, that's that's how do they they're operate all without minorities. all the food and music? It's 100% diverse yeah. by the NBA code of diversity. <laughs> 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 We're apparently everywhere but fucking uh, Switzerland they're, is diverse. <laughs> their trains aren't crashing like, into each other. and Their airplane uh, um, companies aren't going down for no reason. That's true. That's true. They, they do know infrastructure. Yeah. They love taking care of it. They, like, they love gardens. I'd like to go to Japan. That'd be fun. Oh, you should. It's it's awesome. It's. Uh, I think all three of you guys have been. Yeah, I'm yeah. not allowed to go. Allow you went me. with. Uh, didn't you go he to Japan? For no, he went with Joe and like was ringside with him when Joe mysteriously didn't lose that fight to Anthony Pettis in spectacular fa fashion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> man, I this remember is, him winning that fight. This is like a Mandela Every time effect. I've I would have sworn you went to Joe Japan. Fight, it's been a, it's been an unfortunate. Yeah. I was telling my girlfriend the other day. I was like, there was this one time where me and Woody drove like 20 fucking hours to support our boy because he was going to fight in uh, in in an arena in Boston and they, they beat the shit out of him and we felt so bad and we knew he wouldn't want to see us so we just went home. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we hadn't seen him in like a year and a half, two years before then and I have seen him since. We're out of here. We saw him a like, little bit him. <laughs> Dude, no, I saw Joe Lozon fight in Japan. Now in Japan, the crowds are different. They don't cheer and stuff. They watch in absolute silence. You, no one says a word. It's quieter than church, right? Yeah. So, so they're in there fighting. You can hear every blow land, and then out of nowhere, Joe's coach Steve yells, "Keep your hands up, Joe!" Everybody heard it except Joe. 
And then comes the kick. <laughs> oh. And I was like, every time I watch the replay, I hear Steve's voice now. You know, Hands up. And I wish Joe heard it too. Was it weird that no one was cheering? Like I, I, I wouldn't have guessed that. Don't the yeah, Japanese no. like to drink? And or is that Koreans? That I do think they like to drink, but they, but in sports they're just dead silent. Hear a pin drop. Uh, you know who's got yeah. the best crowd in the fucking world? <clears throat> France, France. Okay. Dude, the last UFC event this last weekend. Um, you know that when they go to France, you bring in all the French fighters. There's a handful. That crowd was amazing. They were so good. Um, I love those European crowds in general. They've got those chants that they bring over from soccer. And, uh, I love it too. South American, fucking shit people. You Brazilian pieces of shit. Hmm, Worst chance. crowd. No Worst crowd. They, they'll like abandon the building when their guy is retiring. Uh, who was it? Glover Teixeira is like retiring. Fucking old champion. He's had like all these shots at the belt. I think he held it for a minute. He's up there crying all beaten and bloody. This is it for me. And they're a fucking empty arena. They've left him. Like, shittiest fans ever. That is okay. pretty shitty. He's retired. Brazil- and, and, you know, they tried to kill Chael Sonnen. You know, they Chelsea chant, Sonnen. You're going to die to the Brazilian opponent. <laughs> and I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. They, you're and like, you're What's Brazil, that beautiful so it's chant? Because it's like, Kulula, Kulula. <laughs> they're saying, you will die here tonight. You will die <laughs> yeah, here I, tonight. I'm here for it. I like, <laughs> if I'm the opposing guy, I dance like they're you know cool i do a little cool la dance bring it yeah don't let it get it's like the it's like the philly of countries yeah like (laughs) brazil (laughs) yeah brazil where they're just like horrible fans mean to you i guess yeah i I wouldn't want to deal with that they have a shitload of murders there too don't they oh it's like crime ridden just like i feel like brazil they've got those favelas those like multi-level slums full of ak-47 wielding drug lords Great MW2 yeah. match. Wow. One of the best ones. Great beaches. Big asses. You know, it's not all yeah. bad. Uh-huh. No, there's lots of good stuff there, I'm sure. Why are they, like Brazilian waxings when they wax your asshole and your vagina? Or I guess your balls, too. Like, why did they get named after that country? Why is that a Brazilian? Is it because Brazilians wear those skimpy bathing suits, so you need your asshole waxed? Maybe they led the, led the trend in mm. butthole. Smoothest assholes on the yeah. planet. Or it could yeah. be like one of those, Stop like, uh... Coyer like German chocolate cake stories where like that's because it was some guy named like Stevie German who came up with like a tasty cake. Like it's not yeah. German. Maybe there's you know, like my uncle maybe, maybe Adam Brazil salad. was the first, you know, ass reconstructionist. Yeah. And they call it that. What or country do you think has a population of women most likely to do anal? Greece? Most likely. Germany. France? Greece. I'm, I'm interested. Why, why'd you leap with Greece? Because I, I, it's I, called Greek, isn't it? Like anal sex? Yeah. Oh. It's because the men do it, isn't it? Well, is that because the, the women the, do it? The <laughs> it's because of the men. No, in, in Greece, <laughs> anal sex with a woman is strictly forbidden. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's making no only. sense. He has a pussy. Yeah. You can. That's what they sound like. That yeah. is what the Greek <laughs> sound like, apparently. <laughs> Oh, Brazil, France, and Greece are my leading. Oh, that's a Russia. That's Italian, Zach says. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's anal, Greece, sex, anal porn, sex is a way that a teacher bonds with his pupil. And like that's, that's <laughs> oh, the I Vatican. Imagine. The Vatican is the yeah. anal sex capital of the world. If you're oh, like, the no, it's a question. Numbers. What he said, women. <laughs> oh, women. <laughs> I stand by Germany. I feel like the Germans Germany, are by yeah. and large more into poop than than other other groups. So that that right there mm. leads you into some ass play. And, uh, and and I just feel like they're another country that took that L, but went a different direction with it. You know, they just they're all, we're, it's almost time to tap them, tamp them back down again. They're getting a little little ahead of themselves, Germany. Are they? Yeah, I guess I'm not up on what Germany. I don't find them to be trustworthy. They make those good that, cars. Yeah, too good. But I mean, as I, I'm sure they have good food there, but no one ever t- thinks about German food. Com- like Italy and Spain and France are right there. Like. No one's ever talking on German food. They don't have good food there. They don't. Germany. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? Just sausage and snitchel? yeah, it's just like sausages and shit, and like <laughs> kind of a mishmash of other things. But they don't really get it. Who has the best food in Europe, Dick? Uh, I think either France or Italy. I I would the last time I went to Italy, I would eat uh, two dinners sometimes. It was so good. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, those would be the stereotypical ones. Yeah, like you, I, I could see like not eating in Germany because you're about to hit up Italy. Like, yeah. no, don't. We're not pulling off in Germany. We're 
We're going to Northern Italy. Don't fill up on schnitzel. What do you think? Don't fill up on nonsense. Don't eat. <laughs> don't fill France. up on rotten carp here in Norway. <laughs> There's pasta in <laughs> in Italy. <laughs> Any, anywhere that ferments fish or does anything like that, it's a no-go for me. All those Scandinavian countries that that eat those disgusting pickled fish products and such. Mm. Yeah. Not, Most not regional sure food about. like that, there's a reason it didn't break free of that regional constraint. Like rotten fish, you know, stored in whale blubber that like Norwegians eat and would swear up and down that it's good. Like there's a reason that didn't have the the legs that pizza did. Pizza's worldwide because it's awesome. It's incredible. It's a great food. Pasta conquers every land it arrives in. But rotten fish? Fuck no. And these and no. like the, the Anthony Bourdain type people will be like, oh, I'm gonna go have a bucket of maggots in in fucking <laughs> Somalia. And like, oh, there's a little cumin on it. Oh, you guys don't even get it. And it's like, no, there's a reason that like if you went five villages over, they'd be like, that is disgusting. Like, that, they would, like they wouldn't even fuck with it because you must like, eat yeah. the beef lava. Yeah, like it, it's just dry lava. It's, it's gross. Like, a, like pig Taylor's food. going to full Lizzo or something on us. Like pizza's good. What was the other you said was pasta, pasta was good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course they're good. They're just fucking empty carbs and bullshit. Yeah, they, and then they're like this other thing that is like I don't know fish, raw fish, which is probably good for you. That sucks. It will never escape that country. Well, no, because I can. Sushi is great. Sushi is raw fish, sushi and that sucks. explodes everywhere. Everybody's wrong. It tastes, no, you're you're insane. Sushi's delicious. The, I am nor- insane, but that doesn't make sushi good. I you live in the middle of the country, Woody? North, North Carolina, Carolina, home of the um, best sushi mm, in yeah. North Carolina. <laughs> 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 Do I live in Missouri. We have awful sushi, and I still eat it. Like, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we have we pretty good sushi good over here. Are you in California? I, yeah. Yeah, I would guess. Yeah, uh-huh. you got but I've tried a lot. I've tried a lot of sushi. Everyone's like, well, "Have you tried what California you roll?" That's the beginner oh, one. Fuck a California yes. roll. What? I've tried the mall. I've tried the tuna roll. The California roll. I've tried octopus. I've tried. Have you tried deep fried cum? Because I've had that. I, well, yeah, I make it myself. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's you, why I got on the lock and load in the first place. <laughs> I was getting hungry. <laughs> I like uh, I like Nigeria a lot. I think that's how you pronounce it. When you've just got like a piece of raw fish on like the little dollop of rice and just put a little soy yeah. sauce on a little uh, or the sashimi where it's just the raw meat. You feel that like- I, can, I want a little rice there, or, or and I, I like the sea pa- the uh, the seaweed paper or whatever it is too. That rice paper stuff. Nori. Um, I like that shit too. I don't know. Yeah, I like I like sushi, but it does have to be good. I, I used to eat Kroger sushi, like like uh, get, um, grocery store sushi, and not worry about it. But I've gotten food poisoning too many times. I can't do that shit anymore. I'm tired of mm. shitting blood. Can't. <laughs> <Just> gotta, <laughs> gotta stop. You know, like you were that. eating disgusting California <laughs> rolls. It. If you were shitting blood, because there's nothing real in there. That's like <laughs> it's like imitation crab nice. and rice and. <laughs> oh, I, I don't get the California rolls though. I usually get spicy tuna. I really like the tuna. And um and like I said, I use, if I if it's a restaurant and I get is it nigiri or nigiri? You would nigiri. think nigiri. I think nigiri? it's nigiri. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I don't know, that, but that is the good one. That's when it's just the the meat on top of the rice. Uh-huh. But yeah, yeah, like sushi rocks. You're definitely in the minority here, Woody. Like sushi exploded because it's really good. Sir Straman, which is the fermented fish in I think oil in Sweden or whatever that like they make mm. people eat on YouTube as a punishment in like reality Fuck. shows. Like there's a reason stuff like that doesn't take off. And I bet they still only sell it because people like in Norway are like, we have to, you know, stick with our culture. And they're like driving past pizza places to try and, you know, convince themselves to eat their nasty ass Norwegian food. Have you ever had it? it sounds like anchovies, which are awesome. I've had anchovies and anchovies yeah. are not bad at all. But uh-huh. I've, I mean, I've never had Sirstraman, but I've watched anchovies YouTube make a good garnish or a good when topping. People, when I've opened anchovies, I'm not like, uh, like these people are like gagging when they open these cans because it's oh, literally really? rotten. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Anchovies like, deserve like, more hate. Everyone hates pineapples on pizza, and pineapples on pizza are actually pretty good. Adds a little like sang to it. People who hate pineapples on pizza only do so because the internet told them to do so. Jalapenos yeah. and pineapples. That's how I like it, baby. Oh, and, it's a, anchovies, on the other hand, they earn their dislike. Focus your lasers on them. I'm bringing no. anchovies back. I'm going to come into a pizza place with a little can of anchovies and crack it and clear the whole restaurant. <laughs> Enjoy myself. Peace. I read about a good dating you, right? trend, and I want to get your feedback on it. 
Are you ready for this? Yes. All right. A little two paragraph uh, lay it out. This chick went on a fairly unremarkable date last winter. She and her date grabbed hot ciders at a Brooklyn bar. And when the bill came, the dude gave the bartender his credit card. Cool so far. A few days later, the guy asks for a second date. She told him, no, I'm not interested. So then he sent her a Venmo request for her drinks from the first date. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. I, I like. I, I don't know why. It, like, if there is equality now, why are guys still paying for everything, especially in this like early date? Now she's a stay at home mom or whatever. The situation has changed, but in this where they're just dating and she's like living on her own independently, why are guys paying for everything? Women, uh, see, see that we say that because it's funny. But women don't want equality when you actually have meet one that likes you. Um, they, they're fine with all of that uh, the other way. They're fine with yeah. things the other way. They want to talk a big game on social media, but they're perfectly fine with <laughs> you paying for the thing and them cooking and cleaning. And then like like most women, like like the vast mm -hmm. majority. I'm not saying they, they want to be slaves or anything. They're just like, yeah, that, that seems like a fair exchange of goods and services. And, and you do this and I do that kind of thing. I don't know. Slaves I don't, don't talk back. Me. That's the big no, difference. Or that's... Or they lest they get the rod. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's hilarious. Like that guy. I mean, and she's not going to pay his Venmo request, but no, he could he could get no his way. seven bucks. So it, it, why not? What try? do you think about? All right, so here's here's something similar. So I think that's silly because that's a first date. I bought you the drink because I'm I'm showing you that I'm the kind of guy who has seven extra dollars on me. That this is stuff. <laughs> <wrong. Yeah. laughs> All right. So I mean, whatever she was just it didn't drinks. it didn't work out. You know, for whatever reason. I, I lose my 750. I don't. I'm not going to Venmo you. But what if we had like a six month relationship and I bought you like hypothetically like a two thousand dollar bracelet or something like that? Shit. Could I be like, hey, didn't work out, you know? Like I thought it would. Um, I'd like that bracelet back. I think it's actually lie. My grandmother's. <laughs> you know, like yeah. like she should turn it over, right? She should, Maybe. because she doesn't know you're lying. You see? You should turn it back over. Give me my shit. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my fucking Camaro back. <laughs> In construction, there's typically a, a pay-as-you-go situation, right? You finish 25% of the project, you send an invoice for 25% of the overall project. When you hit the halfway point, there's another milestone. You bill okay. the guy for the next quarter. Mm -hmm. Hopefully... These women who are, you know, staying at your place or whatever are doing a similar pay as you go arrangement. They need to be doing whatever it is they do to earn their keep. Yeah. Nothing. He needs nothing to send her a KPI report and <laughs> and tell her <laughs> KPI report. <laughs> but but like in your relationship, like key performance like, indicators. Like seriously, like like Taylor, if you dated a girl for a year, would you ever ask for some expensive gift you'd given her back? No, I I wouldn't buy a girl a really expensive gift in the first year. More likely than not, like what if it's like like hypothetically, it's something you already had. Like you had an extra one of, like I don't know if you've got camera gear or something. But she, you're like, hey, yeah, use mine. But she's she's like, oh, he gave me that. You want to oh. get that back, huh? Oh fuck! No, you just reminded me of an old iPod that I don't have anymore. That I should probably I want go my get camera back. back. <laughs> <sighs> that had, bitch. Had the YouTube <laughs> album on it. Yeah, that I, I don't think that. I was trying to get it back. It was pre YouTube. It was a long time ago. Back. You know why I don't ask for it back? It's ego driven. Because I'm the kind of baller that doesn't give a fuck about what you took from me. Like that's where my head is. <laughs> me wanting an iPad back implies that I don't just fucking rain iPads, and that's who I aspire to be. So, yeah, but why are you trying to impress I don't the girl rain my pads. I'm with... very cheap. I want all women to know that. Tell your friends how cheap that guy is. Dick gives me iPads, ladies. Don't, don't fall for that. He likes that's, me more than you. It's a good filtering method. Yeah. Here's, what you, here's, the other, here's from the other side. You just send him an invoice for the blow for the after dinner blowjob. Right? Here's the here's the uh, uh, I don't know if you can do that. Say so here's a prepaid invoice for if yeah. they cash it out, right? Then you got well. Then you get hey, high. like to yeah, file I a turn her in for prostitution. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to yeah, file a resolution paper. request on this hundred bucks <laughs> that you took. <laughs> yeah, you, that is pretty uh, embarrassing to give someone a gift and then ask for it back. Mm -hmm. Very much Indian giver shit. That's like, racist. Then, no, not according to Seinfeld. You can't be racist against white people. They're Indians. True. 
They're the pe- the Indian giver that was the white person. It's an insult towards the people who gave gifts and took them back, right? You, you can't call white people point. the N-word, Woody. That's not, <laughs> that's not allowed. I'm not going to stop. Well, yeah, you can't at the mall or the movies. Yeah. <laughs> but in your own home. <laughs> Sargon proved that. My nickname for Jackie. <laughs> it's my new- yeah. Man, you you do not want to hear me call my new dog over. <laughs> In fairness, his dog is black. Oh man, it's no, weird. That would be <laughs> it's weird hearing the uh, the dating conversation now. I haven't been uh, I haven't been back since uh, the big uh, uh, Taylor fiasco that I've never no, gotten no. to talk about yet. So now Kyle's got the girlfriend, and Taylor's back with all the. Uh, the one hander. Now I'm, now every I'm night. back in the church of Kyle on on the dating apps, and he's not even here to to be to be my shepherd. I don't yeah. think he's people not, realize <laughs> what a like humanitarian service Kyle and Taylor are doing in this church of Kyle. Right? Like you think they're just running through women? No, 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 no. They are fostering girls. They are, they are just loving them now until they find their forever homes down the road. Uh-huh. <laughs> Forever <homes. laughs> that was Kyle's look of absolute just, just disgust. <laughs> He's not I've never been on the show before, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, what was your name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. After I got divorced, I was like, damn it. Kyle and Dick were right. Like, <laughs> nobody in my life other than Kyle and Dick responded to that news with like, don't do it, especially Dick. Dick was like, "No, brother, oh, get away!" What a, what a horrible mistake you're he making. He was like, uh, "It's a legal contract that's not gonna that that can't help you." <laughs> like, yeah, it, it's like all it, the it, things it, you it, need it, are not in that contract. <laughs> Don't sign it. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> <laughs> now, some people only have to learn this lesson once, Taylor. It could be you. You might be one of these lucky men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Like I'll, like, so, let me tell you what you do next time, Taylor. You look happier, though. You look so much happier. Last time, you looked so thinking about your house Defeated. and stuff and beaten yeah. down. Look you, at you now. A lot, a lot of stress. Yes. Your head looks you smaller. Look better now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I got. I, I lost a bunch of weight again. You got to be fit when you're when you're out out in the market again. You can't be a big fat fuck. Wow. You're. I think you're talking about hockey less. <laughs> from the outside, Taylor. <laughs> from the outside. Damn, that was. Look at this. <laughs> oh, whoa! Your divorce looked tame <laughs> from the outside. Like, like the finance stuff seemed to get settled without a lot of drama by it comparison did, yeah. to other divorces. One hundred percent. It was really easy as far like a total rinky dink divorce as far as were there like, screaming matches go. on the fa- i used to work with a guy who got nope. divorced and cubes don't give much privacy oh my Oof. god he would just like how often do you scream as loud as you can scream never, never. not him <laughs> he and this guy was chill chill as fuck but he was driven to wit's end by this divorce. Yeah, Let me the ask only you time this. I yell is like during this Could show. you ever hear him? Like he gets off the phone. That's the goddamn last time, Judith. The last time I speak to you, it's settled now. God! And he hangs up. <laughs> and you, could you hear him? <laughs> it, was, it wasn't far from that. Yeah. Like, like you just don't hear people. I was going to say men, but both men and women scream as loud as they can scream. That's yeah. not a common thing. No, he thank was God just... that was not something we done. It was cordial the whole time. Like as far as divorces go, easy as shit. Like, the, but the like I was like was was Mr. I Stress. About. Rather the officiating. Um, look, there's no reason to have a, a, you know, any official paperwork. I got, I got a guy Taylor. He's gonna print some pa- very official looking paperwork out with everyone's mm-hmm. names on it. He'll, I'll be your witness, Father Kyle here. Nobody knows me. I'll put the. I, you've seen. Oh, I've got yeah. that old priest robe, Smart. right? I like this. Yeah. My costume. <laughs> I'll be. I'll gray the, the hair up. I'll come in. I'll use a cane. I'll, I'll put a whole Johnny Knoxville face on. <laughs> I marry you. I officiate. I got the forged paperwork. Then when it's divorce time, it's like, oh, oh guess what? You just got punked. You know, <laughs> as the creature comes out. Yeah, you know it's like, ever, uh, I, uh, maybe none of this was real. Maybe having my friends marry me like as a bit isn't a good idea <laughs> because that <laughs> one of my good buddies 
married me the first time because he was like we were just like afterward he was like you know i'm a i'm a minister and i'm like dude that's hilarious the same guy who tells who told the story of the oh man is it bad like who like watched that woman fall down and like break her leg that's one of my close buddies he married us <laughs> because he was like i'm still a, a minister and i was like that's hilarious do it for us so yeah, next time I'll double down on that approach. And Kyle, you can absolutely dress up and pretend to be a priest. And yeah, yeah. I'll do the voice from. Um, um, I think I may have. I, from I think the Princess I may Bride. Be, yeah, you, you remember the you remember the Princess Bride wedding? Marriage. What Just brings ruined. us together today? <laughs> yeah, w women would love having that day made a total mockery. <laughs> I don't even think you're needed for this bit, Kyle, uh, Taylor. Yeah. Kyle could just do it himself. <laughs> <laughs> when, when Kyle eventually gets married, which I don't think will happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. And I, I'm the fucking dummy that had to had to go through it. But yeah, I should have listened I'll to. I'll take a stroke Colin right Dick. before I, I that and make sure she leaves me. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't be the man I promised I would be. Make a stroke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stroke out. I'm, I've been. I've been practicing stroke victim face for like eight months now in preparation for the proposal. I, love it. I can't be the man that you need. What are some activities that increase strokes? So you have to start like doing them before the date you plan on faking your stroke. So when she goes to the doctor, yeah. like, well, he well, recently started like, you know, smoking. My and blood stuff. pressure is off the charts. Um, you need yeah, the blood dope, but today. way, 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 way too much. Like just yeah. those, a few. I have to get blood or, or I get too many red blood cells. It, it honestly is a problem. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> already halfway there. So I've got excuses. Laying the framework right now. Very yeah. smart. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I like you got to have an exit door, my friend, a parachute, if you will. When Woody goes up there and does that nonsense, he don't, he don't raw dog it. He's got not one but two parachutes. He's got an altimeter on his wrist, you know? Take mm -hmm. precautions. Yeah. Condoms not enough. Yeah. And condoms, who's got the time? Right. Yeah, <laughs> who's Are got you, the time to, to in the middle of the you know the throws of passion? If you had gotten on the roids, they you do got make on me last When longer. I told you to, you wouldn't have any swimmers, and you would have frozen your seed long ago, and you'd have it in like a like a cryogenic little pod, and you could break it out. It'd be such a cool talking piece. You'd be like, "Are you ever going to have children?" You'd be like, "How funny you bring it up." Let me show you my prime boys. All right, this is they took eighty loads of my cum, and they found the five <laughs> best swimmers. That's the five best swimmers out of 800 billion possible sperm. And these are my boys right here. And you got them frozen. And if you ever want to, like, put them in somebody, you got them there ready to go. Yeah. But meanwhile, no, I do you're, like on, you're on the juice. You don't make sperm. And you're ripped. You're huge. You think I should get on so tea? big if you started? Dude, if you started testosterone right now, you would turn it. You would look like Dave Bautista. And <laughs> if you... <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Women love Dave Bautista. <laughs> I'm talking about you be that thing. You wouldn't yeah. turn into an ugly old man. The cabbage patch head. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, the butt from Guardians of the Galaxy where he's blue. I'm saying with, like, you, would be like, you would be pro athlete big. You'd be, you would be pro athlete yoked. Don't show his face. Yeah. <laughs> so he looks like because uh, his head looks like a penis. Pizza. So they love he, he that. He looks like if you cast a spell to turn a Lego man into a person. <laughs> oh. like, <laughs> it's like Mr. Potato Head came to life. Uh, look, all right, that he's fifty something. He's fifty four. He looks Looking like Slender Man on steroids. He's what? There you good go. There. You could literally look like that in a year with testosterone. I'm not Holy no exaggeration trapped. at all. That's some like you would be that big in a veins. year because you're like already the, very big. I, I, maybe I will. Maybe I will. I feel like I've got some some natural potential to unlock just with having a, a good diet. Then, but maybe eventually I'll I'll get always on with the natural potential. Kyle, don't you think that much muscle would like actually hurt you in the dating scene? Um, well, I wouldn't suggest that he you know maybe go this far because yeah, I think like the 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 prime body is more you know isn't that big but i'm yeah. just saying i know taylor would like to be colossal uh, it would be fun into that sort of thing and also like and, you know think you of all the compliments from, from from guys you would you just yeah. be getting compliments from guys when you get that big because like yeah. a woman isn't looking at that she doesn't look at dave batista and go look at the countless hours to build those arms and, and pecs and everything but a guy does and he's like 
wanting to come over and talk to you at the gym. Motorcycles which doesn't do happen that too. I'm home gym master race. But. You go to the gas station to fill up your bike. Guys always want to talk to you. It happens every time. Yeah, that's how a lot. Yeah, a lot for of sure. Goes. Lots of things are like that, and that's okay though. You know, because I, I I like when I like when guys come up too. You know, and and they're like, oh, what is this? What is that? Like finally, somebody I can talk to that actually appreciates this thing that I like. You know, it's nice to it's nice to find somebody who appreciates cool shit too. And then suck their dicks, you know, at a Denny's or something. And I was going to say, good. yeah, I like anal sex. You know, you go in the bathroom, no. you come out. Who's to say what happened in there? I bet you are. I, I, You'll I, always I, know. Motorcycle trip. I'm Can't looking forget. to use the bathroom. I knock on the door at the gas station. It's busy, right? Can't get yeah. in. All right, fine. I just work my way through the um, through the aisles, like pretending to shop as I wait for the bathroom to empty. And then mm. two guys come out. Two guys mm. come out. And I go in there. And the soap dispenser has spilled soap all over the floor. I'm sure they were using it as lube. And I'm like, and they looked at me like, like in a, like as, as they came out, you know, cause I was like right there. And uh, I'm pretty sure they, just so did they look lube? at you like that. What, what was that I think, part? Uh, sort of like, he's about to figure out what that just, just went down. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, Maybe so they that's were like pretty having fucking rough rude. sex and they broke the, the soap dispenser. Cause I'm, I, I just don't think soap makes a very good lubricant it, 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 at all. Well, what else in the gas station bathroom are you going to get your jollies If off you're of? showing up for gas station anal, you're bringing your own lube. That's true. And I bet they, you, like, hmm. the, people, the kind of people who are having anal sex in the gas station bathroom would probably just steal the lube that they have there next to, like, the cold medicine. Are we talking about borax kind of soap in the gas station? No, no, no. it was like a, it was li- high school. <laughs> it was a liquid hand soap, you know, like that stuff is slippery as shit. Squeaky. Yeah, you no, guys are it, it, it as lube. It burns. Yeah, well, well, you know, I bet it would. Yeah, but it's probably antibacterial it's too. You know what burns more? Yeah. <laughs> Anal sex with the lube. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like at Quick Trip. Actually, I'm not even going to give it that much credit. There's no way this was as nice as Quick Trip. No, I, I, it was no name gas station. I learned. I learned yeah. recently that uh, all of my all of our friends. Um, my girlfriend told me she went to a, a hairdresser who's a friend of ours, and she said, "Yeah, I got to. Uh, can I tell you something really weird?" Um, when we were when we were at your place for that Fourth of July party, uh, there was a bottle of dish soap in your bathroom, in your master bathroom. We went in there for some reason, uh, and there's a bottle of dish soap in there. Uh, what was that all about? And she goes, I, "I don't know. That must be that must be uh, my boyfriend's. Uh, I'll ask him." So she comes home and says. Oh, I have something weird to ask you. What is apparently you had some bottle of soap in the bathroom? And I'm like, uh, yeah, it was to clean the the dog throw up off the rug. Like I brought that down there with a bunch of. Mm-hmm. So everybody has been g- secretly gossiping since July 4th about the bottle of dish soap, thinking that I'm doing weird ass stuff in the bathroom. With dish and, soap. With You're dish getting the palm soap. olive. You're getting the palm yes. olive out and, and, and like sticking that weird nozzle that's like no other nozzle in the world up your ass. Yeah, this was the most likely a green uh, apple soap <laughs> a little green conclusion. Apple soap. Not <laughs> that there was some here. kind of horrible spill or something that needed soap, but that I was shoving shit up my ass. Man, you're so much. Losers. Need to get, need to get their you know mind what? Out Those the gutter. people need something to talk about <laughs> other than, you know, in their own fucking lives. They come over to your life. And they just see some fucking palm olive on the floor and write a whole fucking narrative about it. Mm-hmm. I'm on their side. I still have my suspicions about what Dick does with the soap. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I texted him right away. I said, yeah, it was for cleaning up uh, dog throw up. I'm like, well, mm. that must be a lot of throw up. Yeah. Like, yes, it is. It was. Well, the dish soap is there as a ruse to keep you from noticing the dildo suction cups <laughs> to the side of the shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 it smells clean in here. Those two things work in concert. <laughs> getting away, getting away with it. Yeah, that's. I would not assume if I walked in and saw someone had Dawn dish soap in their bathroom, I would just assume something negative about their hygiene. Like I wouldn't assume anything. I like cleaning about anal dishes sex. in the bathroom. I don't want to take. I them sometimes upstairs. keep dish soap like, in like our Kramer. bathroom, and I would have assumed it was for the same reason. It mm. is that if I work on motors and stuff, and my hands get greasy and oily. Regular soap doesn't cut grease like dish soap does. I don't understand how soaps really work, but 
Dawn, yeah. palm olive, like it gets grease and oil off your hands. Yeah, that's why they use it on the ducks for yeah. yep. for spills and shit. Although I think once they get a certain amount of oil on them, like no amount of scrubbing that off is like you can take Dawn all day, but like it burns their feathers away before you can like wipe it off. You know, mm. like it it you think so it burns them all up. Yeah, you can't just cover an animal in oil and be like, I'll get back to you. Like I it's going to like die. Huge. Like there's. I couldn't see myself on that beach scrubbing a fucking duck, you know? Oh, absolutely like, not. Really? not going to help. Yeah. Jesus. Birds Christ. are assholes. Maybe a seal. I'd scrub a seal. Yeah. Scrub no, a seal. they have the entire ocean and what? they're swimming into oil. Ah, uh, so that it's was a, their you... beach. They lived there on that beach and it got oiled up. Oh, no. The one beach in the ocean. Like they, 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 they can't just it's, bop down like the a mile. Exxon Valdez drops 144 million barrels of oil into a harbor, and Taylor's like, "You should have been in South America, you fuck." Yeah, swim. <laughs> hey, what's this? It? Oh, it burns. Turn around, <laughs> swim away. <laughs> you know, like if you walked into, like Kyle, if you were walking into your kitchen and you encountered sarin gas. Mm-hmm. You'd turn around immediately. This isn't Syria. How did this get here? This isn't, and you'd bounce right out. This of isn't it. the Tokyo subway. There's yeah, not a lot of animals. Nerve gas in my kitchen. Yeah, it's just a lot of animals playing into that victim culture. Yeah, you know they want to be a victim. <laughs> they have right wing beaches. Yeah, so they can tweet about it. All those that, lefty ducks. That could be a good right wing uh, grift. We were talking about something environmental. We sell like wildly expensive meat. Anti woke like for, for every for steak kids. you buy, we burn one. Because <laughs> fuck the environment. Yeah. <laughs> Just something like that. Yeah. It's a gay cow Taylor's butcher. Wasteful Meat Co. And like, <laughs> <laughs> we burn uh, the steak. <laughs> here at Spot Company Meats, we waste an enormous amount of product <laughs> because fuck the left. You know, that's, that's what we do. You get one woke. steak per cow. One steak per yeah. yeah. It's like where they, they shave down the whole tree into a two by four instead of I bet making you could use re- of it. Could you just re- surgically remove like a slice of filet mignon from a cow and then stitch him back up and he'd be okay and then come back a few months later and it'd grown back and just get that slice out again? Could I have no. forever cow? You can't this do that. This is genius. Why not, Taylor? Who? What are you, the cow police? Because like if I went into Kyle's thigh and removed part of his quad and then chained him back up to the radiator. Like, I'm not going to have a new yeah, high steak in a month. I promise not have to chain va- any cows have very, radiators. I'm going to have like, a like, oh, all right, Taylor, counterpoint. Yeah. I tore my ACL. The yeah. doctor harvests my patella tendon, right? It's like from the kneecap to your mm-hmm. shin bone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then he makes an ACL out of that. And he says, Woody, this thing grows back. As a matter of fact, if you tear your ACL again in four years... I can reharvest the same patella tendon, the same section that I removed. I'll use that to fix you, you know, four years from now or whatever it is, five years. I, I think you can regrow some quad. Just don't take too much. I, You know, what's this doctor's Yelp rating? That's, that's, <laughs> that's all I need. But I'm sold, Woody. That was a good argument. I, I think you're right. You just need to be tactful about the amount of quad you would remove. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be tactful. <clears throat> You'll be, yeah, you, you couldn't do like filet mignon though, because like that's surrounding its its spine, right? Like it would. I mean, I'll be careful. die. Though. Yeah, I mean, you'll, you, you'd have to start with a. It a lo- will probably less be paralyzed, cut. which will only make the meat more tender next time we harvest. Yeah, he's thinking. Man, that's ahead. terrible. He's playing on another yeah. level. See, this isn't a person. We're not worried about mobility or like comp- happiness or any of that stuff. Like, no. oh, will the cow be able to play tennis? Probably not. But we'll be able to go back in in a year, get another, another fuck, maybe a ribeye next time. Maybe, I'd rather uh, do that than like the the lab grown meat. Well, yeah, There's I want no way suffering that's involved. Taste if there's good. no suffering, then you can't enjoy yourself I thoroughly at the table. Why is it so much more humane to kill a cow and eat all of it than to just wound a cow repeatedly? <laughs> at least harvest the cow's the alive. Cow. In that situation. You harvest the cow slowly over time. You don't go to a berry bush and say, "All right, pull it up by the root. Let's get. Let's take it back to camp." No, oh. you pick a few berries. Up. <laughs> you come back <laughs> next year. Look at that, more berries. I, this is how we should be we've growing meat. Killing, we see we got used to killing the animals because our ancestors had to, but now we've got to. We can do whatever the 
fuck we want to them. Yeah. We got medical science. If we do it like the cartel does, we can inject them with amphetamines so they they, they don't they, they can't pass out from the pain, whatever we want. Well, let's see what Google can you cut pieces off a cow and let it regrow for infinite food? Let's see. No, can't. you can't look that up. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking earthworm cow hybrid. No, you can't do that. You hey, can't. Glad you just you can't. Got the best Fucking part. look it up, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. Look, some retards on Reddit are talking about it. So. <laughs> let's cut That's, let's cut Redditors found, off and let them regrow. Oh, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one thing we know for sure. All right. Let's back up from cows. Let's say I've got an iguana. I cut its leg off and I Ugh. eat it. It grows a new leg. I eat that I'm one. Not Every eating time it lizards. Grows a new leg, I eat it. Right? So I just need to get some iguana DNA into this cow so he'll grow back uh, some, uh, some musculature. Oh, you could do that for an iguana tail, but... I don't think they regrow other stuff. Some like like little lizards and stuff grow whole arms and stuff back. Lobsters um, grow everything back. Every time they molt their shell, new arms, new new claws, new fucking antenna. I think they grow eyeballs back. What? Okay. What are they under the? What are they when they molt? Like worms? What do they look like? like I, I think there's softer. a new shell forming under the old shell, and the old oh. shell kind of sloths off and like brand okay. new and fancy shell. Okay, well, if that's true, then the. The lobster is your best idea for this so far, because no one you're not going to get a bunch of people eating lizards. I bet. It, I, I just bet they break it. I just keep breaking its claws off and eating them, and he just keeps growing them yeah. back. Yeah. If they if they, if they really are regrowing those big giant lobster claws, yeah, that's a good idea. Takes five imagine, years though. I am. Oh well, fuck. That's that's not ideal. Yeah, I'm gonna need a that's lot a of time. lobsters. How often do and you have lobster though? Every not night. that often. Every crab's night. better. <laughs> Yeah, if like snow a... crab regrow, if you could like break off like four legs off the snow like crab. Lobster. I really wanted this to be a cow. Can we make a cow lobster hybrid so that it grows its hoofs back? And it can be whatever I just you want. Have it to never be, ending man. sirloin. It worked in Jurassic Park. Did it? And they combined like some frogs and some dinosaurs and made animals. Dino I think the... deer! <laughs> and and it allowed the dinosaurs to change sex like frogs do. And I think the lesson of that movie was that it didn't work specifically. <laughs> <laughs> It worked really or well. I think that it worked they too well. They're just <laughs> unintended consequences. Well, it worked in more Jurassic dinosaurs Park. than they thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think we have different that, definitions that, of success. That, You're wanting to it say it worked in Frankenstein. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I, I think I think Jurassic Park was about man's arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> And about Sounds how good, one though. guy with a goofy cane thought he yeah, could one guy's the, arrogance the is another guy's Jurassic. can do attitude. I think he we made give dinosaurs. It a go. I, I'd say the whole thing is a win. He didn't the do shit. Jurassic... Newman made the dinosaurs. <laughs> Jurassic... the, the, the guy <laughs> with, the, with the amber <laughs> stick was basically Steve no. Jobs. Newman was in no, there. No, the doctor from Oz can. made the dinosaurs. Yeah, woo. Yep. Henry that Japanese Wu. fellow. Yep. yep. Mr. Oh, Wu. Well, Newman helped. You know, <laughs> Newman was the security guy. Who, he was the computer guy, IT guy. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, like, yeah. He paid well enough, so he sold him out. He was, he was, he was, he he shuts the security down and he and he sneaks out the embryos to sell them the like the private market to that guy he met. You know, for we got Dotson's Dobson. here. We got Dotson. <laughs> See, nobody cares. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that was that, that's idea. what Jurassic 2 should have been directly about the hunt for that shaving cream thing and yeah. private company like sh you should have had three or four private companies all sending their teams in. And so Dr. Grant is getting approached by all the different teams and he's saying no, no, no. And the last team is so scary. So they have such little regard for human life that he's like, I can't let this happen. I got to go not for the dinosaurs, but to help our, you know, fucking Jeff Goldblum, who's tagged along none but doesn't know that these guys are evil that's they made some horse Jeff, shit Jeff so bad did not bring anything to the table you didn't think so i love him no no not from the actor point like why he was there i didn't understand like he oh, was there that's a good try, point actually he was there to try and fuck that blonde girl before they saw the brontosaurus yeah was like, he was trying to cut dr grant, grant so where, fucking where hard the water drips off your hand wait were Dr. they grant husband and wife am i they're, no. yeah, they're they're like a yeah. couple though. Like like Dr. Grant he's, is this close to dropping the K-word. Like he's is mad. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Grant. Yeah. Sam <laughs> Sam Neal or whatever his name is. Yeah. He called him a child. He's, <laughs> he's like running his hand up and down her foot the inside of her wrist and shit, talking about water droplets and, and the fucking uh whatever the, the butterfly theory and all that shit, uh chaos theory. Talking about sexuality. Uh, microscopic, yeah. microscopic. 
Yeah, that guy was about to get strangled right there in that Ford Explorer. (laughs) (laughs) I I I would 100%. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't go to Jurassic Park after it. The news spread that it was a total capitalism failure. I'm happy Taylor being all Jurassic Park. It would be totally on on brand for Taylor to be like, I've never seen this. That's the dinosaur movie. I have seen Jurassic Park, but I like. Would you guys go? I would, visit Jurassic Park. I would go in a Jurassic Park. I would 100% go. I like the zoo. Yeah. I know it's kind of cruel sometimes. And so a lot of the time it's not cruel. Like lizards. But these are dinosaurs. Are it's, it's like the snake house, yeah. but everything. You don't give a shit. I would kill one. I, I, I if, if they would like. 100%. I, I, they're like they're, they're right reptiles. The they're retarded. You know, I don't care. Who cares? I, get, I would love to hunt raptors. That's what it should have been about. It's, there's, I did like that they turned raptors into like attack dogs later on and had uh What's oh, his no. name? Chris like, Pratt like, doing yeah, Chris Pratt doing the whole crocodile Dundee shit. <laughs> Velociraptors are, are not a cool dinosaur. Like they set the anchor How big are they? so high. Well, in the original in the movie, one, they looked huge and cool. And then in the new one, they're like, actually, the Velociraptors were totally bitch made little uh chicken sized things. And so they went from like cleverly like leaping around entire kitchens in that hotel and like spying to just being kind of dumb little Uh, little minions i would go to see dinosaurs because that's such a cool fucking thing you know i think everybody grew up and like loved dinosaurs one way or another at some point uh they should have made the flying dinosaurs that was a huge mistake huge error huge error like like, let's let's keep Keep them on the ground where we can see them no water ones because they're going to go in and like kill the sharks and like fuck up seals and ruin the environment no flying ones obviously just keep terrestrial terrestrial dinosaurs wouldn't be enough the silliest one and they made it up for the movie even i think i don't think it's in the book uh, the one that spits the acid in Newman's face, <laughs> that tarry acid, and he's like, ah, ah. <laughs> that didn't You're exist. Right. I guess the that there's no way that was water. real. Yeah. yeah, and if it was, they wouldn't have any way of knowing that the it did sulfurosaur that, you know? or some some nonsense. Yeah, yeah there, there's Dilophis. no way that. Oh, that's would work. a good point. I didn't consider that, Kyle. You Dilophis can't tell Dilophis. that sort of thing by bones very well. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah, you would. <laughs> so anyway, as far as um, I, know. I would definitely go to any kind of a Jurassic Park that there was. It would be worth. Like people pay, it was ten million, I think, back in the day to go up on Mir, uh, or, or to go up for that Russian, you know, uh, Soyuz thing. It'd be way, worth way more than ten million to see dinosaurs, and that's the point. You know, Doctor Grant talk or whoever it is, the fucking old man with the cane. He's he, Hammond. He's like, I'm not making a part for the Hammond. ultra rich, yeah. and the other guy is Hammond, and the other guy's like, "Hey, right, we'll have like a coupon day or something. Don't worry." <laughs> well, a, but, but but he's like, "No, it'll be mostly for the ultra rich because you yeah. would." You'd pay. He even says it there. I'm remembering. Isn't he walking down like a 10, 50, 100,000 a day, whatever you charge? He's like walking down a marble staircase while he says that. Perhaps. I don't recall. With his. his They're in the projector room seeing the ads for it, like Disneyland. Mm. Man, you, you really remember Jurassic Park. Yeah, I got a problem. Uh, we went to uh, we went to a dinner show where it was like an improv comedy uh, song ad- adaptation of Jurassic Park. You eat, oh. and then they go. They come out and do the whole movie, like singing. And their version of Jeff Goldblum brings the old this this uh, this old man up on stage from the audience to do that. Uh, it's because of imperfections in your microscopic microscopic. It was really funny. Um, <laughs> and then he then he and then COVID her. happened. They stopped doing it. So. Damn. Oh, all that art. Lost. They got a but they do uh, they do a point break thing too. Same, I think it's the same group where they take a random guy in order to simulate Keanu Reeves' acting ability. They take a random guy out of the audience and they show him his lines on cards while all the people are like acting the movie out super seriously. And he's like, yeah. Well, that's what I want. Like he just is supposed to read them. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Keanu Reeves. His worst acting's got to be Dracula. I just rewatched that the other day because our, our boy put it on the Plex server we all share, and I watched it again. It's like. So bad, and it's it wouldn't be so bad, but Gary Oldman's across from him, like killing it, like trying so hard to be Dracula, and he's like, "Oh, Dracula, it's such an honor to be at your house, bro." <laughs> it's like, it's off. He has a like, surfer thing, but he's trying to do an English accent, and just oh. it's real bad. It's real Dracula, bad. <laughs> like Duckman's uh, oldest stupid son, <laughs> Dad. Wow, but he's. God, he's got to be the most beloved Hollywood actor that I can I can think of. You always hear about him giving up his whole salary so that 
like the the people who fucking i don't know did the wardrobe down to the guy moving boxes get some huge bonus or something you mean below yeah like i hate that shit i'd guy. rather like celebrities yeah. just try to fuck each other over as much as possible so it's like yeah fuck yeah everyone hates that guy good uh yeah he's way worse than me that's like, like, like that would be like a nice gift you know he's the anti steven seagal like like everyone loves keanu reeves and everyone hates steven seagal well who's who's like an i don't know much about the actor like actor's reputations who's a really shitty guy who's a great actor who's like known for being difficult um edward norton mm. edward no- he's great i liked him in moon that's nobody awesome that, movie yeah but you don't see him that's not edward norton in, in moon that's um <clears throat> that's a different actor i'm like 99 percent sure edward norton's american history x he was the original hulk like he's supposed to be the guy in mark ruffalo's shoes doing all those avenger movies and whatever the fuck making all that money but he's difficult to work with, so Mark Ruffalo is doing that. Oh, that's Sam Rockwell. Damn, I don't know anybody. Yeah. All right, well, then I guess I don't know if <laughs> but I like that guy you men- mentioned in. Yeah, it's American History X guy. Um, he's known as just a piece of shit, and people don't like to work with him. Uh, but so is Steven Seagal, and he's a lot more funny to hate because he's a bad actor, too, and he runs like... You ever seen him run? He has this yeah. weird sort of sachet run that he does with his hands. It's like this, <laughs> but he's all serious with his ponytail and his receding hairline. He's just... Like it's it's real bad. Dude, when um, I got on the Plex, I was scrolling past and I saw Glimmerman. all of those. Yeah, I saw Glimmer Man and all of those movies that you guys referenced on the show. Yeah. I have not watched a Steven Seagal movie in ever, and so <laughs> I would need to pick. I've never seen one. I don't think Under Siege. Oh. Under Siege is his best movie. It's a That's genuinely good movie. Watch that one. I know it is. I told him to put it on there. Watch that <laughs> one. It's his best movie. And then the Glimmer Man is just awful. It's terrible. It's I've talked about it before, but it's when he's in real life that the man Steven Seagal is going through this Buddhist. Uh, thing where the Dalai Lama has just <laughs> ordained him to be a deity of some kind and he took it yeah. seriously. And so, oh, you told me, this. To- yeah. So he told the director, he's like, I can't kill, I'm not going to kill anymore in movies. And they're like, We're about to film the scene where you kill the bad guy, Stephen, the one who torture murders your wife, the one who's and been killing he, all these people the whole movie, you're killing the evil into man. It, and then and they he had changed to- his mind. Yeah. They told the actor to like, convince steven to kill him and so the actor is like steven you'd be letting me release from this body and be reincarnated so that i'm begging you to free me from this body so shoot me and he changed his mind even after he filmed it and was like if you if you have me kill him in the movie i'm out no you know i'm not doing any press no no this no that the other and so they make the actor go back in adr bearing in mind steven seagal shoots him in the chest and his heart explodes <laughs> into a like squid. It's like Robocop with the squibs. Yeah. Boom, boom. Heart explodes. Meat's flying out of him. Falls over at the altar because it's all happening in a cathedral. They add ADR. Come back here and finish me off, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that dude is so <laughs> dead. Oh, Steven's the worst. What a piece of shit. And then he's real rapey. I think he's, he's got lots of sexual assault charges. I think he was holding some assistant like hostage in his house. Not hostage, more prisoner. Than anything, yeah, yeah, that's the same. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's what I want out of celebrities. That kind well, of with behavior. a hostage, you let people know that you've got the per- person, and and they do this or you do that. That with is a prisoner. True. I would much <laughs> rather be held hostage than held. You goddamn right, you would. Yeah, because if you're held prisoner, you're with someone who's probably done this before. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're gone. I'm chained to a support be the beam in the basement. Look, there, are, there are. Who knows how many people right now are chained in basements, being held prisoner in the United States, not even in the oh. scary countries. I mean, at least about two. every now and then. Where even one- listening to this show, their their, their uh, captor might be listening to you guys right now. And yeah, I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, some guy's got like a hose putting water in a bucket, like humming. He's got his AirPods in. And yeah. he's like, another exactly. Great day. He's walking in. To, he's he's moving the books, the the, the false shelf. Walking back there. He's hosing. This I can't girl. believe Taylor's seen Jurassic Park. Hosing him. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love this show. It's a, what a great podcast. <laughs> just, it puts the lotion on the skin, or it gets the hose again. God damn, Taylor. <laughs> Oh my what's God. the best way to trap someone in your basement how, how would you secure them based on movies um, chaining someone to a support pole kind of like saw seems no, like I'm a gonna good make a idea pit. you make a pit so you you dig an even deeper so hole you're ruining your, your house and they're no you're not i, I can climb out of a pit how do you oh, we're gonna be retelling the house we murder people in the basement in no, all right fucking all right mr great escape how are you getting all of this dirt 
out of your basement. You're you're like putting your pants, walking around the neighborhood, dropping. Have you out. seen Shawshank Redemption? Yes. Yeah, he just referenced it. There you go. I just, I'm <laughs> dropping it down my pants leg while I play baseball in the backyard with the guy. I think if you dug a pit, I mean, we're hairless apes. You would have to chain us in it. You guys are overthinking it. You just okay. tell them you're going to kill their their parents or their daughter or something if they run. Then you don't have to chain them to shit. I, yeah, I still like the Breaking Bad with the U-bolt around the neck and the you support bolt. Do you guys remember how we did it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah but that but, was but like it, more trouble than it's worth. You're going to keep then, him there? Yeah, he he was he like wouldn't that? be able to shit in that position or like piss well. You'd have a guy covered in shit and piss. He's also making like your whole you house smell bad. Me problems? No, it would you be a you problem when he's chained reason. up in your shitty basement. Yeah, like, yeah. So you know, you want him a to... chamber pot. So I've got well, your answer perfectly. If you go want. watch Cobweb tonight, you'll see how they hide people in the basement of of one of the houses that you'll see, and they have like a hidden room where you don't even know where the basement door is. It's behind a big appliance, and it's a little door. It's not even a real people door. And then in the basement, which is concrete, there's a square hole that goes down, say, 15, 20 feet. It's bricked along the edges, so it's a smooth brick wall all the way down to a concrete floor. And you're just down there. There's no getting out of there. How much lead fucking... time do you need to kidnap somebody? <laughs> like This is insane. Just like chain. Are you wanting to kidnap somebody today? Look, if I'm going to be a professional kidnapper, I've got my, all kinds of time. You're it, coming across look, as an the amateur The best part is preparing yeah. for the job. You're going to no, be I, eating it up down there, digging the hole. Oh, enjoy man, the journey. Great. I yeah, but you never know when it's gonna when the feeling's gonna hit it's you again. You see that perfect girl or guy, and you're like, I gotta have him now. I don't have all this time to yeah. set up a, a dungeon and stuff. I can't let him go. Yeah. I gotta I saw act. the perfect woman the at the mall today, but fucking Steve is stringing me along. He said it was a three-week project for <laughs> exactly. two months. In. You can't yeah. trust contractors. <laughs> you can't trust contractors. You're like, no, do it now. you're definitely not gonna be the first guy. <laughs> like somebody <laughs> else will kidnap her. Steve, yeah, you, need you better to, finish you your quickly. goddamn pit or no, you go to the bottom. Every single kidnapping movie, which is where I have all of my kidnapping knowledge about, yeah. you chain someone to a radiator, you chain them to a support beam, you do not dig enormous, expensive <laughs> holes in your basement <laughs> like a retard, and you just have... I don't know now how... Now, you're, you're in thousands chains of dollars. Chains only work in the movies. Like, like, I don't know how you actually chain a person effectively in real life. Like, do you have shackles? Yes, yeah, you buy a shot. Do you, you have a twenty foot hole? Do you have all the the, I the coin? Dig. I got a how do we how do we do slavery? Like we we've had this figured out for Back in those years. Times, you thousands of years. People have been shackled. Shopkeep, do you have any Negro shackles? And they'd be like, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle I don't go know to the Renaissance sure. Fair. Yeah, I don't know for sure that Kyle Colonial has times. handcuffs, but I think the smart money is Kyle has a pair of handcuffs. I have handcuffs, nearby. but you can't exist in handcuffs, and they're very uncomfortable. And eventually, like if you really want they're out of them. I picture yourself. them being pink and fuzzy. That's lame. Why would they be pink and fuzzy? That shit don't work. You Put them, them on a four-foot chain attached to a support pole in the middle of your basement. They can't reach anything you essential. Know? You put a bucket near there, and if they poop in the bucket and use it vindictively to like spill, you stop them. giving them food. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not going to get to make shit anymore until you learn to poop in the bucket. I just think attaching a chain to a person and then being able to like go to because we want to be able to go to work with a person chained in our basement, right? That's the end goal, I think, to be like, yeah, yeah they're down yeah. there. So the idea of just a chain and a and a shackle being all that's between them and and getting out would not be good. You need like bars or something in addition. Like they should be able to move move around the room freely. You just got to build a cell. Concrete Actually, building floor. a cell is much easier than that pit shit. Like you could, yeah, yeah, you build a cell. Like in uh, Walking Dead, when the guy, guy built the cell to tor to starve that man yeah. to death. A cell and a chain. Like, chain them yeah. kind of to the corner of the cell well, the, so they can't The chain's away. like, if you better be cool in the cell or we'll, we'll attach you yeah. to the chain. And I don't see like, how, how does like, it attach to me? And, like, you don't want to know. Why you do, do you think that, those? like, it's so easy? I can easy. tear those apart. Like super Yeah, those are like, nothing. They're not even real. Those are like what you'd get in a costume shop. <laughs> like, you yeah, can see you think you guys could escape from those? I would love to see you both of you tear out <laughs> through those pink. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I, I feel like I could do this and like do that and t break, or I could definitely twist at them. But but that's not real metal. Kyle, I'm I curious why you think metal. like why do you think it would be easy to get out of a uh, chain and shackle metal. like on your ankle? You can't um, reach anything. Because you're going to be starving them. They're going, to, they're going to be losing weight, getting skinnier and skinnier. First of all, shackles don't exist. Where do you get a shackle? Like I, From I like the Renaissance Fair. Yeah. They don't sell shackles at the Renaissance they Fair. They absolutely do. I've been to Renaissance. They sell all sorts of uh, things. They sell prisoner-grade shacklery at the Renaissance Fair. 
They sell swords. The no. You can buy prison irons online. Go to, If you go to extremerestraints.com, they probably so got answered some. answered your own question. Well, what I'm saying is they're not effective for long-term use. You, If you're going to keep someone, you got to build a cage. You can't just attach them to something. It's going to get married. Them. They're going <laughs> just marry them and, and chain them. We want to. We want to confine <laughs> them. Not basement our, pit. Not ourselves. Yeah. Like reverse yeah. psychology. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to get out of the whole marriage. Dick's fucked it up and chained himself down somehow. <laughs> yeah. I saw. Actually, Backfired. I saw one the other. Did you see the woman they rescued the other day? And she was chained to the floor of the place. There, she had a. She had a. Cha- she had a collar on with a chain um. attached, and it was attached to the floor. And the cops come in. It's all. It's all body cam, and they're like cutting the chains off of her and getting her out of there oh my stuff. god how she, long was she yeah. chained up was she hot i don't know and i think it was blurred um it's the only thing that matters is what you, hot was she hot enough to chain okay like i don't know i don't know at so least they, seven they or eight her face you know because she was a i a didn't victim. ask about her face kyle did you think i was asking if she, she was pretty everything <laughs> she they was need just to... a blur but so, and then the ball, remember seems the like Ant- the was Antoine Dodson or whatever? He's climbing in. He'll, no, that's the other guy. That's the guy the climbing your window. Guy. That's the hide the your other kids, guy. hide your wife guy. Yeah, yeah. But then there was the other guy that was like, I knew something was wrong when a pretty little white girl ran into a black man's arms. That's when um, that those little that white girl escaped from the basement of that house where she'd been held for like two years and ran up to the black guy and was like, help me. And then he did the one of those news interviews that just got memeified forever and turned into songs and stuff. You remember that? No, yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is, lots of women are held captive right now, and men, I'm suppose, you know, in basements and stuff all I around. I bet it's mostly women. Yeah, I, it's I mostly that, women. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think that's. I think kidnappers want someone physically weaker because they are kidnappers. Not just I, that. Like, hmm. I, I think they're you looking. Don't to have to kidnap rape. a man to get him to fuck you. You can just ask him. Yeah, ask yeah. that guy. The the kidnapper. I can't imagine kidnappers are doing well in social situations, right? Or maybe they do points. very, very well. Well, how bad do you think they're doing? Is, do you think you could be better than a kidnapper at a party of people you don't know? As long as he doesn't break out a bunch of stories I can't compete with, like you know, <laughs> <laughs> probably got a lot of good stories as a kidnapper. He well, does. He just one time. Give girls the yeah. dick. Dude, you find a kidnapper at a party, you park yourself right next to him. He's going to have the best stories. You know? Like the proctologist in Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that uh, I think the chaining is definitely the best move. I don't know why you think escaping from chains is is some easy thing. There's Chains are so tried and true. I guess I've just seen people. so much David Blaine that I, I've just lost all respect for the chain. Now that would be an expert level kidnapper, someone who targets magicians and the sleight of hand. <laughs> Artist. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, he's, <laughs> he's got like a magneto thing in his basement that he built over 40 years to he's like, oh, David what you, Blaine. You can't escape from my real shackles that I got from the St. Louis Renaissance Fair. Dude, please <laughs> let me go home. <laughs> <laughs> let me go. No, hold your fucking breath for 10 minutes. Come and on, I'll let you go. Freak. <laughs> Let's see it. Because I, I just need one happen. black person here to watch me perform this magic and I can get out. That's how his magic works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's, it's <gasps> all based on <laughs> You need a true believer <laughs> present to believer. give it power. He's a true believer. <laughs> <laughs> you need someone to believe. That's where and the mailman comes up. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, here he is. <laughs> <laughs> magic. <gasps> Male flies that was funny, everywhere. like uh, like the old David Blaine, Chris Angel things, where they'd be like, "We're about to mind freak," and they walk past like three groups of Asian people to get them <laughs> to, <laughs> because they know they know who's going to give them the good reactions, the funny reactions. So, yeah, that's what have you, you seen do. the bit where it's not even a bit? It's like Popeyes or somebody did five dollar eight piece chicken meals, which is a crazy <laughs> good deal, right? But they didn't buy enough chicken, so oh, yeah. there's this huge line of people. Who are like, what you mean there ain't no chicken? And and the news reporter is going from person to person, and everybody is incensed. They're talking like, <laughs> what kind of idiot? Your job is chicken. It's all you do. <laughs> they're so mad. All these, and then they get to a white guy, and he's like, oh, they're out of chicken? Huh? Is there McDonald's around? Oh, you're right there. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, they were having a deal I, I wasn't aware. <laughs> Well, so long. <laughs> <laughs> then they cut to another black guy. So, so long. Shit. 
<laughs> I did not know about that. I, I didn't it's know there really was a, a reckoning for Popeyes not having. Which, like, <laughs> if you're if you're gonna have a big deal like that, you better have enough food. Remember and when they did the sandwiches? I think it was Popeyes that came out with like their new crispy chicken sandwich, and maybe they sold them for three fucking dollars or something like that. It was a problem because they eventually had run out of sandwiches. They only got so many, you know. Yeah. And then it really is scary outside because people are like, are you disrespecting me by selling all the chicken? It's like, no, not at all. We just ran out. I'm taking this as a personal <laughs> thing here. <laughs> oh, I think I might have to kill right now. Oh, sir, please. It was just a chicken sandwich tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. No, <laughs> like, I, I had my heart set too on this please. sandwich. I, I watch a lot of police activity. I was watching a guy today sitting there on the Metro bus with a big old Rambo knife. And he was like, there is no tomorrow. <laughs> and then he finally he came with the cops it was kind of fucked up because when he came with the cops they did that thing where they all shoot him right and, it's, and he goes down and he gets back up and the cops don't know do we he's not really coming at us do we keep shooting and then one did of them we all goes, miss bang, 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 and shoots him like four times when he's not even looking at him and kills him it was that police activity channel is one of the one of the darkest corners of the internet. It's it's completely unmonetized, so they can get away with uploading that shit. But it's just one person dying after another after another. Eight videos a day. Eight videos a day of the cops killing people. It's you shouldn't wild. you shouldn't wild. be watching it all day. But see, that's also where I found the cop <laughs> the dog bar. That's where the do- the dog the, the, the that was a cute one. The dog the, the cops roof roof roof, and the kids come out, and it's all ho oh, ho ho, and that's the end. Nobody died that one. Do you ever I'd like that one to be in those police training courses? Yeah, they're always saying cops need more training. I, I just imagine a classroom of uniformed officers. <laughs> be great. <laughs> more timber. More timber. <laughs> Make me believe your dog. I would want. I'd, I'd want to be a, a canine are? cop if I was a cop. You want because the dog I, with you? I'd want the dog with me. Yeah. I, I would hundred percent want a dog. I'd want a person first. If if it's either solo. A dude, a dog, or a lady. I think I go solo, Oof. solo, then dude, then dog, then lady. Because the lady's a problem. Like, like she's gonna make things harder for me. It'd be easier if it was just mm. me. And I, you ever try mm-hmm. to lift a TV and it's you and someone who can't lift the other side of the TV? Way yeah. harder than just lifting a TV. Okay. Yeah, now you're now trying to a fight a guy. Angle. Now try to fight a man in the street and it's you and a girl. It get, sucks. Get back! I can't. I can't yeah. fight. Ah, I hit you yeah. again. Are you okay? <laughs> He's choking me. He's choking me. Get him off me. Oh, you shot me. Why would you shoot me? That's how it's going to go. <laughs> yeah. She's going to pull out a taser and put two in the back of your head as you're rolling around. Dick, what kind of cop would you want to be? Uh, a bad one. One mm. that's like doesn't do anything. That just sits there. I'd, rather, I'd like to be a speed trap cop. He just sits in their car. I want to be, be that cop I saw on TikTok today getting his dick sucked. So it's real. It's a, it's a huge story. You may not have seen yeah, it. Yeah, so this, I saw This cop that. is caught on two different angles. There are people in the apartments in front of his car and behind. He's parked SUV. He gets out, big white guy, cop, and like kind of is real flirty with this little black chick. And then is like like handsy with her and then opens the back of, cop, of the cop car. She gets in and then he gets in and they close the door. <laughs> it's a big story. It's real. How does he get out of the ca- back of a cop car? I guess he didn't lock her up, or you know, he's got the clicker or something. I you know. do they even How have long door handles? It's an S- SUV, you know. It's like it depends. Yeah, they've got door handles. It it depends on the cop car. I've Not always the been one I went Vic. in. Yeah, was I was rocking any Crown blue shoe. Suck on the. <laughs> he may have been. Wait, so <laughs> how long were they in the back of the car? Like a blowjob amount of time? Oh, uh you know, I, I the video's forty five seconds long, so Oof. they don't get out. No. So yeah, they don't. Long they never trip. get out of the car. So yeah, plenty of time. That's way too. Much Actually, time. I'd really like to be one of those there. campus police officers. You remember them? Ooh. Just yeah. walking around, bossing kids around, hitting your club on the lockers. You know, <laughs> you guys got any goofballs over here? Huh? <laughs> I want to be one of those boat police cop. officers, the here? kind that cruise around and just like stay by the, sh- the shore and oh, yeah. help other boats in trouble. I think that'd be fun. Coast Guard. Uh, they have they have marine police. I think There's Coast Guard a- would be cool, um, because you that's you, not a you, cop you get, though. You get all the respect of uh, of law enforcement. Free drinks, pussy. See you, Coast Guard, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> dude, those guys <laughs> slay. What, some of them <laughs> do like drug interdiction or something like the interdiction, and they get to do like quasi special forces shit, 
and then get to still like not have to go to a scary desert country and get their you know right and then they're home every night away. yeah Coast Guard people sleep in their own houses that's kind of yeah crazy. generally yeah <clears throat> navy people they sleep somewhere else yeah, yeah what about internal knows? affairs i'd be good at that busting other oh, cops. they love you yeah <laughs> oh yeah you, you just nightmare. be antagonizing them. <laughs> <laughs> you can't shoot me. Officer, guess what? <laughs> I'm drinking right now. <laughs> Officer problem? Nah, you're fine. You're one of the good ones. <laughs> so you play mind games with them the all day. Would be from internal affairs. <laughs> like, oh, You'd be I mean... hated by the cops. <laughs> Touch all their faces all the time. Come here. Come over here. Look at you. Look at this guy. Look uh, at you. That's not a regulation does he look guilty? haircut. Does That's not he a regulation guilty? haircut. <laughs> Why are you touching the police? I'm confused. To Why do you touch them? Who are you going to call? FBI? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> do whatever I want. I'm internal affairs. I know how this works. And guess what? They call the FBI. I'm the internal affairs FBI guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. I heard my buddy Dick was ruffling some feathers. <laughs> That's my big promotion at the end of the movie. Yeah. And then we hit up the CIA internal affairs guy. It's Kyle. <laughs> he's, come, he's come down. We're ruining the country. One position of power at a time. <laughs> oh, wait, speaking of ruining the country, um, what's his name? The guy that looks like a turtle, Mitch McConnell. Yeah. He's probably oh, yeah. having a full on stroke the other day, right? <sighs> Look, yeah, it, that it was happened great. Once it happened once, and and I don't think it's excusable even once. But stroke at once. Everybody has a weird moment every now and then. Like, ah, maybe his was caught on camera. Maybe he doesn't frequently go into fugue states. But it happening twice in front of the camera means it's happening all the fucking time. He's shutting yeah. down and is unresponsive like all day. All day it must be happening if they've caught it twice at press conferences. Yeah, you know, like come mm -hmm. on, yeah, Jesus Christ. I that love the press's like reaction. They're just like in they're just like staring in silence. Like you guys aren't at church. You're supposed to say something like, "Hey, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, why right? is yeah. this why is this senator doing this? Can somebody please <laughs> fucking explain why this asshole is in the Senate? Why is everyone yeah. pretending like this is acceptable or normal or tolerable at all?" This guy shouldn't run a lemonade stand. <laughs> like like somebody say yeah. something. That's what it should <laughs> say, be. Somebody say something should... here. His office yeah, released shouldn't... an official statement and I wish I could get the exact quote, but it was fishy as fuck to me. It was written by they him listed the, the things it's that asinine. he doesn't have. They listed the things that he doesn't have. So they're like, rest assured, Mitch McConnell does not have <laughs> HIV or multiple sclerosis. He's going to finish out his term. And I'm yeah. like, but 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 he's got something. Whoa, got, that like, leaves what, a what lot of doors open for what's wrong <laughs> yeah. with Mitch McConnell. It's like wow. the conspiracy NASA, we will not Woody. get to Mars sooner than 2025 statement. <laughs> if I had a talk, <laughs> if I was like a Tucker too. Carlson or somebody, I'd have a 30 minute show every night called What's Wrong with Mitch? And we just mm. make shit up about you know, it could be a sort of a Manchurian candidate situation gone wrong. I think uh, I think for sure, yeah, some sort of CIA black book type mm -hmm. situation. They fried his mind. That well, he's an it's old wild man. that he's a that he's a leader and that he's making decisions that that matter. Dude, there's like and, five of these fuckers that are b barely alive. Stroking what out. What did they all do the with time. Feinstein? Did they do something with Feinstein? <clears throat> no, he? I think she's still serving. I think they exhumed they her and wheeled her back her in on and the fucking. She could do shit. <laughs> See, I love the disgrace. idea that they have to find something for us to know about. Like, well, guys, here we've got yeah. news from the doctor. I don't even need fucking news from the doctor. I saw that what happened there. Yeah, get him out you of can't there. Can't do it. He yeah. can't do it. And I don't even know what it is, but I promise you we can't. And it, he can't drive. Really he can't drive heavy machinery. Thing. Get him out. Republicans yeah. and Democrats both have people who are too old for their jobs. For sure. sure. And just like like not with it anymore. They should be like, able to yeah, tell me what kind of pudding they want. If you can't tell me what flavor pudding you want, sir, you're out. I have higher expectations. You know what? Last chance. <laughs> Would you trust them to drive? That's my line. Would you trust them to drive? Would you put McConnell behind a wheel? Biden, yeah. Trump, fine. I like this system. Einstein? Yeah, all Would women ineligible for Congress. <laughs> 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 the the, the Masterson solution. Oh, <laughs> Would you watch them opening no your car Asian door? <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. oh. Would you loan them? That's a good car. reference. That's that that yeah. Would you watch them opening your car door yeah. every fucking time I've ever watched? Every time a woman ever opens a car door in my presence, I'm like, let's see how she handles this. I've seen girls, and it'll be their car, but they'll just like whip that bitch open, and I'm like, 
Ooh. Oh, man. You didn't you even look if there was a parking meter there or anything. Anything could have been there. You know, I or like it hits the look. it hits the end of the rocker. And I'm like, I know that you didn't know it would hit the end of the rocker <laughs> like that. You are lucky it didn't flip over and then hit that brick wall. Yeah, I, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Little dents on cars no. irk me. Um, and curb, right. and curb wheels... Be- Curved wheels on a girl's car is, is usually a, a good indication too. I hear, so, you know, maybe sometimes. I bet Mitch drive. McConnell's car is a. There's no if hub caps. Got, if he's got if feelers got. on them, <laughs> those little things. You know? yeah. <laughs> that guy's hitting every single curb at the drive-through, just, just slamming. Driving's not a great car. line for Wait, them. Those... Catching strays here, Kyle. I'm <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> None I mean, of these guys like, drive though. Like if, Obama if can't Joe drive. Buck like pulled that, like if if a sports announcer. Was like the pit, and then just like didn't say anything for nine seconds. Like ESPN would have a call with that guy and be like, "We we cut to you in the booth, and you're alarming people watching the baseball game, Mister Buck. Like, are you all right? We're gonna, you know, we're gonna send you in, have a neurologist look at you because when you're calling a baseball game, you shouldn't have twenty seconds of silence as you drool <laughs> on yourself. <laughs> like that, like that. Any job? What's a job that you can just? Uh, like this for one? 20 seconds <laughs> for this one. If like one of us was in the middle of a sentence, uh, uh, like, <laughs> yeah, that, I take it back. You can't yeah, do it. People would know. And it would be bizarre. And we would like, like if Woody, if Woody had a few, went into a fugue state, we'd be like, all right, Zach, would you stop, stop, stop. Let's stop. Um, Woody, are you okay? Like really? We'd have to stop and check on Woody. We wouldn't continue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like Woody, oh. you got to call somebody. I think Does anybody have another question? You know, <laughs> <is> there is <laughs> response. <laughs> For that one was that... a stumper. Are you running again? <laughs> oh man, that was a real fucking brain buster. Clearly, his staff. <laughs> Something about colors, be... maybe. <laughs> his staff seemed to be really like, uh, I don't know, with it and used to this situation. Like they were like, "All right, it's happening again." I wonder how often it happens because he's not on camera most of the time. If it happened twice on camera, it must have happened thirty times off camera. Oh, I'm sure. Like you could see, like Feinstein's, uh, like her uh, staffers, like more like like nurses at this point, like yes. wheeling her around. And it's like that lady has a diaper bag. Like they've got Does a she, bottle, are you like guessing? not a, not a bottle, but like, no, they've got like bags of like supplies. Can you that imagine the changing need. table when, that they flip her up on? They just go in the gas station, flop uh. Diane seat up on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be easy. Those are those secure, things. All right, Senator, it's time. <laughs> Can a grown man <laughs> sit on the koala tables They for changing babies? Are they that strong? I don't think you should I try. mean, the adult baby diaper think you're the boss of America me. petitioned a few years ago to, to increase the standards. And so, yes, they all no. have to be able to support a full-grown 250-pound infant. <laughs> yes, okay. That's the way America's going. I guess yeah, a full-grown infant, it's, it sounds technically correct to me. Thank you. A fully grown infant. <laughs> yeah. you, mean a, you mean a man? <laughs> yes, I'm changing a grown man's diaper. Oh, it supports 200 pounds. Well, Feinstein will be fine. She's Ooh. not the baby. She'll be fine. Ooh, yeah. guess who can sit on the baby changing station again? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on your Tinder profile. Must be able to lay on a baby changing station. Yeah. Yeah, that... With me, <laughs> what uh, what dating, dating apps do you find yourself utilizing the most these days, Taylor? Is it as I suggested that perhaps Tinder is the more raunchy of the sites, whereas uh, Bumble or Hinge lean more toward not Bumble, um, lean more toward um, Hinge, you know, yeah. the serious relationships? I mean, I, I have I have all three of those. Those are the only three I have. But those are the classy right. ones. There's definitely there's a vibe to Hinge that it's that it's a little more serious. That everybody, but then on Tinder, it it does not feel that way really, and you yeah, you get some some interesting. I feel like the effects. average girl on Hinge is like a dental assistant, and the average girl on Tinder is a whore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every once in a while, you see a, a bio that's just like shocking, where it's like I'm I've looking seen for in the profile. Are there hot singles in my area that want to fuck for real? Is that what Tinder is? They're, That's adult friend finder. Because poor and that is poor also husband a lying to me. <laughs> adult friend finder? That doesn't yeah. even sound like a dating app. That so just sounds like a adult, hookup app, even more than I, Tinder. I I think so. I thought it was like just those porn ads you get uh, sometimes on the internet. Like, are you looking for horny singles near you? There's a, 
the fun the funny one it's like who do they think i am they're like there's ugly grannies near you that want to fuck and it's like <laughs> i'm not looking for ugly grannies <laughs> yeah that, if, yeah but think about how like porn hub <laughs> all the ads are for other 50 year olds and i'm like this is just disheartening this lisa point. ann that's your girl that's uh that's my favorite older who? than um lisa <laughs> ann she is the Sarah Palin lookalike, like way oh, too okay. big titties for for your liking. But uh, she did that uh, that that porno called Nalen Palin, where she does the full Sarah Palin get up and she fucks a couple ruskies who've come up come across the border. A eh? mm. is that really what that her, is? You can see she him from her backyard. Him. She fucks. Well, ruskies. that's how it begins. That's the first scene. She she fucks a couple ruskies. I think she goes on, and I think there's like a um um who's. I'm, I'm forgetting who ran that year against Obama. Uh, John McCain. There's like a John McCain look. I think they get everybody worked in. She probably fucks an Obama lookalike by the end. You know, she makes the rounds. It's a long movie. McCain lookalike. I don't like that. Well, you know, just a bald guy with a big dick, really. That's that's probably what they went for. Okay. He can't, he can't, he can't lift his arms up over his head when he's getting blown. <laughs> <laughs> and no, a little cage, arms. like Vietnam. <laughs> he, gets a dick out. A okay. he couldn't lift the one arm because, you know, the, the, the injuries or something. They, they, they had him dangled. You know, they put, you, put your hand, hand, mm -hmm. arms behind your back. Now tie a rope to, to, the, to your hands. Now, sus now, like, suspend that person like that and leave him there for two days. That's what happened to John McCain. That's why he couldn't I'm mixing up. Bob Dole had that too, and I, I ah. thought maybe it was only him. Yeah, Bob Dole. He used to carry a pen in his hand constantly, and it would be almost like a social excuse so he could shake with his left because his hand was fucked up. Oh, or his didn't arm know that. was fucked up. You know, like I think a, I, I think a problem what? we have is that maybe our elected officials aren't old enough. I think we should Ooh. have Jimmy Carter run again. <laughs> And he can he can campaign on having twenty more years of experience than the upstart eighty one year old Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> they vote for him. Like, why not? At this point, just fuck it. That Reagan answer. Anyway. Remember the Reagan answer when they, they were like, yeah. "Mr. Reagan, you you're twenty years. Your opponent's senior." And he's like, "I will not let my opponent's inexperience be used against him in this race." <laughs> and they're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> It, it was one of the better debate lines in history. It's I, I like, fuck. Just shut and great hair, as down. we remembered recently. Uh, yeah. best, best president hair in the game. Norwood Zero. Have have we had a straight up... Who's the last totally bald president we've had? Has there ever been a total Eisenhower? bald yeah, president? Eisenhower. <clears throat> Did he fully yeah. give up? I and thought John he almost Quincy had Adams a little too. light yeah, stanza around thing. The sides. Like, like, no, Eisenhower was like gone. Okay. Like, like he just had like he had that he had like a Captain Picard yes, at best. Yeah. So before we jump to the next thing, I realized we're we're having so much fun. We're overdue on advertisements. <clears throat> this episode of PKA is brought to you by Ferrodistro.com. Do you want to get high? Like really, really high? Then get your ass over to Ferrodistro.com and try out the new Dab X Go. Say goodbye to messy dabbing with its sleek magnetic titanium design. This revolutionary electronic dab rig will take you to highs you've only dreamt of. Get it exclusively at ferrodistro.com, linked below, with discount code PKA20 for 20% off. That's a big discount. And if you are searching for the perfect concentrate to put in your dab X, dive into Ferrodistro's THCA Diamond Sauce or the fan favorite HHC is Better Dabs. Fly high, mess free. Get yours at ferrodistro.com. Don't forget, use code PKA20 for 20% discount on your entire order. Please use responsibly. So the Dab X is incredible. It's a great way to smoke, great way to, to get stoned. Super clean, super easy. It's it the charge lasts quite a while. So you charge it up all the way. It's gonna last or like it lasts me days and days of using it every single night. Um I need to talk to our rep there because I'm I've used all of the dab stuff that they sent me, and so I need some more of that. But if the dab stuff is a little intimidating for you, you can check out just the regular vapes. The HHC is better. The Delta 8 is better vapes. Those are going to be a gentler way to, to get into it. Smaller hits, of course, because it's a pen. Or if you're an edible person, as I know a lot of people are moving that way, you can get the HHC or Delta 8 is better edibles. Those are 25 milligrams a piece. Those are the ones I really, really recommend you start with. Uh, you know, and if you're new to edibles, don't even take a full one of those. Start with like half of one of those. Um, but 25 milligrams, very, very reasonable amount. 
Um, if you have a very high tolerance, you can check out the sour belts that are, uh, they have 300 milligram a piece sour belts and they have 500 milligram a piece sour belts. Um, please, please, please. Those are accurately dosed. They're immensely powerful and strong. If you get those, uh, start slow. Don't, I say this all the time and I have people fucking message or tweet me like, you're right. It was a lot. And it's like, I know I told you it was a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's not like it's, if you are used to a hundred milligrams of like gas station gummy shit, start with less than a hundred of uh, the Ferro distro stuff because it's, it's pretty potent. So check that out. Code PKA 20 for 20% off anything over at their wonderful site. Uh, and of course the, uh, the nerd rope just, just retardedly strong, uh, nerd ropes that Kyle will eat. Kyle, he had that one finger off of it last week, and afterward we played a little bit of Code Names. He was cooked. Like I off knew of it. That one. He I was high. He he eats like three inches of that thing, and then it's like like because I'm you know the boss who can handle it. I'm like mm -hmm. nobody can handle that. So I'm glad to hear that even Kyle. Got yeah, after where we so. start playing a little bit of code names and, you know, maybe a clue doesn't come in and it's a Kyle's normal standard. And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm high as shit. And it's like, I know, <laughs> because you, you <laughs> took that goddamn, that, that nerd rope of of immense power. So code PKA, ferrodistro.com, check it out. This episode also brought to you by Blue Chew. Blue Chew, folks. Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex. Guys, mm. shouldn't you always be at your best? 2023 is the year to maximize your performance in the bedroom. Listen up, BlueChew.com. BlueChew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. Thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the podcast. BlueChew.com. Code PKA. I think if it's the same as it was years ago when when we got the the intro one, you get three pills, uh, you get the five dollars in shipping you pay, and Kyle mm -hmm. recommends the Tadalafil option, and he is our resident expert of these pills, and we took him at his Make word, and we have never gone wrong. Make sure, make sure you got to see hard. it as a performance enhancer, okay? You don't need something wrong with you to need the pill, as we you know we talked about at the very beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. You're you're a real weak minded bitch if you think that way. By the way. Anybody out there. Yeah, you're okay. trying to optimize that penis of yours. And they're saying right here, they want to help you have better sex. And mm -hmm. what, having your dick hard as shit guys, makes for better sex. Those are the type of guys you ask them, you know, would you would you give a BJ for a billion dollars? It's like, no way, man. I wouldn't I'm pay not... more than like a hundred bucks. No way, man. Never. <laughs> no? No. Oh, okay. I'm getting my dick sucked. Yeah. Oh, then no. No, no. It's how much would you suck a dick for? Like a billion dollars? Yes. Yeah. Oh, right? uh, a billion dollars. I would. I'd suck the skin off that dick. <laughs> Dude, the, the number is so much. In the world for the a number billion is dollars. so much lower than that for everyone. Oh what, yeah. What I'm saying is the same guy who has that absurd mm -hmm. number that's in the billions is the same guy who's afraid to spend the five dollars and make his dick harder than it's ever been before. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true, and that tracks. Yeah, so you are five dollars and like 120 seconds from having the hardest dick of your life. Try it. Yeah. Try it out. Bluetooth.com code PK. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. And another pill for your penis, although this one more for the load, what's coming out of your penis. Lock and load the premium, mm -hmm. premium ejaculation increasing supplement, taking the world by storm, according to me. And it is <laughs> it's efficacious. We partnered with the most efficacious man in the whole industry, Derek. <laughs> Look at him. Look at those delts and tell me he doesn't know what he's talking about. You wouldn't say that to his face. He'd tear your head off like a like a Yeti. Lock and load. Nine pills a day. If we were trying to, you know, be like one of those goofy ass porn advertising ones that I can't imagine has an efficacious dose like ours, we'd mm -hmm. be telling you to take one a day and we would have saved a shit cancer. ton of time. We would have saved months. Of of this, and we would have put it on sale fucking ten months earlier if we would have been like, oh fuck that! I got blisters. Lock and load. Woody or Woody and Kyle both got blisters because they were helping each other out. 
getting <laughs> getting ready for the. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I can't jack myself off. I need it needs to be real. That'd be good. So you, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's going to help, and it's not one of those things where you're like, oh, it's the second and third bottle where you're going to see the effects. No, no, buy one bottle and. You yeah. will fucking notice this shit. You'll you'll be rattling around a giant maraca of pills still, and you will notice it uh, because it's it's gonna it's gonna. I would have never got blisters if Kyle hadn't used the blue chew. His dick's hard like a garden hoe, like a shovel hole, <laughs> and and if it was soft, it would be gentler in my hands. But you don't want that. You it's want that rough rock like hard an dick. old piece of timber. You want your dick to be hard as shit, <laughs> and you want to come on. <laughs> What's what's the best part of the orgasm when you're shooting cum out of your dick? And what 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 stands to reason? The more cum coming out of your dick, the more sensation, the better it is, and you're you're feeling great. Big old loads. Check it out. Code P. Code That's G- not why I do it. I do it because I love the fucking duck walk. If she's overfilled. <laughs> <laughs> Just and that's that can happen, you know, because it's you're, you're going to be pumping a lot of a lot of cum. Also, if you're not feeling the cum pills, which I think you should try out, guys. Uh, code PKA or code Jizz, ten percent off anything over at Derek's site. You got your protein powders, your weight loss supplements, your pre workouts, your energy drinks, whatever the fuck you want over mm-hmm. there. Code PKA or code Jizz, ten percent off. Check it out. So and that's Taylor, all the ads. I think that you wear the crown around here as far as embarrassing poop experiences go however absolutely this week this week actually yes today i read about a way more embarrassing poop experience really there was a flight poor man there was a delta flight i think to barcelona maybe out of atlanta in any case someone shit themselves in their seat it seems and then got up and thought let me make it to the bathroom and continued to shit themselves huh. as they ran the length oh. of the aircraft. It's a big boy aircraft, by the way. We're going to Italy or whatever, Barcelona, <laughs> Spain. Um, you know, it's just in a small plane. So it's these jo- this person's jogging for a while, shitting as they go. Are they fat? Oh. The the quote was the passenger quote had to re- diarrhea throughout the aircraft, which re- created a biohazard and a threat to the passenger's health. So they turned around two hours into the flight, came back, <laughs> and they had to clean the aircraft, you know, everybody to get off, oh, new wow. plane for everybody. Who knows what oh. happened to the flight? But here's Dude, I, I am opening that door and jumping out. I, I'm I'm and just it's so embarrassing. Just leave just gonna for two hours out. after the incident. Yeah, at some point the captain goes, ah, it turns out one of y'all shit themselves back there. We're gonna be heading on back to Atlanta. <laughs> that, how do you say sorry I shit myself in Spanish? Am I right? <laughs> well, that's something like, none of you are gonna need to know today. And, like, <laughs> and then everybody who's already smelling your shit and is like freaked out because you scared their kids while you shit the plane and everybody freaked out. Now they're looking at you like you've ruined my vacation. I have exactly eight days off from work. You know, who knows? Maybe yeah. so. But when I turn the people. plane around, I feel like I got my money's worth. How many more hours are, would you have to sit in a shit laden plane? Like it must have how, happened how, how right at the flight? start like eight of the hours? flight. Because if hours it's like in, a six said. hour flight and I'm two hours in. I might be inclined to go the four. No yeah, way. take a vote. I, I would. I'd rather just tear through it. If it's a yeah. six-hour flight and you're two hours in, that's that's cruel to turn it around. You're already in the mix. Give me that mortician stuff that they put on their nose, like in <laughs> Silence of the Lambs for dead bodies. <laughs> just just hand it out. Up. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. They could at least like I, make snacks, or I guess you probably wouldn't want to eat. I think yeah. their point would be <laughs> <it's> like <laughs> a idea. just feed everyone on the biohazard plane. <laughs> oh. There will uh, be free no red wine meal. for the plane. I'm going to let you know there's not going to be an in-flight meal. <laughs> We're going to hope that the, uh, <laughs> the cumulative just, red wine breath covers up What would be the, the worst shit? food? Just like pecan pie? Goulash. Curry. <laughs> oh, uh, for this evening, we have a lovely goulash with a chocolate pudding. <laughs> did they get a picture of the of the person who did this? Was it a man or a woman? Do we man, know anything? I guarantee somebody was like, "This is the motherfucker right here. This is the yeah. mother- this is the shit pants motherfucker that's got me ruining my <laughs> trip to Spain." Somebody had to have done that because they was always do. I don't know if it was a man or a woman or why. I don't oh, know zero about man. the perpetrator. How did this stay under wraps? This is like who shot who, uh, Mr. Burns. It is, <laughs> and it's going to end up being fucking some stupid answer like Maggie. Is it, I bet it's not even a big fat obese guy, which is what I would imagine. God, 
That's so Can we see the I, I know there's a picture of the shit trail. Can we figure out how fat yeah. they are based on the wobbling of the shit trail going up to the bathroom? There we, is we a video of the shit this. trail. When I saw the video of the shit trail, that's when I knew it was the right move to turn around because the plane has been deep. Zach, find a photo of the shit trail. We can't show it, I'm sure, but like link it's it a so video. we can look at it. Because it's one of the planes that has a center row of seats as well. And so there's two aisles, essentially. And so mm -hmm. yeah. the cameraman is in one aisle walking up the aircraft, filming the other aisle that's got a few seats between. And it's just shit, more shit. And there's people have put like stuff on top of the shit so you don't have to look at the shit. So there's like paper towels everywhere. And like, like there's so much shit. It is not like, oh, I had a little accident here. It's like you shit the whole plane, dude. You've ruined a 757. Damn. <laughs> so he, like, by the time he got to the bathroom, he was, like, done. Like, I don't there was... know. From what I read, once he got to the bathroom, he made an even bigger mess in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd have to get the you'd have to get the police to get me out of that bathroom after I'd gotten in there. Like, I would, I would lock is myself everyone in Everyone gone? They'd yeah, be so like, sir, we now. are going to arrest you when we land the plane if you do not come out. And I'm like, please bag me, bag me, <laughs> hmm. bag me and drag me through the airport. <laughs> Tell them I'm something cooler than a shit bandit. <laughs> Tell them I spit. Tell them I spit. Give me that. Give me that hood. <laughs> Tell them I'm a bio threat. Don't say what kind, please. Dude, now, this is so embarrassing. Looking at, at the like trail, you can okay. almost hear the bursts as they were walking. Perhaps they <laughs> took too big of a stride, but there are definitely like paintball. It's not a. It's not a stream like somebody's. You know, dumping out. Uh, I don't know, uh, 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 like a pesticide or something. It's like, <laughs> like they're dropping bombs yeah. on their run up to the bathroom <laughs> yeah dude i this picture that you linked i know you can't show it because it's got shit there is it is taking so many paper towels to cover up yeah. the small section we're looking at and you can see a lot of shit peeking under that yeah. paper towel and that there one was so much shit and it's not a smattering it's a full schmear mm -hmm. like that so, oh, that person was flight. sick and it they must have had a lot of like a big colon or something. I don't. I couldn't poop that much. That'd be a record for me. It's that's so much. <laughs> <laughs> Divert to Atlanta. Passenger diarrhea all over. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted, Kyle. Passenger all over. diarrhea all over. Man, what a terrible day at work for every. We had a terrible day of vacation. <laughs> There's got to be some sucks. on the ceiling too, you think? Like anybody freaked out and flung it up. So you can't discount it. You can't you be can. a cleaner and go like, "Well, is any uh, there, No, there's none on the ceiling. Like I don't think you know that. I don't think you <laughs> Would you bet your life on it? No. No, I wouldn't bet my life on. It. And I would be alarmed to be just breathing in all yeah. of that guy's recycled shit air forever. Like that what do you They should drop the oxygen thing. Yeah. Just as a courtesy at that point, honestly. <laughs> Just for fun. Like, just you know what? Fun. You guys wanted to see this thing go off your whole lives. Uh, just for dealing with the shit, we're going to drop the oxygen thing. We're going to drop the oxygen, get you a little better mood. Idea. You're breathing. You're going to go down the slide when we get back home. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was like right, an all no. over aircraft. That lost day. This just plane is kicks, fucked, obviously. We're not. Cushion as a flotation device. You know, yeah. you wanted to see it. Did they give yeah, them like yeah. moccasins to walk out, like those little hospital booties or anything yeah. so they could slide? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I, I doubt they did that. I bet people were walking very carefully Ugh. out of this plane. That's that's terrible. You're right, Kyle. That is the most embarrassing poop story I can imagine. Like being so, locked in a plane with someone. Yeah, you can't get with away. All the, you just get and you just you're not going to fucking Cleveland. You just ruined a flight to Spain. People are so excited. They're in a good mood. And not, and now they're not. Do you think like no. Chipotle and stuff? Is it a, they have like spies trying to figure out which fast food caused this so they can disavow it as quickly as possible? Like, do you think Taco to... Bell and Chipotle and Arby's all have agents in the field trying to ask them who they had last so they can trying blame to it on false them? false flag it? Yeah. I also... yeah, we're removing Popeyes from the terminal mm -hmm. after a a critical accident. I saw an awesome poop video today too, which doesn't happen. It happened very often, but here's what was happening. It looked like we were in China because everyone was Asian and they were playing basketball. 
kids are playing basketball and there's an adult supervising. Just a, just a dude watching the kids play basketball. There may be eight, nine. Mm -hmm. This one kid sort of runs, skips into the square, and he's going to make, make a layup attempt and just full-on lays a turd right there on the court and just keeps skipping and hopping away like he didn't just lay a big turd. But as soon as it plops on the floor, I mean, almost immediately, a basketball comes down <laughs> and hits the shit right in the middle. I mean, right bullseye. And the shit goes splat and like <laughs> sprays everywhere. And the adult sees the whole thing go down. And you just watch his expression, him going, shit, shit's exploded. That child ran away. The shit has exploded. There's shit everywhere. He sort of smiles, turns around, and leaves. <laughs> mm, yeah. It's so good. He's like, I'm a audio. volunteer coach, so I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Kid, shit, and then the ball just sprayed yeah. everywhere. You it know what would have so helped a lot? Shit. Burning a candle helps with poop smells a ton. It I would, think... but I, I bet they don't allow do burning that on a plane, candles though. on a plane. <laughs> One day only, smoke them if you got them. If you got <laughs> right here, right, we're lighting up all the way fucking home. Rules off today. Oh, oh my God. The guy with a full pack of cigs in that case, you're like, yeah, yeah, cigarette guy. Keep smoking. You can do it. Keep smoking. Something about He's got the burning. whole pack in his mouth. Yes. <laughs> like if you have giant flatulent dogs, hypothetically, like a burning scented candle, it's magic against that. Yeah. I bet those dogs are awful. They weren't. They were not prepared oh, for that. I bet they did not have a room. A, I bet they didn't have a contingency plan or like there was nothing in the manual for how to deal with. <laughs> I, I bet there's like plans for a reasonable amount of shit that like a, a baby missed the diaper or something. But there's no way that they had a contingency plan for an adult man, not only not having the wherewithal to hold his bowels, but imagine thinking it was a good idea to spread it about <laughs> in the in the midst of shitting. <laughs> what do you do if you start <laughs> shitting your pants in the middle of a plane do you get up and sprint i mean honestly who knows what you do i take my it's gotta, be, it's gotta be the scariest thing that's <laughs> nothing's <laughs> yeah. all right let's get that molar out <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> goodbye i thought it was gonna be something else huh <laughs> i uh i wasn't pooping but i was on the airplane this is like i don't know 10 years ago and I got air sick. This is a problem that I sometimes run into, especially if I'm not well rested. And uh, there's a line to the bathroom, but I know I'm going to throw up. But it's a matter of time. This is going on. Yeah. And uh, I asked the line if I could go next. And they looked at me with like beads of sweat coming down my pale face. And all of them were like, yep, you to the front. So I think I'd try to pull something like that. Have you used the bags before when you couldn't yeah. get up? I have used those, yeah. It's terrible. Oh, and and I the worst part of it is I feel like an imposition on the people around me. Like, uh, uh everyone had to listen to me get sick. Uh, I'm worried uh, that the bag's not airtight or something yeah. like that. It's we it's were awful. We oh, were on that, that little happen. aircraft flying from Burlington, Vermont to Killington, Vermont, or wherever, and we were losing and gaining dozens of feet of altitude in a snowstorm, up and mm, mm, pulling my seat. I'm, my hand's under my seat pulling to keep my ass in it because we're, we're up and down like that. Mm -hmm. And somebody taps me on the shoulder. The, there's, I can't hear the people behind me because the aircraft's too loud. It's a snowstorm. And uh, I look back and they go, JJ's sick! And I'm like, I look way back through all... He's in the back of the plane and he's green. This little fucker looks... So, he, and he's like... He's like making faces and waving. And I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with him? He's got a piss and he's got a puke. Two bags. No, three. And I went, <laughs> I'm like, the pilot has the vomit bags. And I'm like, oh, they need three vomit bags. He's like, is he shitting? I'm like, no. No, they say he's puking and pissing. He's like, let me know if he starts shitting. <laughs> I said, the bags, man. And I didn't find it to be embarrassing at all. Like, I didn't feel, because we were on a roll. Yeah, I'd feel really bad for someone that happened, too. Yeah. Like, that would suck. I had the thought at some point where I was like, I can either be afraid of this or enjoy it because I, whether I live and die, it is, it, I, can't, I don't have any control over. So let's just pretend like this is a fun little adventure. But it was kind of shaky there for a while, kind of dicey, as Brendan Schaub would say. It was yeah. it was a little rough. I've never I've been had on a to plane like on that, plane. too. I, uh, I was just going off the coast of California from, I don't know, like Santa Barbara to San Francisco or something. Like a short little flight on a little plane. 
and the turbulence was so bad. Like ladies' purses were hitting the ceiling on the plane and stuff like that. Nice. And uh, I wasn't super sick on that one, but I was scared. I spent the whole flight trying to cover how scared I really was. Yeah. I, I, and you I never scare others or that you family small. with you. No, I was by myself. I was just trying to not oh, be a man, pussy, man. I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, there was a guy, he just had the vibe about him that he was a really frequent traveler, like a traveling salesman or something. Mm-hmm. And I had never been on a plane that small. And I asked him like, is this normal? And the way he answered was like, no. <laughs> no. I was like, fuck, if yeah. this guy's concerned, then we all should be. I don't know planes. I don't know planes, but I would say this plane had maybe six or eight seats in it. And when we put the luggage in, he at, he was weighing it. He was like a little yeah. bit on this side, a little bit on that side. And then he was like, who weighs the most out of our group? And I looked around and it was like mostly women and little I was like, me. And he's like, you're my co-pilot. Because the heaviest goes in the front. <laughs> really? Yeah. I had the opposite experience. I held once. the checklist. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's kind of cool. One, I was on a vacation once as a kid, and we were whitewater rafting down the Grand Canyon. And you get there by helicopter that soars through the Grand Canyon. Like, like just the thing sideways, bank and turns in the Grand Canyon. Like and Smith. they're like, who's the lightest? And it was me. I'm like 14 or something. And six years from puberty so uh i got the, i didn't know why they were asking but the lightest person sat in the front which was neat Ooh. because there was glass of course you can see really well up front but also there was glass by your feet so you can see down and the whole scene look it was i was lucky to be in front yeah for sure front's always better roller coasters everything I, there, I, the only time it's not best to be in the front would be like a limo right and you think of any other time you don't want to be in the front I think the back seat in the roller coaster is also good. I don't know what's better. It does uh, a different buses. kind of inertial thing. Yeah, buses, buses on uh, on school trips. Everybody was having oh. fun on the back of the bus because the teacher wasn't back there. And when the driver goes too fast over the speed bumps on the back of the bus, you get some air. You okay, when up. you're a child, the back of the bus is a great yes. place. But now as a man grown, was the back of the bus truly where you'd like to be? I want to be on oh, the next part to the, of the toilet? Bus. No. <laughs> Yeah, no, I haven't, I, I haven't been on a bus since unless you want to score. Maybe you want to score some meth, then that's probably the place to be. Yeah, Back there. Uh, I don't want to hang. I don't out know. I've honestly stuff. never been on one of those buses. We've got a friend that has bussed all over the goddamn country and trained, like taking mm-hmm. trains, faster trains. I've just kind of driven and taken planes everywhere I've gone. So like those alternatives, I don't know anything about them. The idea of having a toilet in the back of the bus and me and all these degenerates are just shitting in it all day, every day on a long ass cross country thing. Like that Anthony Cumia trip they had to make because his shitty ass father sold the plane tickets. Yeah. Oh, all the way from <laughs> Cali to New Jersey on a bus. Fuck yeah. that. <laughs> didn't he, didn't Anthony say it took weeks? <laughs> like to get from, to get they from ran out of money. To, they, from like Stan Cup Cupertino to new to, to Brooklyn. Like yeah. it's an absurd they spent, business. They they spent what money they had on marijuana, so they just starved and got high the whole way home. Like like they 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 were kids. Then the, the dad again sold their plane tickets that mom had bought to get them home. He's got a great childhood story. Bought them bus tickets instead. Kept the, kept the difference. <laughs> He's shit. Yeah, his his dad was shockingly a bad father in some of his stories. Yeah. <laughs> he, Anthony was like eleven or twelve in that story, and it's it's after his dad had bought him the whore. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, Anthony, like he, that, that's one of the great ONA stories. He talks about Buzz, who was like an 18 year old, like stable prostitute. And on his 13th birthday, his dad was just like, here you go. And he's like, yeah. And so when I was 13, I fucked a prostitute named Buzz in a stable. And it's like, that was probably weird for your development. All right, I, I have a couple of questions. What is it? A stable prostitute? This is like a the horse stables is where. Yeah. yeah okay. Right and there. Buzz. This is a girl's name, Buzz? Purportedly, yes. <laughs> okay. Like from Home Alone. Yeah. yeah that yeah, wasn't yeah, a girl. Like, <laughs> like Buzz's <this> girlfriend. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they, that was a good scene. Good Home Alone That's scene. They used, a, they used a fat little boy because they didn't want to hurt the girl's feelings. That's very nice. It's the director's son. It's his it's, the it's director's his son or his nephew. It really is. He, he's like, I didn't. What was I going to do? Cast an ugly girl and be like, I need a picture of an ugly girl to, to make fun of in my movie. So I dressed my son up in a wig and a dress. And I'm like, you'll be the ugly girl. He loved it. <laughs> that is. We, like, took, that- uh, we took some fairies around. We went to Greece last month and we took 
ferries from island to island thinking it would be like romantic and fun. Mm. Uh, and about so 20, no, about 20 minutes into the first one, uh, one guy started throwing up, which started like an avalanche of guys throwing up who were using the, uh, the, the bathroom was like, uh, just out of reach or maybe occupied. So they're using one of those, um, like a trash can as a spittoon going back and forth no. for the first 20 minutes, one after the other. It got so bad that it was, it got so bad that it was, uh, past gross that it started just being funny. So you're trying <laughs> to stifle laughing because they're like <laughs> they sound like the budweiser frogs coming yeah. through. <laughs> um, but you know you don't want to laugh and then it's kind of contagious uh but then it got back to being disgusting with the smell uh, uh, it was not fun it makes thing. me no, get like fun. like people vomiting will make me vomit well uh, <laughs> and then my favorite bit in pretty much all situations is to go to anyone I'm with, my girlfriend in this case is like, oh, man, do you feel like, I feel like throwing up. I really feel like throwing up. This is making me feel like I'm going to throw up. stop. I'm really going to throw up. I get motion sick. I'm like, me too. Look. Oh, God. The fucking boat's <laughs> <wiggling> around. <laughs> <laughs> Which I do on planes, too. The, every time the plane, like, hits something I, or when we're landing, I go, I have this, um... I have this really intense feeling like we're gonna die. Like the plane <laughs> is gonna, I think it's really gonna crash. I think there's something wrong. Um, yeah, you, you like like people do what people on Reddit do, where you're like, oh my goodness, I'm an aviation engineer, and this is not normal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is not normal. That like sound that. is not aviation normal. Engineer here, like, <laughs> it's really fun. I recommend. That is have fun. you been following uh, the Burning Man thing at all? Yes. Oh man, oh, I'm yeah, so jealous. I was, I, is this the one year you've not been in forever? Yeah, like a long time. Uh, I think the second year I went was the last time it rained really bad, which was that was my my favorite year of all of them. Uh, I love it. I loved the news coverage that was like they have Ebola now. Uh, now they're cannibals now. Like yeah. it's there. They ran out of water. I'm like, yeah, well, the, the festival wasn't supposed to be over until like Monday. So I'm yeah. pretty sure they're, if they ran out of water on Friday now, then fuck them. That was their own fault. Yeah, Dude, there's uh, so much water. It was great. Did you go ahead? Made the best Burning Man videos on the internet. Uh, he, he did. So he, I don't know how to describe him other than he's the kind of guy that belongs at Burning Man and he flies paramotors. So he like goes up and shows it from a, like an aerial view of all what's going on. And he also just edits and he's real popular on Instagram and stuff. Give take Professional. Chick, I'm sorry. I get a naked chick strapped to me, take her up there. She can't get away then. The impl- not just the implication, <laughs> fucking gravity. You're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he made really great videos. He's got like hundreds of thousands. He, this, he's a paramotor guy, right? So here I have his channel open. He normally pulls his popular videos are like forty five thousand views, but these are getting six hundred thousand views because it's pretty nice. popular. Yeah, that's great. I love the jeeps that are like totally submerged in the mud. The people that tried to get out thinking they're four wheel drive Land Rover Harley was there. or whatever. I like the Harley. ones that uh-huh. did get out. Like, have you seen the trucks and stuff that are pulling trailers through the mud and just looking badass? <laughs> Did they get out or do they end up like sinking further out? Well, Some of them do. They it's... kept going for as long as the video went. It seemed Oh, like look at that crazy silty mud. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. It's really yeah. fun. Uh They said so you the, went, uh, Dick? What, what were those little sea creatures that you get in the bag? The sea Fairy monkeys. Shrimp. They, said the, they said the sea monkeys were all waking up cuz you know the the <laughs> that they're all out there. So that that ground is like sewage and muck and water and sea monkeys. <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Didn't know the sea monkeys. They're like they're like krill eggs or something, right? Like some shrimp, sort of. There's right? there's fairy Brine shrimp, shrimp out there. There's fairy shrimp eggs that out th- that are out there. Uh, it might have to get a little bit more rain for them to start hatching, but it is uh, it is it, all your stuff's ruined when it starts raining. There, you're just if you don't immediately abandon it. Uh, Can we play the video of Harley? Um, he at Burning Man. I, I linked it over there. He he looks like Wario, and he's c- clearly on. He's clearly real, real drugged up. It's 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 just it's just a good time. Harley, mm. yeah, Harley, Harley Mortenstein, our oh, friend, drugs, the, the large Jew. I, I, I didn't know he did. Doesn't drugs. sound like him. No, like he's a professional fighter. He looks like Wario. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, don't play it in fast forward. We can't understand. I thought that was the drugs. It is. <laughs> He's having fun. Good for Harley. Having a good time. I saw him he like didn't, he didn't make around. it out. Unfortunately. He'll he'll be fine. He's he's too Rest tall to sink. Seat. He'll he'll be the one head still remaining, and <laughs> when they go to recover Burning Man, everyone else is sunk. They're all under me. <laughs> so what what was the first time you went to Burning Man, and how many times have you been? Oh God, I, the first one was maybe twenty. It's ten years ago, maybe um, maybe maybe twenty twelve. I don't know. I think I've been like uh, like eight times. Uh, usually, I bring a big art piece out there, but um, COVID uh, COVID really messed it up. It made everybody real skittish about anybody else. They canceled it for two years, which was weird. Then the because you know you're not supposed to give a fuck at Burning Man. It's safety third. Look at us. We're doing drugs and working with high with uh, power tools. Fuck mm -hmm. safety. But then they're like, well, COVID. You know, that's we don't want anybody to get sick. Uh, doing, do, snorting something <laughs> off of a guy's dick that from a bag who you've never met before—that's fine. But uh, <laughs> getting a, a getting a cold? No, 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 no. Not for young people who are all in shape. That would be that would be the end of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they they canceled it twice, and then the guy who started it died. So they they did a bunch of goofy shit like no no coffee camp in the middle. I don't know. I just felt weird. No Last coffee? year, they also spread it all out. There used to be a coffee shop in the middle, but I think they either stopped selling it forever or just for that year. So uh, help they... me out, because because I've only seen like pictures of this thing and shit. It seems to me that you go there to do drugs and like rave and party in the desert, and there's groups there, and there's lots of like chicks that want to do drugs and fuck probably too. That's my outside looking in kind of. Yeah, uh, the arts really. Uh, amazing on its own um art. even if you don't like art so last time i went there was a there was an i beam sculpture that somebody made those all the arts interactive they, like that's the that's the whole thing interactive and huge there was an i beam that somebody embedded in the ground that went up at maybe a 20 degree angle and met with another i beam uh i don't know 25 30 feet off the ground and yeah. people were just walking up this thing uh like ants and as you got closer and closer to the peak like the vibrations would just get insane and you're falling on essentially concrete if you were to mm -hmm. fall off like there's no net there's nobody there so um there's just That's like fun. yeah it was really i uh it was like suddenly terrifying uh to be on top of it there's a lot of little little things like that do you, do you go across in. yeah yeah uh i was Did terrified me uh, you know, at the top button, like Jimmy, to go over the hump, I sat yeah. down and like dog dog wiping its ass on the ground That's to go I over figured. it. So I'm like, I can't, I don't understand how to do this now. I, if if <laughs> I was in VR, maybe I could do it, but I know that I'm not in VR and I can't do it. I'm I'm just gonna sit down. I'm not dying here in my underwear. At <laughs> That's so true. What, what you just said, I, I know what you mean. What you mean is like, if there were no consequences of this, I'd just fucking run up and down this thing. Yeah. I remember, um, like, if you've ever seen a house before when they've got all the joists in or whatever, like the floorboards, but they haven't put the the big boards on top of them. You can just kind of run along those one and a half inch, two inch wide boards. I could mm -hmm. do that all day. But man, if you made falling my life, I, I'm not I'm not stepping foot on that. No, I don't want to look at it. 30 feet. I don't want to look at it. <laughs> yes. When, like when deer a, hunting, I would be 25 feet up in the tree, 30 sometimes. I was always afraid. I was always afraid. Just I was like 11, 12. It was like dark. My dad's like, hurry up. Get up there. I got to go climb my tree. And I'm just like, <laughs> 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 I'm shaking. Like my, my, every, every time I would like lift, scaring the deer you, with your cries, you could feel like, 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 like trembles in my like wrist and my ankles and stuff. Cause you would make that climber stand bite in such mm -hmm. a way that you can put your weight on it, but it would slip in the pine. So it would be like slip, 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 stick. And you're like, it feels like you're falling for a split second, and it happens. You are for a second, yeah. And it keeps. Ha it happens over and over. And you're 30 feet up, 
in the darkness. You can't see the bottom anymore, except for he's got a light, a little pin light shining it up at you to let Once you know. Once it sticks, he's still... it's solid, right? Yeah, okay. more or less. You could still fall out of there. You, you said it happens though. again and again. I was like, T the whole time you just lose three inches? I guess not. No, once you're in there, you're in there pretty good. But yeah, that hey, I'm going to post uh, one of the art things we brought uh, one year. I, I think that's a safer. Let me see if the if the picture is there. Uh, if you scroll Super down a little bit, you can I watch the video. No, no, the Super video sucks. But the pictures are cool. Pro. Yeah, they did an Indiegogo. I don't know. I, I don't know how that well that did. Uh, but there's some cool pictures of the box. It's, oh, like a, okay. it's, the it's a 24 foot long saltine cracker box that we served soup out of um, all night. So like two in the morning from six in the morning, we have little ramen packets of soup and then just uh, pour hot water. And now let me ask, what's it, the demographic like here at the uh, outside the, the big cracker box that you were inside of? Uh, people who are about to freeze to death. And they're looking at us like we're <laughs> Jesus Christ, uh, serving them like a, a, a cup of, uh, of medicine. Um, do you like in general? You mean like men versus women demographic, or no? Are there no? Uh, is it mostly white people, or? Oh yeah, yeah. Th th there's so many white people burning man. They celebrate every single black person they see there. <laughs> uh, they have a parade really? for them. It's so fucking annoying because it's like the most. There's a contingent of burners who are the we have to before we say anything we have to apologize for being on the native like uyapayo land um, oh, it's so fuck fucking him. obnoxious yeah that's pretty gay dude i watched a clip i don't know what the movie is but it's like indian chief sits down with like the cavalry guy and the indian chief's like these black hills were our native land since he and he just the, the cavalry guy cuts him off yeah since you took him from the arapaho who who you murdered with our rifles Let's not talk about how you sprang from the from the desert plain like Owaku says. No, because you came from the Minnesota Badlands where you raped, pillaged, and murdered. And he starts naming all the tribes they they, they murdered out. And then and now here you are, Chief. Old land by me, old land by God. You're gonna have to fight for your land today. And I'm like, holy shit. I like this guy. I think he's the bad guy though. <laughs> I keep doing that, that. that is how, how conquering the bad tends guy to work. <laughs> When I watched Avatar, I was like, let's get this blue shit. Let's go. I want that whale brain goo, whatever makes us live forever. I saw a, a picture today of like what would happen if instead of those weak ass femboys that came to invade the blue planet and Avatar, like space marines came and immediately it's like, all right, we win. You just fucking kill them. The American military we have right now could absolutely kill all those blue people. You don't need space 100%. marines. And I haven't seen that second movie, but I they definitely could. They're just blue people with bows and arrows, dude. I doubt they're any more threatening than than they were in the first movie. But they're I, real I, big, I, what, what is uh what's because you say people are like being reckless and ridiculous in Burning Man? What is I guess the worst you've ever seen someone injured while you've been there? Uh, seen Ooh. someone? Uh, yeah. Somebody at my somebody at my camp while we were building a stage. One year we built a a TV station. So we built a huge stage, like a talk show stage and a sitcom stage, and it would. We had a camera that broadcast everything to this tiny TV, so people would come and sit and then watch this little tiny TV. Yeah. That was the whole thing going in front of them. Mm -hmm. But as we were building it, um, one of the boys from Oklahoma who knows how to use power tools was holding a screw for one of the jackasses from Silver Lake down the street in California who doesn't know how to do them, and he drilled through his uh, finger. He drilled oh. straight through his his uh, thumb fingernail all the way through, <laughs> so he had to go to the, the medic That's tent and get painful. an x-ray and shit. Oh, So they have yeah. x-ray machines on site? Oh, they got all kinds of stuff there. They got, uh, right. they got real doctors, you know, nurses. What's that shit that solves OD? Like... It may start with an N. Narcan. Narcan, yeah. yeah but they've got lots of Narcan at Burning Ham. Burning I don't him. know if they I don't know if they have it. What are what? The, what are the drugs of choice? <laughs> That's like the most important thing to have at Burning Man. What what are the, the drugs of choice there? at Burning Man? Yeah. Uh same as they are um everywhere else. Molly cocaine acid, you know. Uh, okay. Mushrooms, Molly I guess. You get real locked into a mushroom kick if you want. I don't touch that dirty stuff though. Mm-mm. No, did you no, have a bad experience with the mushrooms, mushrooms at Burning Man? 
Uh, it's just like too like uh, annoying to be around mushroom people. They're always talking about their they're like emotional breakthroughs and stuff. I'm like, man, I don't. Uh, can you get on like a fun drug or something? Does it, is there a drug that you, you don't process trauma on that you can get on? Because this is really fucking boring. I feel like I'm in a young adult novel right now. You're just walking around trying to like give people shots of of some whiskey of acid up a little bit. Yeah. Shots of acid. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I uh I had a very complicated setup of um dropping and then dividing up the shots. And I was like, all right, so there's a there's three eighths of a hit in all these. And everybody does them and my friend goes, uh, can you just review the math on that real quick before I <laughs> before I drink this? I said, No. You just gonna have to I mean <laughs> was it were you right or did they yeah i was right fuck time? him fucking question my math <laughs> <Review> the math. <laughs> question my math at burning man you bitch <laughs> put an extra eyedropper in there for you yeah but it was only three eighths of a hit though is that what three so eighths that, of a hit of acid yeah i, I think does I that mean, mean it's like, a half dose roughly is it my yeah a little correctly? less okay, that's perfect yeah. man if you want to go to a baseball game and not spend three hundred dollars on beer <laughs> and like a, a Dodger dog, a three eighths, three eighths acid, nail it. You're not up all What's night. A Dodger dog. So if you're new to LSD, LSD's acid, right? That's yeah. what you'd suggest. Someone take a three eighth of a hit of a hit. Yes. Uh, take a take like ten shots and dump them in a like a thermos. Put one hit of acid in one little stamp or one little drop of acid in there, and then you can dose yourself with shots. Like if you want to do one shot, like one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. Um, oh, okay. It won't one, just mix it, it in water. One full hit of acid, like one tab, is way too much in my opinion, especially for first timers. It will blow your mind out of your ass for like twelve hours and make you all jittery coming down. It's too much. I didn't get uh, jittery, but I had a great time. But and you took a full hit, Kyle. Took as far hits. as you know, I took five hits of acid. You took oh. five at once. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I so took did, one did, and then waited an hour and then took another. And then it was like, come on, just give me the rest. Like, clearly, this is a good, like, like I'm going to love three. And I promise you, there's nothing I'm going to love more than three than fucking four. Give me all the acid that's mine. And I'm going to take it. And I took all the acid. It's great. I saw the clown. Did you go to sleep? Melt. No, I was up for at least 12 hours high as fuck. Like, the moon oh, jiggled man. and moved. Like, the clouds wiggled. Faces yeah. melted on the wall and paintings and stuff. And colors were beautiful. It was wonderful. Everything was funny. Everything was so giggly funny. And we would, yeah. like, somebody would make a joke and you would just die laughing, like, till tears are coming out of my eyes. And, the, like, like, it hurt to laugh more. And then an hour later, someone would say whatever the triggering word was for that joke and you just die again. And there, or I would just get the giggles I'd, for no reason. I'd just be, that's what mushrooms are like for me. Just giggling over there. And I've told the story yeah. a bunch of times. I took a small dose of mushrooms, it was a gram. And, uh, my friend showed up at the campfire with a really shitty chair. It was like it, it was like four beer cans next to each other it would be the equivalent of this camp chair. And he thought he was awesome that he was going to have the only chair and then everyone else whipped out better chairs. So we just mocked him all night long. This isn't like class A material here, right? Bill Burr is not doing his stand up on camp chairs, yeah. but we were dying. It was the funniest fucking thing to watch him try to make a win out of that terrible chair. And it was the shrooms. Acid's uh, the best drug I've ever taken. It's it's so wonderful. I want more. Yeah, um, I need to find somewhere you, where it's legal. You uh, you mentioned Dick, like <laughs> if you don't want to if you don't want to eat a bunch of Dodger dogs at the baseball game. Well, because fucking does beers acid make you not acid makes you not eat. Uh oh, I I the idea of eating on acid is uh, repulsive to me. Uh, I I okay. couldn't eat uh, I couldn't I've eat a tortilla that. chip on acid. I didn't know how acid. true it was. Okay. I mean, some people can, but if you if you try to eat something, it's like you can kind of conceptualize the molecules getting ground up. It's just very off putting. Maybe it was what I huh. ate. I ate these maple bacon donuts that were so fucking delicious <sighs> that that it made me appreciate the crispness of the bacon and like the the maple like whatever the maple stuff on top was was like really well made. It didn't taste like just pure cane sugar. It was just everything was good and that and I was like. These are the best donuts ever, right? And and my buddy's like, this is the best donut I've ever had. I'm like, are you allowed to eat bacon? Aren't you a Muslim? And he's like, fuck it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was that good. It was so fucking good. 
Um, acid is by far the best drug ever um, that I've ever taken. Um, I would I would like to do acid like two or three times a year for sure. But I don't know where to get it, and uh, I don't want to go back to prison. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's no fun. That's like the opposite of acid. <laughs> Do they even care about acid? Or is it just... They uh, care about me. me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It doesn't matter if they care about acid. Um, you know, don't do anything. Drive the fucking speed limit. Is it... <laughs> uh, that sucks. Anything but I, that. Is, I found it really interesting to see the celebrities and, and that they didn't even have any way to get out of Burning Man. I think Chris Rock made it out of there in a fan's truck. <laughs> like Like... They just everybody was stuck. I think people still are. Like like Chris Rock made it out of there, but I think there's tens of thousands of people stuck in the the mud right now. Right? It could it's not be like anymore. Wednesday? People are driving out fine. It's just a traffic jam. Oh, I know this. Yeah, they... my friends. I have a friend on. Uh, so it didn't turn messenger. into the Superdome. It just dried out really quickly, like overnight. Not in mud anymore. Yeah. Remember the Superdome when it became like oh, rape gangs sewage. Yeah. and sewage? <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. Took, it took a day to turn into Mad Max in fucking New Orleans. <laughs> a day. <laughs> no, Burning Man is more like, wow, we have uh, everything that you could possibly want. Come over here, we're uh, we're uh, we're cooking a pig in a in a box. Um, if you it want, it seems like they were stranded in a place where they planned on being stranded anyway. Like there's yeah. food, there's medical supplies, there's yeah. water. It, it's not quite the same as other so. catastrophes. Well, they made there was nowhere to shit and, and 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 pee because they couldn't empty the porta potties, and I think they do that re- every day. They do They're that like twice in their, a day. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so time them so you can quickly, go shit there. There was nowhere to poop because they were overfilling. And or everywhere seventy thousand. There you go. 70,000 people. And then it doesn't take long for disease to happen. Like it's the medieval age, uh, medieval times or some <laughs> shit. Cholera. Right? Yeah. Or, or, or um, E. coli. Like, you know, something right. like that. If, if we're just walking in shit with wounds in our feet or something. And there's, I don't see a lot of footwear at those things. <laughs> or at least not a lot of uh, torrential rain, mud shit walking appropriate footwear. A lot of Crocs and... It'd be pretty uh, neat if you were the guy, though, that could go places like, you know, I happen to get here on dirt bike or paramotor or four wheel drive truck in some cases, like people who jet could... pack. Jet pack, you get sure. a need a jet pack. Uh, you can hide your plane around pretty good. Barefoot's <laughs> definitely the best way. What? No shoes. Barefoot yeah. doesn't appeal to me in the land of poop and mud. Well, the, you know, you got five, five or seven square miles there. The poop is probably going to be sequestered to the immediate vicinity uh, of the outhouses. You overestimate me. This is a I common poop where I like. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. That'd yeah, have to be no, fast-moving poop. <laughs> I knew that I knew that they were going to get it solved quickly because of the kind of people that were there. It's weird to me that there isn't a uh, an East Coast burning man that's more in, like Tennessee. That that's where it would make sense. Like like a redneck jamboree burning man. That's like like the same thing, like a Bonnaroo type thing but like bigger. Um, yeah, I don't know why they don't get that big out there on the East Coast. There's a couple of cool festivals. Um, God, I forget the name of, uh, my friends at Format right now. Um, I don't know why they don't get that big out there. It's probably because it's so close to LA. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's on BLM. They got to give BLM like 5 million bucks. We could maybe have some landowner. Do we have, we have San Francisco. that's well, a the big thing about part that is it. that salt plain, right? So you don't have to do anything to it. Like our BLM land is forest. Mm. I didn't know we. I know I've hunted on it in um, in Georgia, like in Elberton. I like it's Elberton's actually where. Remember when the Georgia Guidestones got blown up and they made it all yeah, yeah, Illuminati yeah. thing? That's Elberton, <laughs> Georgia. Right behind the Guidestones is where I used to hunt. So uh, I'm pretty sure that's BLM land or like government land or some shit. Did they like figure that. out who blew up those stones? No, they never will. That's a whole fucking dude. That's so weird that that got blown up. I, it's probably just some asshole, but the idea that it might be something more than that is a little funny. Closer to me, dogs. there was a uh, some guy took an I think it was an AK-47 or I might just be repeating media nonsense and shot up like the transformers and electrical distribution. And power yeah. went out in North Carolina for like a day. People died. Like a handful of people died because they needed electricity yeah. for their medical equipment. Mm. Right. And guys. Uh, I assume right wing guys, they, they said it was to shut down a uh, drag show, which sounds like the work of 
Republicans, but yeah. they never caught him. So I don't know for sure. Now I they hate it. Some, looks like they're getting away with it. They caught some different people shooting Transformers because it kind of caught on because immediately they had to do a news story. Are you wondering why the entire power grid is down? <laughs> well, turns out rifles against a Transformer. No more power for the entire community. Don't they don't do keep it, them though. in stock. We're on yeah, the look out for like people this, it. Don't you? Although it's very hard to find them, we haven't found anyone who's done it yet. <laughs> well, got in the way, and every <laughs> asshole was like, "Fucking queers dancing in front of my kids! Give me the..." <laughs> and they're out blasting transformers, and a couple of them did get caught. There was a couple. I want to say a woman and a man. Mm. They, they, they got they got oh, caught Bonnie shooting transform. The thing is. It's a it's a lot of money. Uh, it's not a it's a lot of monetary damage that you do very quickly. So you mm. might think you're some some drunk assholes like ha 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 bang bang bang, and it's like that was two million dollars. <laughs> you're in a lot of trouble. You're in so they're coming to get you, Cletus. Uh, they and that's uh, they may have like changed. Said, people died, but they were so expensive that they just didn't keep replacements in stock, which is why it was so effective. They needed like days to bring in new hmm. gear. Yeah, yeah, it's a big deal, I guess. Um, ho hopefully nobody else does stuff like that. But electricity is my favorite thing about living in the modern era. It's by far, by far, <sighs> gotta have electricity. You take if my you electricity. If you could lose one utility, like wh water, which one would my, you? All right, water? so I'll keep the water. I keep the electricity. You take everything else. Those are two uh, big utilities, though. I'm gonna need internet, to, and I'm gonna need. I mean, you to if have we're bargaining too. here. <laughs> I'll use, can I use my phone and just have just have uh, the you know? Um, is data? it internet, water, and electricity? Is that the is that the uh, those are the big trilemma? Ones, right? Am I missing yeah. anything? Because I'll take cold showers if I have to. Like if if you take away my hot water, I, I can deal with that. If you take away yeah. my gas, okay, no, I'm, you know, electric appliances, I suppose. But if you whittle it all the way down to one thing, it's electricity because I need air conditioning and heat. Life without air conditioning is just excruciating in the south. Like. I yeah. found I, I read oh, that yeah. maybe thirty percent of households in the UK have air conditioning. Only thirty percent, or maybe less. It's a really low number. Where it's it's the exact opposite here. Eighty percent of Americans have air conditioning, and so much of uh, the uh, the United States is up in the you know way higher than the UK. It's bizarre to me that you could live without it. And it, as soon as I don't know that the summer rolls around, every now and then I've been without electricity, been without uh, air conditioning. God, it's dreadful. I just yeah. I'm just existing. I hate it. It was my biggest fear about prison, besides rape, was that was they the wouldn't air. have good air conditioning. Because <laughs> I went, because I went in in like late August or something oh, in Alabama. No. It was a hundred and two oh. one day. Yeah. It was so oh. hot. I was like, "That was the AC, the air conditioning, the better than my house." And it's oh, that's great. It's sixty-eight in this room right now. There's a vent above me blowing cold air on me right now. My nipples are hard. It was better in prison. It was better in prison. They had the biggest fucking air conditioning units you've ever seen on the roof. And and they uh they had like exposed um conduit or whatever uh with the you know the HVAC running pipes. through the center yeah. yeah the HVAC like huge ones just wow. exposed running through the unit and you could see that they were just like yeah we're all getting a steady st it was cold at night it was shivery at night you'd shiver at night you had to cover up two blankets um you'd give the guy two dollars so he'd hook you up with a second blanket because <laughs> it was so cold at night it went out one day I woke up and I was sweaty and I was like oh no. I go out, get out, get on the track, do a couple hours on the track. I come back. They're on the roof working on that bitch. They got not the prison staff. They've called a professional. Like he's mm -hmm. gone up there. He's he's hooked on to the roof like a, a, a thing so he doesn't fall off. And they're actively fixing it. Had it going by lunch. It was amazing. I was so I wonder happy. if there's a lot of security for which HVAC guy works on it. Hmm. Oh, like, so you don't get my cousin Lenny, the HVAC guy, to come in and uh, right. Yeah, you might have a friend in there, just like leave his screwdriver. I don't He's know. He's got if me you... and my boys inside the old unit, packing it up, taking it out of the prison. <laughs> if I just throw a Leatherman into the yard, do I get create chaos in this prison? A if phone? If you really wanted to do that uh, at Talladega, uh, you could fly a drone over. They were always on the lookout for that. But moreover, you could just toss something over the fence. You could just go anything that you could toss. You could toss over Wouldn't the fence they see me? to us. No, nah, they're not out there watching. They're just not out on the perimeter. Um, like the the track go, would go out to the edge of the perimeter, but none of the guards were anywhere near you. Somebody, you could they could have beaten me to death on the track, and no one would have known it. Huh? <clears throat> until count that night, I could have been dead all day. You could be dead all day, and nobody would know um, because wow. there's count in the morning and count at night. 
So they could kill you in the morning and stuff you in the little bath. They have like a like a halfway bathroom on the far end of the track. It's really just like a piss pot. They could just stuff my body in there. Nobody know, you know. Um, huh. But C- could you throw like thing. a pizza could... over the fence? Would they notice yeah. that? I mean, uh, you show up with pizza, they probably don't notice, but <laughs> they probably they'd sneak liquor bottles in. Like when you'd buy liquor in the black market in there, it was like, why do you just have Crown Royal? They just have a bottle of Crown. You know, they didn't have. I didn't see any toilet wine because they had real liquor that they were selling for like multiple dollars a shot. But it's not dollars. It's max. It's packs of mackerel. God, I'm glad I'm not. So like I said, no more acid. <laughs> no more illegal yeah. because I don't want to go to prison. God, but if I can sucks. find a legal way to do acid in another country or something like that, I'd do that. But, you know, you don't want to get any trouble. Can you go to Oregon? Don't they allow sure. everything now? Isn't oh, it yeah. everything? I think so. Or at least decriminalized. So they, maybe it. they'll be like, hey, uh, $200 fine for your three hits of acid or something. Honestly, what I would do is I'd go to a friend's house. Cause I know friends on like the West coast who just do that occasionally and just go to their house and do it with them. It's probably the safe way to do it. But I heard uh, an interview with Shaq today. They were like, you don't drink, huh? He's like, yeah, I love to drink. I just don't drink in public. I don't drink around people so they can see me. My daddy told me young, you're going to have to take care of your family. If you fuck up your mama, don't eat. If you fuck up, your mama don't have a house. Don't you fuck up the money, Shaquille. He said, so I don't drink out in front of people. And it was like, damn. That's, he went to a whole other dark place about why he doesn't drink in public. It was like, dude, I was just making Mom doesn't have enough money now to have a couple shots while you're out? Jeez. That's what he said. He's yeah, like, I ain't Jack's fucking done very mama. well. He said, I ain't fucking a with video mama's game. empire. He said, I ain't fucking with mama's empire. <laughs> <laughs> and it is an well, empire. Good, good for him. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of those guys have become billionaires. Um, I think Reese, uh, it, it's interesting the people in entertainment who turned that into this whole other thing. Reese Witherspoon, I learned, is a billionaire. Uh, There's no barely, way. What? Is she a thief or something? Like, how did that happen? What did yeah, she do? Yeah, she is. So, what she did was she started this, oh, uh, this, I know. Book club. this book thing, this book club. And, uh, you know, you, you, you put your book on there and she features books. It's kind of like Oprah's book club, except if you want your thing on her thing, then she gets first refusals on the offers for your books. Um, first refusal rights. So that means, hey, somebody came and they wanted to actually buy that book you liked so much, Reese. He's like, yeah, well, I get first bid. And so what they were able to do, I guess, with an algorithm is determine all the books that she now has first refusals on and just make lots of movies on them, make hundreds of millions of dollars. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> Good idea. I read an article, maybe the same one Kyle did because I saw it on Reddit. Goddamn and- books. It painted her out to be a like it says she's worth 400 million, but whatever. I saw a billionaire. Oh, it painted her out to be evil. Too. So basically, she has a book club, and if these books get made into movies, she makes the money off of it. However, the authors make money too off of the book club. Getting on Reese Witherspoon's book club apparently sells a tons of books. So you have this author with a semi-popular book, and Reese is like, Hey, if you want to be part of my book club. This is the deal. If it ever becomes a movie, that's me. But what you're going to get is tons of book sales. And they're like, well, fuck, I make way more than I would have made without you. So I'm in. And mm-hmm. they painted it like she was this robber baron taking people's movies from them. But I'm like, they would have never been movies had they not been on that book club list. Yeah. And they would have never been as popular as they were had they not been on this book club list. Yeah. She lifted you up. And then when it went even higher, she got a piece of that. And now she's a dick. I don't know. It sounds like she's a businesswoman. And yeah, there's money being I, I made all love, over. How, how great would it be to be an author and know if you ever did come up with something good, <clears throat> you had first class, first class, a list people who were going to take over your project and make sure that it was successful, not just having to shop it around and like, I don't really understand yeah. this business. Are you a real big wig? Or are you just kind of guy who lies to me so he can fuck me? And then, like, takes ten percent of my money and introduces me to your buddy who takes another five. Are you that kind of cocksucker? Because I don't know this business. But if Reese Witherspoon is there, like, I know this business. This is this is my business. Here's your correct percentage. I'm going to pump a hundred million dollars into the production of this movie. It's going to make three hundred. I get fifty of that. You get four. I get four million dollars. Yep. Thank you, Reese. Thank <laughs> right? you. Say thank you when someone hands you four million dollars. Yeah. People are assholes. Could Fucking be five pricks. million now. Uh, they tried yeah, to yeah, round up five. <laughs> somebody wanted to option uh, "Men Are Better Than Women" a long, long time ago. I forget. I forget who it was. 
Um, I passed Satan. on it. I probably should have said yes because I never did anything with it. But um, what did they want to re- do? Make a movie out of it. Just use the title and make some like uh, stupid uh, men versus women movie. Well, you know, now looking back, but it would have been better than nothing, which yeah. is what I have. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you I've, still have the name though. You haven't lost anything. No, I still have that. Um, but it's faded, right? Like I, I say that because not nah, men and I women still to, hate each other. As a, title, <laughs> though, as a title related to what he did, maybe, but but just as a good title. Yeah, as a title, yeah, it's still a good, good I think. Still a banger. I have when your book I, around here somewhere. Uh, when I, I used to have a Minecraft server, it was called Woodycraft, and it made a lot of money. And when I shut it down, other people wanted to pay me to run a Minecraft server under that name. And I said, no, I said, no, because I had like quality standards and ethical standards that I was afraid they wouldn't follow. Mm. And in hindsight, it was like, maybe I could have pursued that a little harder, put in some sort of governance Mm -hmm. and there'd be more money to be made there for me, for that person, for everyone. Yeah, I would. I mean, even if you could just be like Woody Craft by Zappa Industries and you're right. Yeah. And I'm in the shadows making movies. <laughs> like you, yeah. As long as you don't have to be that guy who's there every live stream, like, yeah, Woody Craft, by Woody, for Woody, and of Woody, right? or whatever. Like, but Woody, what about that thing they did where they sold our data to North Korea? Was that you too? Yes, that everything that Woody Craft does is of Woody. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't want to be in that position where yeah, you just got to like, print, shit. idiot. But, Other yeah. Minecraft well, servers like didn't even have customer support. You buy something, you don't get it, get fucked. And I was like, I don't want to be that server. And that's, that's that's the kind of thing I was worried about. Well, there was a lot of shady stuff going on where every now and then it seemed like somebody was going to go to jail because they'd stepped a little bit, they towed a little bit too far over that line. And uh, you didn't want to get like wrapped up into something like that for just chump change or what comparatively would be chump change compared to, you know, maybe going to jail or something. Yeah. I wouldn't want to. I don't know. I a lot of good it. stories come from it. I, I used to think I'd do terribly in prison. Now I think I got a couple You'd weeks. Fine, maybe two. Yeah, months they, I, I've told you there were guys like you in there. They, you know, they, they, <laughs> there were all kinds. Just of, there were all kinds. Hold of someone else's yeah. pocket as you follow them around. No, nah, you <laughs> just, you go over there with the other white guy. Like waving, like you know, I made a friend. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding his hand. <laughs> he leads Leon. me around by my scrotum out of affection. <laughs> <laughs> We're really tight. We're really tight. I don't, I don't like some of the stuff he wants me to do, but I, I'm going to do it, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know, I know. Does anyone have a preparation H? Just asking for a friend. Well, I don't want to lose my friend. Like <laughs> some, Sometimes white guys play a lot of board games. Don't want. Oh, white what guys seem to... Monopoly. They played a lot of Monopoly. Mm. And um the, 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 the game is designed to start game. fights. Yeah. I could I not mean, play Monopoly in prison and stay out of fight. Like, they don't have Monopoly like settlers and, of Catan. Uh, fuck no, they had chess. <laughs> Give me that and sheep Monopoly. for this or I'm gonna stab you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the the black guys play poker, but I was so afraid of winning or losing to them that I didn't want to play. It's like war games, right? The no. only winning move is not to play. They also played like oh, Black Taylor hasn't style, seen yet. which means that dealer gets to decide what game we're playing. And, and so one black guy would be like, crazy apes. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what are we doing now? All right, deuces is wild. And I, I can't play with you guys. Like, they're just making this shit up as they go along. Like, like, up. Every number oh, with a vowel is wild. Game. <laughs> yeah, I, I just made games hates. up as they went along, and and they're playing, they're gambling for you know currency, so you could end up owing somebody. And the quickest way to get hurt is to owe somebody and not pay them back. I would imagine. I don't want gambling in prison. At least that's what I've seen from the internet. I've been, I tried to watch uh, sixty days in this season, but it was it's so bitch made that it's not even. They're trumping up drama because in reality, the scariest guy in there is like a 19 year old kid who sees cameras and thinks he's going to make an ass of himself. So they see him. So he's, he yells a lot. And then he's like, are they looking? He's just being loud and rambunctious, but they like mm-hmm. play that music, like dun, 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 dun. And then they click over to him with black and white. Now, for some reason, he's like, fuck this shit. He like throws his cards on the table. In reality, they all laughed after that, <laughs> but they don't show that part. They just show our guy who's like the plant. And he's like, fucking scared cowering out they're all such bitches they're all so fucking scared of just rambunctious teenagers who are playing poker and the there's nothing scary about that show anymore they used to take people's lunch money in that show like it was high school that's why i watched because you might see some poor white guy who thought he could make 35 grand easy 
get his lunch money taken. Remember that one guy yeah. where the prison had a before he went in. He cried before, during, and after he went in. The sewer yeah. system went out, and shit starts filling the pod. So they just make all the prisoners go just sit in a room Indian style with each other at one point, and a day goes by. They've been sitting Indian style in a big room, and it's like, I didn't think this is what it was going to be like. And like, no one did, dude. That's why you're in this shitty prison, because it's a shitty prison. Because not yeah. a good prison would never allow a TV crew to come in and make a goddamn mockery of what they do. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the poorest, least responsible police, uh, police institutions who are like, our system is broken. The only way to fix this is that TV show from A&E. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we need A&E like, to come always and straighten us out. Yeah, but it's but lately it just doesn't even seem that rough. And it seems like what I did was rougher, and what I did wasn't that rough. It was more like scary summer camp. Yeah, you did sixty but days in, so like you, did. you know. I did you did. do exactly sixty days? By the way, fifty-eight, I think. I think, or no, uh, you wouldn't have I got the money. Did you want two more just to like hit the number? Uh, I was like, so excited when I counted like and saw that it was fifty-eight because they just said the judge went two months, and it's like. Could you be more specific, Your Honor? He's like, yeah, let's make it 60. How about that? How about 62? <laughs> you know, you, you don't want to you don't be asking at that juncture because maybe we round down later. I don't know how it works. He said two months. And I was like, all right. It wasn't until I was there and I looked, I had my release papers. They give them to you like 10 days in when I'm like, one, two, three, 58. All right. That's not so, that's a little better than I was counting on. All right. We're two ahead. We're, Pretend right, we already did. Those I thought two. I did now 10 we're... days, but I've kind of done 12 in a way. Yeah, we're counting as 12. Yeah. And 12, I, that's I, as I good swear... as two weeks. That's, you know, I got my count. <laughs> that's <laughs> half a month. <laughs> like, like, give me two more X's. Let's go. Those count. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that was a that was a helpful day. Uh, that was a happy day. I remember when that happened, feeling chipper all day. <laughs> <laughs> You're eating your, your custom chili with a smile mm. on your face. That on television, chili. it seems like people don't know when they're getting out a lot, like they're. Like it's some not defined day. They like they don't know how many days they have left. They just know it's not long from now. I mean, yeah, some of the sixty I, days in people like they will clearly have no. I'm not. I'm talking about the actual prisoners in there. They will have clearly like no knowledge about anything other than the jail system and crime itself. And so these people who are competent in their real life, as like a teacher or whatever, come in and they think they can bamboozle these prisoners with like. CSI Miami level nonsense where they're and in the directors of the show the producers are fucking shitheads and so they'll be like go in there and tell them that you're here on financial racketeering and like he'll go and like say that to some prisoner and he'll be like financial racketeering you're here for that no no one here is here. <laughs> no one here's here for that for financial crimes you'd be up in uh Fort Sumner that's where the yep. financial crimes division is. What are you talking about? It, it must have been more than just financial crimes for you to be here because this a prerequisite for here is something fit or intent or fit like and they'll they <laughs> know what they're talking about in that way. And so then the yeah. teacher will be like, I don't know. I just uh I go where they tell me, you know, and then they like they're just getting mean mugged like this yeah. liar. You didn't find it, you didn't embezzle shit. This isn't where they spend send embezzlers. Or it'll be a DUI sometimes. They'll be like, where? You know, up in uh, oh, LJ, like the county and they'll be and like, shit. "Wait, you got arrested in LJ? Well, I went to the LJ police station. So you had to get arrested there. Well, no, and all of a sudden it just doesn't start adding up because these are criminals. Mm -hmm. They know, you know, mm -hmm. where you should have gone and what prison you should have been in, and it's get and what they think they you're know a that cop. shit very well. They think you're a cop, or or they think you're a rat, which you are. Everybody on that show is a fucking rat." That's another thing mm -hmm. I, I got annoyed with right away. I was like, I hope they do find you, you punk ass rat, you bitch. I, it's not like you're like, mm. yeah, there's a gang and Mikey has a knife. He's going to stab Jim. It's like they're getting high when nobody's looking. One guy, he cheeked his pill and sold it to someone for chili. <gasps> yeah. Like, dude, you've got him locked in a room 24 hours a day. Let him get fucking stoned. Leave this him guy's alone. smoking, smoking raid off of a toilet no paper violence. tube. And yeah, like they get no him in violence. trouble for that. It's just awful. So fuck that show, too. It's hard to find good reality shows. Yeah, most of them do are you, really fucking stupid. How do you think I should act if I go to jail for making fun of Eric July's comic? Is there anything? Kind of, is that yeah. going to be respected inside? Can you do like, <laughs> I, think, well, <laughs> I think they will. Because he's be black. Like, is that going to hurt well, me? Well, first thing you got to decide is what, what race are you going to stick with? You got to make a decision. Indian. Early. 
I'm gonna. Oh, <laughs> I love it. I love Let it. Me tell you, Work Patrick, on the accent we're, now. So the, so the Indian guys. Hello. Welcome to the Indian <laughs> guys are like the others. Like like the Hello, Indian guys, are with, all the Asians are together, and they'll usually like hook up with the Native Americans too, and anything like other, like all yeah. the extras. You know, oh. you have like the LGBTQ plus. All the pluses get added to the Indians and the Asians, and they for, oh. they form their own little posse. Ragtag group of misfit toys, Indians yeah. Yeah. and uh, T's and Q's. Motley crew. I mean, Sounds you could like just you could wait. You could get there and then do a little racial head count, and you could be like, you know, I'm going Mexican here. There's more oh, Mexicans yeah. than there are white guys. And yeah, then you, right into yeah, Spanish. It's obviously you speak fluent Spanish. And, See. See, that's <laughs> perfect. We call him he's nailed it. Spoken, yeah. Because he's, <laughs> he's hard. Uh, and then the mu- either the mustache goes, and then the the hair goes, and I could be a skinhead, I guess. You could, yeah. There's I'd have to space, stay inside. Business. You got to play the numbers. No, they Whoever's want you to more. put in work, as they say. They need you to to put in oh. some work. They need you to either to to smuggle something or to hurt somebody. Usually. You know. Well, I could make fun of someone's comic inside the joint dude, if they oh, got That'd be so funny. Like, fun dude, Albert is feeling so fucking bad. You don't even know. Yeah. You don't even know. <laughs> I've been stu- I've been watching this guy. Don't worry, Big Mike. I'm going to rip him a new one. I got some Yo, this guy did. Yeah. I gave him my, my letter home to edit, and he bullied the shit out of me. I don't even know what a dependent clause is. I, got- <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Get in trouble for adding punctuation to his his love letter. Murdered. Oh, I that would be who who was it that did that? There was someone who did that. Maybe it was a movie I watched, but but some guy was inside and he like was like rewriting their love letters for them and killing. Like oh, that's what shit. he did. That sounds familiar. That you yeah. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, Dick could. Somebody. Oh, that could Dick. be a career. You think? Yeah. I mean, they call me the, your, the English school? teacher in the, in yeah. the joint. We call him letters. the professor. <laughs> the guy, that's you talk normal. about her tits right here. You should talk about her eyes. <laughs> like her <laughs> eyes are big and I want to suck them. I mean, yeah, that's better. Honestly, <laughs> go for that. I don't want to, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> see how that works. Yeah. yeah you see, I, I don't mean to judge. You're, you're starting the whole letter with the word because. Um, you know, maybe <laughs> what happened first? What can we do before that? What can we build for we starting for the letter? Your, because you know, you've written basically in this letter 50 times and you didn't need it one of those times, so <laughs> go ahead and remove that from well, basically, yeah. Well, you know, basically, what essentially... you're all they think about <laughs> it was yeah, just that, a... way, that wouldn't get you enemies. Now, I wouldn't have any skills in prison either, they would hate impressions. Yep. The white people. Were- <laughs> what if no, you figured out like the yeah, black impression to do that black people love, like some kind of fucking like <laughs> Pee Wee Herman and tequila? Like, got you down. <laughs> One more impression and you're done. I just have to have to I lean think- in all the way to African. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd kill. I think I, I think that you I'm know. I'm sick of they- this racist country. I am from <laughs> Cape Town. <laughs> they just make up an entire bag, and they're like, "Yeah, but you don't talk like a South African. <laughs> you don't. Oh. Talk, you're talking like a made-up cartoon app." Oh man, here's one that uh, people love. Weirdly, we went to as a joke, like ironically, I guess we went to a Michael Bolton uh, concert at the Hollywood Bowl last mm-hmm. Sunday because our friend had two extra tickets, so we were like, "Yeah, sure, we'll go with you. How this will be funny, right? See some old Michael Bolton hits and." Air supply was on too, so yeah, we'll see. We'll 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 see a bunch of like old timers reliving their glory days. And Michael Bolton, mm-hmm. he's always a good show, right? So we get there, and shortly after we get there, we say something's uh, something's a little bit unusual here uh, at the Michael Bolton concert. Looking around, walking in, going through the underpass under. Uh, under Highland Boulevard, and I say, something is, do you see what I'm seeing? I say, yes, I absolutely do. Every single person here is Asian. A 40-year-old Asian, all Asian couples and families acting like they're going to see the Beatles. Michael Bolton comes out. There's a couple oldsters. There's a couple old white people in the audience. But otherwise, it's like a Korean church packed (laughs) to the gills. Everybody's got their camera out, chittering excitedly. You know, very (laughs) polite. I've got to go like in and out of the rows, but all very Asian. It was like somebody had dumped Hollywood Park Casino onto (laughs) 
uh, on to the so Michael Bolton comes out <laughs> and he goes, he sings his, his the Hercules song. He's singing it and he goes, "No, nah, I remember he's talking like Frankenstein, right? Because he's sold." And he goes, "I remember the first hit I had in a country that English is not their first language, and all the Asian people." Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm like, man, and we did a bunch of mushrooms. I'm like, man, this is I'm fucking losing it. I am gonna start fucking just laughing, and I'm I don't want to ruin these people's weird experience because this is obviously way more important. And he goes, and I, I remember they said to me, uh, Michael, uh, why you say? You love her, but you lie. And he did it in this like totally unnecessary Asian accent. And all yeah. the all the the women are like, oh, like, you know, patting <laughs> like they're all reacting like he knew. Yeah. So apparently he's and then he's saying, uh, I love you, but I'm lying. That song that yeah, I didn't yeah. even know it was. Michael I love Bundy. you, but I'm Ryan. Yeah. I love you. I love you, but I'm Ryan. And then the <laughs> rest of like, like her. <laughs> Apparently he's a huge like he's like the David Hasselhoff of f fucking of China Korea. or something. Yeah, of Korea. Uh, so then he goes, <laughs> he goes. I just got back uh, from touring Asia. I'm like, oh man, this is so. I'm get I'm feeling so high, just trying not to laugh. My girlfriend. Uh, he starts singing this song. He goes, this is a cover that we would sing on tour from uh, Ging Ka Hua, and it's like it's called Prayer. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, you have to be kidding me. He's singing fucking. He's on tour singing religious songs to Korean. Like, this is this guy's life now. And he starts going into this goofy, ah, uh, like, you know how you can tell when it's not an American song? Like, yeah, you're like, there's no, I don't know what, the, what, there's not a chorus or a verse. It's like a schmorus or something. Like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> this blonde lady is singing and he's just standing there. Ha, <laughs> And I can fucking feel my girlfriend looking at me and I'm like I'm like just <laughs> eyes tightly clenched mouth closed like just trying not to laugh because they got it's all over the big screens and we have like a perfect straight down front view and I can fucking feel her looking at me going like are you fucking serious <laughs> like, just please please be over please be over uh and then he t he started telling a story about his grandson and just had a Mitch McConnell like pause for like six seconds, oh. and then said, uh, "He's like my grandson Dylan." Dylan. Um, I meant Bob Dylan. Anyway, here's the song. I'm like, oh, he goes, <laughs> next song. Like, I'm like, oh my god, dude, this is <laughs> this is yeah, unbelievable. He had a senior moment in the <laughs> middle of his big Korean show. It was so much funnier than I thought it would have been. <laughs> I'm going to scour on the, show the always. internet for Michael Bolton performing in Asia and try to find because it sounds to me like the kind of bits that like he does every show because it kills every time. And yeah, like, oh, they, they they always titter when I when I when I do that part. They love they love those, this one. The, that all that Asian cunt out there is getting soaking wet. Let me tell you, like he's <laughs> that's that's how Michael Bolton talks, and then he goes back to. <laughs> Anyway, was it called the was it called the Asia tour? I don't know. I hope that's <laughs> no that's the, the other one. Shows They're all young. <laughs> all of the people were young. It was so uh, it was so weird. It was not what I was expecting. Uh, he he uh he sort of ha ha he accidentally sort of went to a Michael Bolton concert. Turns out he kills with the Asians. The crowd's ninety percent nice. Asian. They're all oh, like, yeah. Oh, Michael Bolton son is about to be up and like losing their shit. So I, I want to delve son. deeper into this. You mentioned Hasselhoff. People maybe don't know. He was this minor celebrity in the U.S. at Baywatch and everything. It's like, oh, yeah, that's Hasselhoff or whatever. He was this international musical sensation in Europe. They loved really? his fucking... Yeah. Yes. Like a big deal. The ha. And do you know why sure. he's not famous in the U.S. as an international? Uh, because he was... My, uh, David Hasselhoff, he was in Europe... Nailing it huge. Everybody loved him. He was going to do his U.S. musical debut, and that's when O.J. did his uh, Bronco chase. That night was David Hass Hasselhoff's big pay-per-view event, no. and O.J. fucking killed his wife and escaped through the Broncos. So it totally fucked up his his U.S. music launch. Oh, I think. God damn it, O.J. There. Turns out O.J. ruins more than two lives that night. <laughs> yes. That's what he stole from us. He stole so much from us, and his Twitter's not even that funny. 
OJ? Yeah. OJ. A lot of it is just like jokes like, ha oh, I killed her. Jo- jo- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Hashtag if I murdered someone and was <laughs> tweeting from a golf course drinking a Mai Tai right now. And it's just like him, sunglasses on, Mai Tai. Yeah. Wearing like, like holding up like, what do you guys think about my golf glove? And it's like, oh, J- Jesus, OJ. Like, OJ that's a funny, worst, funny man. joke. You know, it, but I don't know how people I'm pretty sure he killed him. those people. Oh, I've definitely killed those people. Like, I'm so sure he killed those people. He wrote that book called If I Did It, you know? Like, he killed those people. Oh, you're so sure of that, but you defend (laughs) Bill Cosby all day, every day. No, I don't. He raped all of those (laughs) All day, every day, Kyle's defending Bill Cosby. I defend Kevin Spacey because I think it's justifiable. Whatever it takes to fuel that mind that creates those films is worth it in the long run. A hundred years from now, when you look at that art that he creates, you won't think about some 14-year-old whore who's who was who was at an adult party for some reason doing cocaine you'll think of i don't know american splendor you'll think of the usual suspects you'll think of house of cards just not the last season no nah, house of cards isn't okay, remembered fair. at all I really but like usual suspects is great you're you're right that is but you know he should american probably, beauty, probably not american gone splendor. To jail. that's the one where he's macking on that 14 year old He's imagining her all naked with like flat uh, rose petals all over and shit. He's like pumping iron. That's so good. Yeah. He's like 40 <laughs> like, years old. He's macking on a 15 year old next door. Well, Pretty- and very gay, like like clearly gay. He's so miscast in that as a as a lustful, like middle aged dad. He's like, gotta get some of that boom, that underage boom. Like, that's yeah. not, he's never said those words, not once. No, but he is a ghoul. Not like a real man. Is he? And, and seemingly in him- real life. Yeah, I don't think so. You don't you, think so? You, well, I guess all you think those he's people a bad guy. Get, yeah. yeah. What? Because some like... people look all that community. Don't want to be offensive, but it, they're known for you know having high suicide rates. So I find what you're inferring here very offensive. Well, yeah, I would Jesus be fuck Taylor. Relax. I, I, you know, you're right. When you're, when you're wrong, you're wrong. You just kind of you know, shut your mouth and, and there's take, two you know. kinds of suicide. Nick, you know, Taylor. you know about this. The that, kind like, that gets away with sorry, troubling accusations. Three days ago, here. I was accused of things that make my blood boil. Like he made that fucking video. It was like was four awesome. hours after someone was like, he assaulted me and sexually like abused me, and he's like, now the thing about that, we're making Thanksgiving dinner. We'll do, it. and after this, go over to my Let's Play channel, and it's like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I watched. I'm it. gonna play. I watched it two months ago. It's worse than you remember. It's like, oh my god, he is really making like cool. threats to people. He's lean. He's and like, then what happened? But you they all started dropping when dead. I pushed the limits. That's what you want to see, isn't it? You want to see me. You want me back. He says those words, but I know you. You want me back. He really thought at that period he could be like, fuck that whole season of my TV show you made. Bring me back and let's do it again. Like, yeah. Like, he thought that would It happen. works in sports. That would have been awesome. There are plenty of people who <laughs> rape people. They impregnate 13-year-olds. If they yep. can shoot the three, <laughs> they're welcome back on the team. Basketball is the worst about it, too, because some of the Ooh. basketball greats who are right now respected and in the Hall of Fame are like child rapists. Like, you like think of Carl Malone? Uh, Utah, jazz, right? Yeah, yeah Carl Malone. Uh, I'm Carl Malone. I've never seen Carl Malone, but I remember when they'd make fun of Carl Malone on Mad TV, and then the guy would always go, uh, I'm Carl Malone. It's uh, so I imagine him as an even more slow and stupid Shack. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, um, but he impregnated Reddit a lot of people, including it. some children, right? Like a lot of children. One child that I know of, and she was oh. 13. You know, practically That's, a woman. Uh, that was Carl Malone. <laughs> yeah, Carl Malone got a 13 year old, and he got to keep playing. Oh yeah, he had a Hall of Fame career. Yeah, that's unreal. See, Kevin Spacey, Spacey can come shit. back. He Thank can impregnate you. any men. Yeah. Yeah, Kobe had dead. a rape case. That explains it all. I think he beat her. I, I forget how his, how his thing... Uh, it's like an adult He was woman. 20. It's kind of... If you're a... If you're a famous, the most famous NBA player in the world, and a woman gets within grabbing distance of you, I don't really know what to tell you. Sorry that happened. <laughs> Um, I don't. I think a football is the one where people beat the women, though. 
I mean, Kobe straight up raped that lady and then like bought his wife a ring to make up for it. And then we all just said, whatever, man, go, let's go black mamba. Like mamba <laughs> power. Oh, he's got, he's got that mamba attitude. What can you say? He just goes for it. That's, everybody <laughs> just, just said it because he won it. like, he kept winning championships and we wanted more, I guess. Or rings. somebody did. I didn't care. I, Honestly, I, I, I love whenever right Reddit makes fun of his Alex. autopsy photos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sent autopsy. me you sent me the 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 image of his autopsy photos. There was yeah. so much less of I guess I didn't know what I expected, but like <laughs> there's really not that much left of you after a yeah. helicopter crash. So, so it's not a mm. photo, but it's like an they they have like a picture of a human body and 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 like the coroner has written like and drawn on that body to describe what happened to Kobe and he's like obliterated. There's chunks everywhere and mm. uh and it's and like Reddit always says something gone. like Reddit will say something like a a photo of a rapist and you'll click it and i'm like i don't understand is this what happened to a race rape a rapist in like india because sometimes they'll like burn them to death over there or do gruesome things and i looked and i looked and i looked and then it says like tattoo of 2002 nba championship on right tricep and i'm like wait a second that's kobe <laughs> that's kobe i have a question and, i'm gonna start with dick dick uh, kobe bryant died at 41 However, he lived a very charmed life. As a young guy, he traveled the world. As an old, he was a one of the best basketball players to ever pick up a ball. He uh, he won five championships. He's rich beyond belief. But he died at forty one. Yeah. Would you take that life or that of like an attorney who helps build get out of traffic tickets but lives till eighty? Uh, right? I mean, I hate life. basketball. So I don't want to <laughs> be playing basketball every day or like talking to everybody in the basketball arena. And well, what, what, what do you want to be a boxer? Assholes. Some equivalent uh, parallel boxer or something. Oh, like, like any, just be you. super rich and die of 41. Yeah, that's fine. I'm 42 now. This year's been bad. <laughs> I imagine next year will be bad. I don't give a fuck. It's starting <laughs> yeah. to get repetitive. I'm starting to hear the same shit that I already heard. Like as a kid, as a 20 year old, I'm like, ah, I heard this. I've already seen this culture war before. I don't give a fuck. You put me in the ground. <laughs> yeah. right, so Dick, that's a secret the, the message 41. if you're a stalker of mine that's a secret message i'm broadcasting to you specifically <laughs> great yes and i am affirming yeah. his secret message i mean <laughs> maybe to be to be kobe because kobe's got like statues and documentaries like he'll he, they'll be talking about kobe 100 years from now they'll think he was way better than he actually was and they'll Does be he still have statues understand. kobe they're making new ones now like like it's there's a big culture around Kobe still, you know? Yeah, his, his um, opinion in the basketball world rose when he died. Mm. Yeah. I, like, did he go through a big downtime? He couldn't rape for anyone that, for anymore. The rape? Like, no. Oh, yeah, when he, like, he uh, the rape thing was was bad in L.A. He barely uh, missed any games, though. Like, he'd, he'd go to court and then play that night. Yeah. He got well, made fun I, of a lot, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <I bet. laughs> Damn, that, you're, I don't think there is a career like other than maybe like elite politician who goes to underage sex islands. Like as far as professional athletes, that has to be the number one that they are like, oh, yeah, he he savagely beat the shit out of a five foot two, 98 pound woman in an elevator. But he's really fast. Athletes, musicians and politicians, I think might get away with that. And, and, and musicians, not all of them. It's how good you are. Like it. Let's assume Michael Jackson's guilty. The music was so good, he can rape children, and we're all still like A, B, C. Easy as one. It's easy as one. <laughs> but, but if you're like Chris Brown, who's just so, so good, everyone's like, fuck that guy. He peed on a girl. I think it was him. He didn't. No, no R. R. Kelly, Kelly peed on that R. Kelly, girl. R. Kelly. Yeah, R. Kelly is in jail right now. You know why? Yeah, he's in jail forever. Michael Jackson. I think R. Yeah. Kelly. Yeah, it's true. But... He also like recorded himself raping and pissing <laughs> on the young women and that then uploaded it to error. the internet, apparently. <laughs> I just want to say this. My friends were watching R. Kelly pee on girls when they were seven, when we were like 15. You know, they were like, Have you seen the video of R. Kelly peeing on those girls? I'm like, How would I access it? They're like, The internet. <laughs> They're like, The internet. I'm like, I use it for math homework, yeah. man. Am I going to go to the library? I, I didn't know there were. I had no idea what you would type into the browser to find R. Kelly piss videos, you know? Like, genuinely, I didn't when I was 15. Like, what the fuck? So, but but they had seen it. 
My friends saw it when we were teenagers, and yet he didn't go to prison until they made a documentary about it in 2020 and then actually went after him and got him like last year. They just got him. That was mm-hmm. 20 fucking years ago. We were watching him rape girls, <clears throat> underage girls, and piss on them. I think he kept they, going too. Like they did that boondocks. Yeah, episode it was a one time on thing. He wrote songs about it. <laughs> Yeah, I had a similar, had like, you're take. practically telling me, they're like, Woody, did you see that video? And I'm like, yeah, 39 times so far. I, I did not see the video. <laughs> I haven't seen it either. I, I genuinely didn't, it. but, but um, uh, you know, it's just crazy that it was just there. And it was like, why isn't anyone talking about this that matters? <laughs> why is it just, why is it the guys on JV football team that, that have the evidence right now and not a district attorney in Los Angeles, right? Yeah. What the fuck's mm. happening right now? But, uh, it, you know, 25 years later, we got him, I guess. He got to live one hell of a life, though. And who knows how many ladies he pissed on in the interim. But they, they got him eventually. Probably some. Yeah, but you're right. Probably if you're talented enough, you can get away with just about anything. Because people don't want to believe it. Come on. Not much. And wealthy boy. helps, too. Oh, we left out businessman. Because I, I believe that if you're super rich, believe. What am I? like? As if the DuPonts didn't kill people and get away mm. with it. Sure. But, oh, yeah. but, but if, if we're talking, rich, you can trade up kill. But people. like your business poisoning a river is one thing. But when you're the guy who's oh, out no. there, like, what did the DuPonts do that I don't know about? Did they actually lay hands on people? I don't know. about. Dude was really into wrestling and they murdered him. I think. Oh, that like, guy. Like, Foxcatcher movie. Yeah. With uh, oh, okay. that. Yeah. You'll love it. It's got uh, I haven't seen it, but you'll like it. It's got a Steve Carell with a fake nose playing the DuPont guy. And um, it's got G.I. Joe as his wrestler prodigy that he's like macking on that eventually you know gets it yeah yeah we're on the same page you might yeah. you seem to remember more about it than me yeah I, I haven't seen it but like i know it's got super good reviews and it's um and i just i've seen steve carell with that fake nose a lot it's very he reminds me of the penguin a lot because he's already got a big fucking nose <laughs> yeah he has enough of a nose you don't need to do that they put a uh, horn was, on him was it bradley <laughs> cooper that they like put a big like jewish nose on him because they're like hey you're playing a jew so let's really really mac like <laughs> yeah. mac it up like that, i don't you know, know if that was their thought process exactly it was it, it, <laughs> it has to be was. because i saw a picture of the guy he was playing and he has a very normal nose like not really? only was that the case yeah not only like the guy exactly he's playing does case. not have a giant schnoz nose but he has a jew nose he has a triangle like more of a roman nose i wouldn't call it a jew nose it's got a very roman nose like a big triangle and i there they they like had some fucking head jew decide that it was okay i swear to god i read it they were like yeah. Turns out at, they were yeah, like they consulted um, fucking, the head Jew. <laughs> like yeah, Jimmy Gold, <laughs> Harley gave it the thumbs we asked up. <laughs> Jimmy Gold, fucking Rabbi Shimmy Goldstein over here says it's a okay, and it's like a guy like like saying it's okay. So yeah, this is the guy he played. The guy on he's the left playing, is the yeah. guy he's playing. And yeah, the right is an even bigger nose. Well, that's a bit of a tilt too. You got to give give uh, 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 Bernstein a little more of a tilt. Let's see that. Look, he's know. trying to get into character. Leave Bradley Cooper alone. The man's a good fucking actor. I'm not saying All that right? he went to a costume store and showed up like that. <laughs> like he didn't make that decision. They they sat him down and put the nose on the right. Is on uh, I refuse to believe that. He just kept going bigger. <laughs> he already yeah. had a big nose too bradley yeah. like i thought he was jewish so i didn't understand why everyone was uh freaking out that's yeah what I, I didn't know he, either yeah he's like, not clearly like someone was like yeah bradley cooper we need to change you you're too famous and it's like well you can't okay make it fat. It. It's like I, fat i like he's done that before remember when he was chris kyle yeah, he got huge in that like a lot of it's fat and poofiness but he still got muscle too but he just transformed into a different looking human being. Was Chris Kyle Dick that sniper? Cheney. He's the sniper yes. with the most oh. kills of all. I think um, he's the most kills uh, ever. Christian Bale. Like hundreds. Christian Bale played Dick Cheney. Yeah. Yeah, that he was awesome. Sh- he did a really good job in that yeah. movie. He's good like, in everything. I, yeah, he transforms himself like no other. The makeup plus him gaining all that weight. It's like, that's Dick Cheney. Oh, and the mannerisms. I'm older. I may have. Uh, seen more dick cheney in real time than you guys i'm not sure yeah and uh I, when i saw him play i'm like oh my god he's got the like hunchback and the talk and the the cadence he just killed it killed if it i were dick cheney i would have to get him to come with me and play pranks on the secret service i think it was george bush who did that i, I, I remember well really <clears throat> it was either i think with dana carvey if it was if if it, oh, I, yeah. it depends which george bush it was i remember the story though of them being like the president had the impressionist in the Oval Office and was like, "Hey, you want to mess with you want to mess with Secret Service? 
his name's Mark. Be like, Mark, get in here. He's like, he's like, Mark, get in here. And like, as, as George and Mark comes running in, yes, sir, Mr. President. He's like, and he's like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> just like laughing at him. Like, that's the fool you want. <laughs> on you. Oh, that would be hilarious if the Secret Service guy like did that quote. <laughs> fool me twice. Uh, not gonna, not gonna fool you, you again. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna fool me again. George Bush, was the, George Bush was the most, uh, I don't know, likable president that that I can remember. I really, when I when he dodged that Iraqi's shoes mm -hmm. that time, that Iraqi who angrily throws both shoes at him, the look on George's face when he looks up, he's like, eh, we're playing a little game now. <laughs> he he does enjoy it. He's in the moment. Yeah. And he knows worst case scenario, I get hit with a shoe. Best case. Oh man, the camera's gonna love this. Yeah. I'm gonna dodge this dude's throwing shoes. <laughs> like, come on. I got uh -huh. there's a yeah. guy with a there's like three guys aiming at his head right now. If it's anything other than a shoe, like you know, he's he was having fun in that moment. He's like, oh, oh, oh. he's got his hands on the podium, <laughs> using it to like if I it. recall, one right. of the shoes was thrown pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Like, yeah, one, yeah. one of them was thrown uh, good. Like they gave he, like a prison it. time prison time i it may have gotten commuted but it was multiple years of prison time oh that reminds me let me tell you this story this so you know how in iran occasionally a girl will turn you down and say, so you know how it is you blind her with acid sure i sure. have heard about that okay so that went down exactly that dude blinds her with acid melts her fucking face Ugh. the judge sentences that she shall blind him with acid Ah, a little really? hammurabi. I'm good with that. And so they strap him down to a doctor's bed, and they got a vial of acid and a doctor there, and she's there. And they're like, all right, blind him. And she goes, mercy. He doesn't blind him. She let it get all the way to the day of the blinding. She let him get strapped to the bed. She let him get his eye all open <laughs> like he had something stuck in it real bad. <laughs> <laughs> they got Ooh, the vial oh. of acid out, taking the cork out. It's like little steam comes out. <laughs> oh. I wish she fucked it's with it. She should have said mercy and then dumped it. Doused him. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> blind <Dude>. him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I see, have... so I have no idea where it's going. Yes, <laughs> <please. Oops>. <laughs> <laughs> There's more acid. Oh, that's I was terrible. on the I wish you Petty Revenge it. subreddit, yeah. and it was the worst revenge ever. I wanted to get your guys' opinion on this because I, I love these. I hated it. I'm gonna I'm gonna poison was it the too well far? here. No, it wasn't far enough. So Good. um I think it was a guy and this guy's living his best life. He's grown up. He's financially successful. Everything's going well for him, etc. He goes to eat at a diner and he finds his high school bully working there. Now, this guy just looks disheveled. His shoes are those of someone who can't afford better shoes. And uh, he can just sort of size up what this guy's life is as he's like bussing dishes at a diner. And the person who was bullied isn't recognized. But... Um, uh, what he does is he leaves a $50 tip, like he way over tips him and walks out, knowing that like he kind of, the best revenge is a life well lived. And the busboy didn't even recognize the bully victim. So he the bully victim just walks out and is like, I'm the better man. And I'm like, the fuck? Like <laughs> slipping money into somebody's pocket is not revenge. Like you, yeah. you, neither of these a, are revenge. Yeah. Worst. Blind both of them. <laughs> Take their money. Maybe that's fired. Yeah. I don't get fired. Put some fentanyl in his tip. Oh, Here you go, buddy. Here's an addiction for you. It'd be like, are you Marcus? Oh my gosh, how are you doing? Is this where you work? <laughs> I'm a you know tax attorney or whatever some badass you know field he might be in. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, like, like you like whip off your sunglasses. I'm an accountant. <laughs> he's there in his waffle house uniform like afterwards <laughs> yeah just have a conversation that demonstrates the difference in how you guys turned out and go you can still tip a lot if you want to rub it in i bet if way. you drop a bunch of dishes they fire him <laughs> i blame it on him yeah you drop that whole you got that whole bus tray I, mm -hmm. I, I would yell at him like ow you rolled right over my foot as he as you tip over the whole thing like like right like forty dollars worth of dishes, like, which is like his me. daily's pay. This guy's saying yeah. racial slurs under his breath while he's taking my dishes away. Yeah, something like that. Or maybe you get your girlfriend to say he, he touched her inappropriately. Something like mm. that. 
Yeah, girls are always up for revenge. That. I love it. That is that is brutal revenge. So you're yeah. you're going full ruined life. Well, no, I'm just saying, you know. Or maybe you follow you, him. Maybe you go out thing. in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. You you wait and you follow him home. Now we know. Now and we know then where he is. you 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 light, like I don't know. You ruin his, ruin his mailbox. Start off. I think slow. you want to set the house on fire and uh, wait for him to come out the front and in, pick off anybody. You no, this low, is a this is a war of of mental attrition. First thing I do, I, I get his spirits Does he have up. Children? I, I mow that's his grass really for pressure. him. Second thing <laughs> is I I start stealing all. Actually, no, I don't want to actually get in real trouble. I won't steal his mail. I'll burn no? his mailbox down, and for that'll be enough that he'll be scared. <laughs> and burn then a mailbox some, down? Just I mean, put something in it, blow, hit it with a. Ba- you want, don't, you don't want to steal mail, but you're gonna commit terrorism. But <laughs> well, <laughs> not terrorism. It's <laughs> it's creative. Wait, the IRA creative punishments. <laughs> you're the fucking yes. Unabomber out of nowhere. He's just a bully. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, the bully you probably did him recognize him and stole his story and put it I on Reddit to, to steal get him his to karma. lose his his busboy job. Worst case scenario is he gets a better job because there's nothing a better job because there's nothing worse than busboy. How old is this guy that he's bussing? Oh, no, no. From context clues, I gathered like late twenties, thirties, late twenties. Okay, early thirties, oh. late twenties. Well, yeah, that's actually maybe you don't want to tussle with the Waffle House busboy in his thirties. He probably has experience fighting. He probably not not. He absolutely has an enormous amount of fighting experience. He works in a gladiatorial arena, and he's got a <laughs> grease knife. He's got a grease spatula in his back pocket. Okay, and yeah. it's sharp. Waffle Wait, House a sharp spatula. Tough. Like, why the, did he get the bullied? Scrape down that griddle oh, with yeah. for yeah. We need to know women her. or something. Yeah. Like, why was he getting bullied? <laughs> Yeah. It didn't say. He just said, "This is my high school bully." I gave Sometimes him fifty dollars, and that's my revenge. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you suck at revenge. That's terrible fucking revenge. The good revenges are. I've seen some of. It's maybe called nuclear revenge or something. There's a bunch of subreddits, but anyway, yeah, they ruin people's lives. Like you're fired from your job. You're a sex offender now. Your parents know. Um. Oh, and guess what? Like, like the reason your wife was being weird yesterday, she moved out. She's in Tucson, Arizona now because I told her. Like, I say, you know, like stuff like that. Like, just, okay, you're Man. done. Nuclear What kind revenge. of revenge? Okay, so this is like people lying, fantasizing online. I mean, it. sometimes it seems real. I, I mean, who's to say? Who's to say, Taylor, without proof or evidences? Yeah, I always assume those stories on Reddit are made That's why up. I only watch police activity because it's real. You watch those people <laughs> get shot to death. I'm telling you. 10, to- 10 people a day they're killing over there on policeactivity.com. I noticed today they're <laughs> not monetized. <laughs> Police Activity uh, uh, channel. The on YouTube, YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, they're not monetized. Can we get them as a sponsor? You're you're giving them so much publicity. <laughs> I mean, people need to know. It's the best channel on YouTube. They're It's crazy drama. Uh, this is the best channel on YouTube? Well, no, our second yeah. best channel on YouTube. <laughs> you know? It, it, look, look I, I watched that black man. He's sitting there, and they're like, sir... We heard you have a knife, and he like reaches and pulls out the biggest fucking, almost like a movie prop of a knife out, and he's just like, "Please, sir, please, sir, please, sir," and I start fast forwarding because the video is so goddamn long, and I'm trying to get to the good part, and I fast through five minutes of him saying, "Please, sir," and holding that knife until they start <laughs> shooting him with one of those less lethal twelve gauge shotguns, and that really riles him up. You ever throw a rock at a hornet nest and then run away? No, it's kind of like that. <laughs> well, they just shot him to death right there. And then Wait, it's time to, death? to watch another one. Yeah. Oh, well, they shot him and he fell into a pool of blood, but then he got back up. And one of the cops awkwardly gives him like three more real quick when he's looking the wrong way. It was it, it's it's pretty wild. Um the dog, the canine videos are by far my favorite because I love a good boy, you know? Hmm. And and those dogs are they are trained that getting to bite the thing is the best thing ever. It's what we fucking train for, you know. So when they Love actually it. get to bite a person, it's that dog's best day. You're seeing I, the happiest boy you've ever seen. And I like I, that. I, my problem with police dogs is the rules of engagement. Like yeah. they're allowed to Don't you hit my dog. You boy. Up, right, right? This guy, he's biting you, he's ripping your leg. And you, you're already 77 stitches deep into your injuries. And yeah. you if you so much as try to push his mouth off your calf, it's like resisting arrest. Now you got more dog. Yeah, right? Yeah, leave my dog alone. That dog's a He's cop. biting the dog. <laughs> so I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen at least twice where they bite the dog back because the dog's latched on to him and won't let go. So they're like, motherfucker, how do you like? And they'll like bite an ear. And the dog will scream sometimes and let go because dogs don't want to get bit. 
<laughs> and they never he's never been bit before. You, you can know? dish it out, but you can't take it, huh, canine? It's true. Um, I fought one of those police canines in a fucking bite suit once and, uh -huh. and whooped its ass. Although I was in a bite suit, which isn't fair. Yeah, yeah. that's not fair to the dog. <laughs> no, not at all. I like. I didn't mean to, but I kind of slammed him over my back. I, I thought he'd land on his feet, but he landed like flat on his back and yelped and ran away. And I was like, "Let's not put that in the video." <laughs> <laughs> you monster! I felt terrible. You gotta understand, it was like a military canine, like an eighty-pound German Shepherd or something. Ah! And he would fly through the air and latch on latch onto me, and I would spin, like lean back and do spins. He'd be stretched out by just his teeth, locked eyes with me, <laughs> and that guy's screaming like "Pocken, Pocken," like whatever German for bite is. And, and so. A little slam was par for the course in what we were what he was dishing out. He bit the you shit know, he, out of me. He was being over. trained as much as you were that day. That time. My 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 forearms were just black and blue all the way up and down them. Because oh, they geez. as a joke, they gave me the little bite sleeve, the training bite sleeve they use for like younger dogs, and then they sick the big dog on me. So my arms getting all bit up and I'm like I guess men just take the pain, huh? <laughs> this is what normal dog trainers feel all day <laughs> and then later on they put me in the real bite suit i'm like this is eight times thicker than what i was wearing earlier and they're like yeah, yeah this is for the adult dogs and I'm like, here here's your falconry mitten <laughs> 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 the dog whipped my ass for an hour damn yeah, that's i love uh, it when they stick the dogs on them it's great yeah i wouldn't i mean i imagine that you go from feeling a little badass fleeing from the cops to absolute abject terror immediately when you see a dog chasing you because it's they they look so angry none of running them look from, like they're having fun they're like, from cops they're must be the i know exactly how thing. fast they can run too that's what i don't like that feeling like oh man there's no chance of me escaping this dog oh yeah no. so much faster than you <laughs> it's like I, can't can't maybe I, got run, a shot. I can't outrun most men <laughs> it's that ron white joke, joke, right? it's a dog yeah ron white said i don't know how many of them it would have took to whoop my ass but I knew how many they was going to use. <laughs> as many as it took to whoop your ass. And that's how fast a dog can run. As fast as it takes to catch you. Yeah. yeah. You're not getting and away. It's, it's not even vaguely tired by the time it catches you. It's just had enough time to get rile, to rile itself up. No. And yeah. like getting I game noticed time, that in game the seven day. mode. The cop kind of was like, gave it a running head start. He made sure, he didn't just like, all right, grab him now. He was like, all right, we'll let you go back here on the 40 yard line. You'll be up to about 25 miles per hour. But yep, get him. God, that dog's moving fast when so it hits Obviously, the guy. I'm not. I don't think any of us are really built for speed. But people are. Fair. Can't people outrun dogs? No. Not in short bursts. Yeah, not short in distance. distance. They can, but not in short bursts. Not no. police dogs. People can't <clears throat> outrun a police dog. Like a German Shepherd. Even like fast if you were to people? be like, no, not even. Not fast in short. People. Yeah. Think about no. like how quick, like a. Like a border collie is compared to like Michael Phelps. Not Michael Phelps. Well, Michael Phelps way faster oh. than Michael Phelps <laughs> running around. <laughs> <laughs> but Usain Bolt, like Usain Bolt, would get humiliated by a border collie who had even a conception of what it was meant to do in a race. Like yeah. uh, the border yeah, collie can no like what. eat treats Sucks. for the first thirty yeah. seconds and win. Like you, yeah. you don't want to. You don't want to tango with dogs. Okay, so I have some run numbers. Like Twenty miles, but. An average track athlete averages, I guess, 15 miles an hour over the 100 meters. Starts from zero, so I imagine the top end's faster. Usain Bolt averages 27 miles an hour. Woo! That's his top speed. Like a and a German Shepherd goes 30. So even Usain Bolt gets caught by the German Shepherd, but not by oh, a yeah. lot. And Usain yeah. Bolt, the, he's, that, that he's big, black, so that, that, German that big Shepherd meaty be calf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, like that. He's wearing the. He's not wearing a protective suit. His bare calf is out, and he's losing that calf muscle when that when that. He's dog gonna miss up. it. <laughs> yeah, no, to grow back gonna, though. He's, yeah, it's, <laughs> but it'll grow back. <laughs> and then you know, we'll by the, by and the then we'll eat it again. Yeah, and then you let <laughs> the German Shepherd. We're right back to the first again. ten minutes I of the show. I swear that will work. You can grow steak. Why yeah, couldn't you just brilliant. have like? Like, can I get rid of the the cow's brain? Because I, I feel awful about the cow having to exist like that. Could I just have the body of a cow with no brain, and it keeps growing new steaks? And, and, and it's like a play. It's like the Play-Doh Dreamhouse thing you could get the where like 
stake just kind of comes out as it heals, and I'm like, oh, oh, snake, the stake's ready, and you slice it off at the edge, and like you got your little filet mignon puck, just perfectly I don't know. shaped. I don't know if the technology's there yet. I mean, we've got crazy medical technology. You think you just, if you, we applied it to keeping cows alive and perpetual um, sort of zombification hell yeah. escape. Mm. Then Take all the I'm NASA sure. money that they're not using to go back to the moon all and put it, towards the, put it towards the cow theory. We'll be regrowing cows no sooner than 2025. <laughs> I'd believe that more than Mars. <laughs> <It's> probably cheaper <laughs> just to let a cow have sex, though. In the end, I don't know. I was cow. thinking that. Like, what takes cheaper. more hay to regrow a little cow injury or to turn a baby cow into an adult one? The research to determine the answer. That's the answer. <laughs> that takes more hay. So I'm pretty sure we should just keep making cows the old fashioned. Isn't growing way. the baby just all the meat growing? Yep. Yeah. That, yeah. That's how you turn hay. To, that's probably the best way to turn <laughs> hay into meat. <laughs> I just didn't want as many cows to have to die. I wanted like um, I want. You ever see how right. so, like those trendy fuckers in movies will have like a wheatgrass garden in their kitchen and be like, oh, and they'll like get some scissors out, cut a bunch of wheatgrass, grind it up, make a little shake. I wanted that, but with an animal. Right. You know I how chickens to, nobody. I wanted a lamb yet. that lived in my cabinet, but its ass just kind of stuck out, and a little bit would grow out. And you, oh, there we go. How about this? You know how chickens nobody gives a shit because they're ornery and mean and like mm. peck at you. Sure. You care about cows because they're nice. They are. What if we made meaner cows? Ooh, that's right. If we're gonna genetically like you, like, engineer cows, just make like them you rough angry. them up and like slap make them, them around, real, and... make them mean cows, and then nobody feels bad. I think they started mean, and then we so did too. this to them. So we need like a Jurassic Park, like cloning the original cows to get them back. I like them docile and right. friendly. They are I mean, great. They yeah, cows are like giant dogs. dogs. You're the one who has a problem with killing them. I don't. I want to kill fewer of them. That's, I want to kill I, I, more. That's that's one of my favorite. Like scary. It's like you know how you can go to Red Lobster and get that one. I want to do that over a fucking lamb. I want to be able to be like, nah, get that guy right there. That one. That one gave me the evil eye. This <laughs> is right here. Yeah. I want to Decent. be able to pick the one. I want that one's heart. Like that when she's getting a pig heart for a. He gave me the plant. evil eye. It looked That's at me good. funny. I'd love to be able to hmm. pick the animal out. That would be dark, though, if there was a slaughterhouse slash restaurant. That's one of those combos that'll never fly. It takes a long time to butcher a cow. Like you, you would be but waiting for steak. a long time. I don't need you to finish the butchering process. Cut me off my portion. Go right for it in that dead cow. Just, How long just would that ruin take? the cow. Just gore no, into it. No, don't use a power drill. Use your regular butchery implements and, okay, and, and strategies. But get me my chunk out right now. It'd take like five minutes to cut a good chunk out. If you're quick. Remember those Japanese guys when they cut up the tuna with those big swords? Yes. Asians are I do. the best at everything. We're in I so do much like trouble that. in the next... Like I watched years. a couple of videos of that like recently, like a couple hours at the late at night. I got really fucking high and I watched like videos of people at the Suzuki or whatever fish market buying really expensive tunas and then carving them up and 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 then like directly serving them. And then I watched videos of the puffer fish. And this guy was going so fast cleaning the puffer fish. Like he 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 clearly deadly does like a hundred a day. Yeah, the deadly if you clean it wrong. But this guy like knew what he. I would eat the puffer fish from him all day. He knew what he was doing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Like really, the, any it's Asian like, guy. Yeah, it's like I know this guy's we got it for thirty years and nobody dies because if they do, like in in Japan, if you serve somebody puffer fish and they get like sick, you go to jail. I know we got a rap, but the opposite of that, like trusting that Japanese fellow to make you puffer fish. I went to a hibachi place and they had a Filipino guy. And I was like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Stop spinning that egg around and give me my rice. This yeah. isn't traditional at all. I want a real Asian guy. I saw a white guy <laughs> fuck out looking of at, a, at a hibachi place once, and I wanted to vomit. He was brown. Get out of here. Like, yeah. he was brown That's bullshit. <laughs> Filipinos are basically Mexicans. You can't have that They shit. are the Mexicans of Asia. Yeah. I, I have heard that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys want to call the show? Yeah. yeah. Dick, anything right. you want to pimp or... Uh, you want to hear about revenge? Go listen to my latest bonus episode at patreon.com slash the dick show. Uh, we also have, uh, this is pretty good. We watch, uh, Maddox's, um, Spurg Fest and shit all over him. You don't and just then, give uh, money to people and walk away and act like you've got the best of them. I would never do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, good. <laughs> biggest problem is a good show too. Go to biggestproblem.show. Check it out. Cool. Cool. See cool. you guys.
PK664.